ऑलरेट स्टूडेंट्स चलो लेट्स गो अहेड एंड स्टार्ट द अमेंडमेंट फॉर नवंबर ट्वेंटी और डिसंबर टू थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी एग्जाम एक्चुअली योर एग्जाम आर इन नवंबर ट्वेंटी ओनली सी ए सी एस सी एम ए ऑल द फाइनल स्टूडेंट्स कैन गो अहेड एंड वॉज दिस अमेंडमेंट क्लास ठीक है सर चलो आई एम मेकिंग इट क्लियर ओवर हियर नाउ लिसन टू बी वेरी केयरफुली लिसन टू बी वेरी केयरफुली एवरी वन ओवर हियर सर द अमेंडमेंट्स विच आर प्योरली एप्लीकेबल फॉर योर नॉम्बर ट्वेंटी एग्जाम ओनली हैव बीन इनकॉर्पोरेटेड इन दिस अमेंडमेंट मटीरियल आई हैव नॉट गॉन हेड एंड इनकॉर्पोरेटेड द अमेंडमेंट विच आर एप्लीकेबल फॉर योर मे ट्वेंटी टू एग्जाम मे ट्वेंटी टू का एग्जाम का अमेंडमेंट विच आर देयर आर ऑलरेडी द अमेंडमेंट मटीरियल एज वेल एज द अमेंडमेंट वीडियो अमेंडमेंट मटीरियल यू विल फाइन इन रमेश सोनी डॉट कॉम फ्री रिसोर्सेज and the amendment video is there on youtube you can watch that this amendments which are there are purely the amendments which are applicable for your number 22 exam theek hai sir done now the first page which is given everyone over here listen to me carefully this is the index page or the summary of the amendment basically what i have gone ahead and done is all the amendments which are applicable for your number 22 exam the amendments ka summary this is so supply chapter mein what is the amendment the crux of the amendment so that one day before the exam you can read this three four pages and you can go for your exam chalo in detailed amendment are given below please come down over here now first thing first sir where do i get the amendment material you can go to rameshsoni.com rameshsoni.com in rameshsoni.com under free resources you have to go to number 22 folder in number 22 folder you will be able to find this amendment material right everyone if you want the amendment material you can go to rameshsoni.com rameshsoni.com free resources in free resources number 22 folder you will find statutory update applicable for your number 22 exam done sir sir this amendment material till when ka amendments are being covered if you are a student writing your exam in number 22 all the amendments which are relevant for your number 22 exam i have gone ahead and covered so sir for number 22 exam for number 22 exam which amendments are applicable amendments which have happened 6 months before your exam before 6 months of your exam are being covered for your number 22 exam so amendments which have happened till 30th of april 2022 are being covered in the amendment material basically the amendments which happened between uh, 1st of november 1st of november 2021 till 30th of april 2022 sir basically all the amendments yes baba uh, which happened in november december january february march and april all these six months ka amendment i have gone ahead and covered in the amendment material theek hai sir now so this period mein whatever notifications and circulars have come those have been covered in the amendment material theek hai now sir If I am a CA student, I can watch this amendment. Yes, Baba. If you are a CA student, you can also watch. If you are a CMA student, you can also watch this amendment. Now, please come to the amendment material without wasting any time. Let's go ahead and get it started. The first, first amendment. The first, first amendment which is there is in the chapter of supply, sir. Supply chapter. What is the amendment? If I go ahead and tell you, sir, supply. supply section number 7 i hope you guys remember section number 7 yes sir we all remember section number 7 in section number 7 we had section number 71a which told all forms of supply for a consideration in the course of business will be considered as supply yes sir section number 71b which went ahead and told about importation of service yes sir for a consideration will always be considered as supply 71c which went ahead and told about schedule 1 ka schedule 1 ka four transactions which are there or four activities which are there without consideration also will be considered as supply now sir what is the amendment that has come everyone in the amendment basically there has been a section number 71 double a which has been inserted okay sir please come to your amended chart which is given below i have given the amended chart which is given over here if you see the amended chart everyone listen to me very carefully section number 7 you have section number 71 a and section number 71a may double a has been inserted section number 71 double a has been inserted theek hai and here if you see section number 71 capital a may schedule 2 schedule 2 ka paragraph number 7 has been deleted now sir what is the amendment everyone listen to me carefully 
सेक्शन नंबर सेवन वन ए एंड सेक्शन नंबर सेवन वन ए में सेक्शन नंबर सेवन वन डबल एज बीन इंसर्टेड वॉट इज द सर सेक्शन गोइंग हेड एंड सेंग लिसन टू मी वेरी केयरफुली यू नो वॉट वॉज हैपनिंग सपोजिंगली दे इज ए क्लब इन ए क्लब देर आर मेंबर्स वर देर ओके ए इज ए मेंबर बी इज ए मेंबर सी इज ए मेंबर ठीक है or an association which has been created what is the main purpose of a club or an association some people come together theek hai some people come together they jointly go ahead and spend some amount and sir whatever is the expenditure they divide among themselves so supposingly there is a club which has been created there is an association which is there what does a club go ahead and do club goes ahead and does some expenditures which are there and the expenditure is just being divided among the members yes sir now here these members who are there are actually the club what do you mean by a club a club means the members only now what happened kolkata club limited ka kolkata club limited ka one case law is there which has come under service tax where in kolkata club ka case mein the supreme court the honorable supreme court went ahead and told that sir the members and the club are not separate they are one only and club going ahead and providing any services to the member service tax will not come what did the club go ahead and say everyone in service tax ka matter there is a service tax ka matter which was there in front of kolkata club where in kolkata club ka case mein the supreme court went ahead and held the honorable supreme court went ahead and told that the club and the members are not different they are one and the same only and club going ahead and providing any services to the member and receiving some amount on that service tax will not come service tax ka matter is there okay everyone now because that service tax related one judgment has come they went ahead and told in gst we want that whenever a club is providing services to the members or members are providing services to the club gst should come baba it was already there in the gst law it was already there that a club providing services to the member or members providing services okay a club providing services to the member it's a supply and gst will come it was already there now in order to avoid any ambiguity because of the coming of the kolkata club limited ka judgment they have gone ahead and clarified by inserting in section number 7 only that sir whenever one person is going ahead and providing services to its member or members are providing any services to the person gst will be levied it means if there is a club which is there in club a b and c are the members and if the club is providing any services to the members gst will be applicable they have gone ahead and clarified that that's it the activities or transaction by a person other than individual a person other than individual okay if there is a person other than individual and he is going ahead and providing services to its member or constituents constituents means sir if there is a partnership form partnership form mein partners are there they are not member they are partners partners are the members so they constitute the partnership form whoever constitutes an association are the constituents theek hai sir point is clear or so if they are person other than individual is providing services to its members theek hai or members are providing services to the person gst will be applicable they have gone ahead and told it says supply they are telling the activities or transaction by a person other than individual to its member or constituents or vice versa even if these members are providing services to the person for cash or deferred payment or any valuable consideration whatever it can be for cash it can be for any deferred payment or it can be for valuable consideration it will be a supply they have included in section number 71 double a actually what happened this above amendment is in effect to the over, over rules the judgment of the honorable supreme court in case of west bengal versus kolkata club limited calcutta club limited wherein it was held that transaction between a club and its member cannot be taxed owing to doctrine of mutuality sir what is doctrine of mutuality baba everyone just understand three members create created one club why are we creating a club because it's nothing sir we are only going out we are ram sham and radha are basically supposingly an association they have made an association that they have given the association ka name supposingly one name has been given now they go out eat food and whatever is the food ka bill they split among themselves that is nothing other than an association yes sir now in kolkata club limited the high court went ahead the supreme court went ahead and told that sir a club and the members are not separate 
they are not separate they are one and the same only baba members are only the association and members can't provide services to themselves only and hence it was held that on the principle of mutuality service tax will not come now to overrule that judgment the supreme court went ahead and gave the judgment now to overrule the judgment in gst they have gone ahead and inserted section number 71a where they are telling if members are providing services to the club or club is providing services to the member it's a supply and gst will come and also they inserted one explanation saying that for the purpose of this clause it is hereby clarified that nothing not nothing contained in any other law for the time being in force or judgment any judgment which is told or degree or order of any court tribunal or authority the person and its member or constitution shall be deemed to be separate persons and the supply of activity or transaction inter se shall be deemed to take place from one person to another so they are telling whenever there is an association in the association there are members so the association and the members are distinct person both are different persons and whenever the association is providing any services to the member or the club is providing any services to the member or members are providing any services to the association it's a supply now included under section number 71a earlier also it was a supply but there was ambiguity which was there because of the coming of the kolkata club limited ka judgment now it has been the ambiguities have been cleared off in gst they are telling whenever any person other than individual basically what they mean over here is any any person other than individual providing services to its member or members providing services to them is a supply and gst will be levied am i clear with this point did you guys understand the insertion of section number 71a quickly give me heads up can we all go ahead is the point clear to all Yes, sir, the point is clear. Now, in Schedule 2, in Schedule 2, if you guys remember, Schedule 2 ka paragraph number 7, which is there, Schedule 2, paragraph number 7, one point was there. Ha, Baba, person other than individual providing services to the members. Members will be individuals only. I am telling if there is a person, person can be an association, person can be a club, you call the person, might be a partnership firm is there, providing services to the partners, whatever it is. If there is a person other than individual, providing services to the members, members can be individual, that is not a problem. We are talking about person other than individual, providing services to the members or members providing services to him, it will be a supply and GST will be levied. Now, when it is covered already in the definition of supply, it means it covered supply of goods also as well as supply of service also. It means if there is a person other than individual providing services to the members, services, then it's supply of service. If it's a supply of goods, then it's a supply of goods. So, sir, in supply, they have gone ahead and covered it in section number 7. When they have covered in section number 7, they have covered sex supply of goods also as well as supply of service also. Yes, sir, they have covered supply of goods also and they have covered supply of service also. Okay? So, it means this section number 71 capital A may schedule 2 may paragraph number 7 which was there which was going ahead and telling association of person or body of individual or unincorporated association providing supply of goods to the member will be supply of goods and there was a circular also which went ahead and told if association of person or body of individual is providing services to the member it will be a supply of service those all are irrelevant now so hence, hence they went ahead and deleted this from here why sir because it is already included in now supply only so supply of goods also included supply of services also included done sir point is clear the same thing what i have gone ahead and done i have gone ahead and written the analysis of the amendment please read it at home i will tell you one simple thing in the exam please be very careful first of all there should be a person who is not an individual if he is going ahead and providing services to the members Government is going ahead and telling members are separate, person other than individual is separate. It can be a person. So, you go ahead and call the person an association, you call the person an club, 
whatever you want to call it so person is separate person other than individual and members are separate they are providing the services then it is supply of service or it is if providing goods it is supply of goods because section number 71 aa is inserted in the definition of supply i hope that clarifies are we all 100% clear with the first amendment can we all go ahead everyone Yes, sir. We are all clear. So, Baba, this clears your first definition uh, of supply. Basically, the amendment in the chapter of supply. Chalo. Let's go ahead now. Now, please come to the next amendment. Please come to the next amendment. Everyone, I will go ahead and tell you the linking in GST, how we study. We study goods and service whenever goods and services are being supplied. In supply, uh, goods and services are being supplied. Then if it is interstate supply, IGST is levied. If it is intrastate supply, sir, CGST is levied. Yes, sir. Now listen to me very carefully. First amendment which has come is in the chapter of supply. Section number 7.1. Double A has been inserted. Okay, sir. Done. This amendment is clear. Let's go ahead. Now, the second amendment which is there is in the chapter of IGST or CGST is levied. Baba, levy section is section number 9. In section number 9, we had section number 9-1, no amendment. 9-2, no amendment. Section number 9-3, we are not doing any amendment. Section number 9-4, also no amendment. Section number 9-5 was there. Section number 9-5 used to go ahead and talk about housekeeping accommodation and transportation services i hope you guys remember there were three services which were being notified section number 95 may section number 95 may they had notified three services which were there sir housekeeping sir transportation of passenger ka services accommodation service and housekeeping services yes sir now here the amendment has happened in transportation services and also one more entry has been inserted which is restaurant services done sir point is clear now listen to me very carefully the first amendment is here and one more entry relating to restaurant service has been inserted please come to your amendment material listen nothing baba very simple amendment they have gone ahead and told transportation i hope you guys remember earlier i will remind you Sir, Ola is there. There is one person. He wants to go to meet his girlfriend. Okay. Then what happened? He will go. There will be a driver who is there. Take it, sir. Now, he will go to the Ola app. Ola will direct it to a dri driver. Uh, the cab driver, basically. He will come and provide you the services. He was the supplier. He is the recipient. But what government went ahead and told, Sir, if services are provided through an e-commerce, e-commerce shall be deemed as the supplier and e-commerce shall be liable to collect the GST and pay it to the government. I hope you guys remember this. Yes, sir, you had gone ahead and told, e-commerce operator will be deemed as the supplier. He will have to collect the GST and pay it to the government. Now, this was applicable in case of transportation services provided, which were through radio taxi, motor cab, maxi cab, motorcycle. Now, what they have gone ahead and told is, Along with motorcycle, they have inserted the word omnibus and they have inserted other motor vehicles also. Sir, what do you mean by this? Everyone listen to me very carefully. Now they are telling if any e-commerce operator get through, supposingly, you know red bus everyone? Yes sir, red bus we know. Now red bus may, supposingly one person is there. He has a bus which is going from, supposingly this is the bus, which is going from Karnataka to Tamil Nadu. Now the bus which is there, he there is the person who is the owner of the bus. He has gone ahead and got his bus listed on red bus. Now if you go to red bus and book the bus and the bus will, this person will go ahead and provide you the transportation services through bus. He is the actual supplier. You are the recipient. Government have gone ahead and told if the services are provided through e-commerce operator, e-commerce operator shall be deemed as the supplier and he shall be liable to collect the GST and pay it to the government. Simple as that. Government have included omni buses also. So there, there is a contract carriage or there is a stage carriage and they are also providing. So if there is a contract carriage or there is a stage carriage who is providing services through an e-commerce operator, those people are also now covered in. 
GST. So government have gone ahead and covered omnibus also and any other kind of motor vehicle also. Sir, any other kind of motor vehicle? Baba, I'll just remind you. Everyone, listen to me very carefully. If you remember in your chapter of exemption, sir, where are you going? I'm going to the chapter of exemption. Just a minute. In exemption chapter, do you guys remember stage carriage? If it is non-AC, it is exempt. Yes, sir. Contract carriage, non-AC, then it will be exempt. Sir, transportation services may. You had told us transportation by road. If it is done through stage carriage or contract carriage or if it is done through metered cab, auto rickshaw, e rickshaw, it is exempt. Yes, Baba. If stage carriage, non-AC is transporting passenger, exempted. Still exempted. Sir, if contract carriers, non-AC is transporting passengers, still exempted. Okay, metered cab, e-rickshaw, auto rickshaw, transporting passengers, still exempted. But, if all these exemptions which are there, so supposing there is a, there is a stage carriage, stage carriage or contract carriage or sir, metered cab, auto rickshaw, etc., e-rickshaw, etc., if they are providing services to you directly, then Baba, these services are exempted. However, if these people are providing their services through an e-commerce operator, e-commerce operator has been made liable under section number 95. So basically, you went to e-commerce, e-commerce directed, directed you to a stage carriage, contract carriage, cab, uh, metered cab, auto rickshaw, e rickshaw, and these people went ahead and provided you the service. These people are the supplier, you are the recipient, and because these services are provided to an e commerce operator, e commerce operator will now collect GST and pay to the government. E commerce operator made as the deemed supplier under section number 95. I hope this point is clear to all. Quickly give me a heads up. Are we all clear? Listen to me very carefully. In transportation services, Stage carriers, non-AC was exempt. Contract carriers, non-AC was exempt. Yes, sir. Metered cab, auto rickshaw, e rickshaw is still exempt. All these five are still exempt. But exemption will not be applicable if the services are provided to e-commerce operator. Why, sir? Because now e-commerce operator has been made liable under section number 95. I have connected your exemption and section number 95 together. I hope this point is clear to all. Quickly give me a heads up. Are we 100% clear with this point? That sir, now government have gone in and told auto rickshaw, e rickshaw, metered cab, stage carriers non-AC, stage carriers AC. Sir, all these people, if they are exempted also, but exemption will not be applicable if these people are going ahead and providing services to an e-commerce operator so now tell me one thing if there is a stage carriage ac non-ac doesn't matter contract carriage ac non-ac doesn't matter auto rickshaw e rickshaw all these people sir ac non-ac sir auto rickshaw ac no no baba non-ac auto rickshaw is non-ac okay now all these people if they are providing services to an e-commerce operator sir and you are going ahead and taking the services e-commerce operator has been made liable under section number 95 directly they are providing the service then baba it is anyways exempt whatever is under exemption is under exemption but if these people ka services are provided to an e-commerce operator then baba e-commerce operator will be liable to collect the gst and pay it to the government i hope 100 percent clarity to all can we all go ahead are we all clear with this point can i move to the next point everyone are we all clear so now if you go ahead and book a contract carrier, stage carriage, auto rickshaw, e rickshaw, metered cab a, or any other motor vehicle, any, any motor vehicle has been covered, e-commerce operator has been made liable. Done sir, point is clear. Earlier it was only radio taxi, motor cab, maxi cab and motorcycle. Now they have included motorcycle, omnibuses also and any other kind of motor vehicle, any other kind of motor vehicle can include auto rickshaw, e rickshaw, metered cab everything done sir point is clear let's go ahead people the faster you give me a heads up that yes sir we are clear the faster i will go so please give quickly give me a heads up then we'll go and move to the next one now the next one over here is government of india went ahead and realized that there are people who are ordering from swiggy zomato a lot now and baba the food industry is huge now government have gone ahead and seen that there are a lot of Restaurants which are there, there are a lot of restaurants. Might be there is a small restaurant, he is registered. There is a small restaurant, unregistered. There is another restaurant, again, there are a lot of people who are there. 
इन रेस्टोरेंट इंडस्ट्री गवर्नमेंट वेंट एड एंड सो स्विगी जोमेटो के थ्रू दिस पीपल आर गोइंग एड एंड प्रोवाइडिंग लॉट ऑफ सर्विसेज दे इज वन पर्सन इन द होम सी इज इटी सी इज सिटिंग एंड थिंकिंग आई वॉन्ट टू ईट फूड दे विल गो ऑनलाइन ऑर्डर थ्रू वन रेस्टोरेंट माइट बी थ्रू स्विगी दे विल ऑर्डर थ्रू एन अनरजिस्टर्ड पर्सन गवर्नमेंट इज टेलिंग we want to collect gst no tax evasion should be there whether sir it is registered person unregistered person government went ahead and told swiggy zomato beta these people are the actual supplier i know these people are the actual recipient i know but government went ahead and saw all this restaurant ke through there should not be any any tax ka loss which government should have government is selling we want to collect tax because small small restaurants have come lot so government went ahead and told from their head will put the burden on this people ka head and e commerce operator has been made liable so e commerce operator will be collecting the gst and paying to the government so now whenever you order food from swiggy zomato etc government have gone ahead and told supply of restaurant services restaurant services means food when it being supplied other than services supplied by restaurant located at specified premises this i will talk but restaurant services now have been brought under 95 wherein so suppose there is one, there is one girl who wants to eat mama i want to eat momos then now what happened mama went to swiggy or zomato etc e commerce whichever is the e commerce e commerce directed to a restaurant restaurant went ahead and supplied baba remember one thing over here restaurant can be registered unregistered doesn't matter restaurant can be registered unregistered doesn't matter always the e-commerce will collect the gst and pay to the government always remember oh baba this this is something wrong over here e-commerce will collect gst and pay to the government okay sir point is clear gst will be collected and paid by the e-commerce operator yes sir point is clear see over here they are going ahead and telling supply of restaurant service means whenever food etc is being supplied that restaurant related services pay gst will be collected by the e-commerce operator and paid to the government now they have gone ahead and told other than the services supplied by restaurant eating joints located at specified premises everyone listen to me very carefully what do you mean by specified premise specified premise means the premises providing hotel accommodation services having declared tariff of any unit of accommodation above 7500 per unit per day or equivalent everyone listen to me very carefully there is taj there is taj hotel in taj hotel they provide accommodation also if you want you can go and stay also in taj they have rooms which are there now this room which is there if the room rent they are going ahead and telling is above 7500 per day per unit 7000 sir room rent is 10000 over here it means more than 7000 yes sir now taj mein there is a restaurant which is there there is a restaurant which is located in taj hotel only in taj there is a restaurant and i am feeling that why to go ahead and eat from small small eating joints which are there might be some people find it hygiene issue they are telling no sir i don't want to uh, buy the food from a small restaurant which is there so what happened one person went to taj uh, swiggy Swiggy me they are telling that now if you want food from Taj we will give you we'll get you the food from Taj ka restaurant also so what i did supposingly i went to swiggy and zomato swiggy zomato directed it to taj ka this restaurant which is located inside taj hotel and the restaurant say food has come to me always remember one thing in this scenario because the restaurant is located in specified premise specified premise means the premises in which room rent is greater than 7500 then baba in this scenario e-commerce operator will not collect the gst and pay the liability to pay gst will be of the restaurant only means they are telling if big big hotels are there in big big hotel ka premises one small restaurant is there that restaurant ka lab gst liability will be paid by that restaurant only government is going ahead and telling if a restaurant is located in specified premise specified premise means a premise in which the room rent is 7500 more than 7500 see above 7500 or equivalent equivalent means what sir for an example this is taj hotel baba taj me they are going ahead and telling the room rent is 100 dollar they are telling equivalent means if it is given in dollars then 100 dollars today supposingly means 7800 yes sir it is more than 7500 
then if supposingly in taj there is a restaurant with there which is there i went to zomato zomato went ahead and directed it to the restaurant and restaurant supplied me the food can you guys tell me who will be liable in this scenario can you people tell me in this scenario when i went to zomato zomato di directed me to a, this restaurant and restaurant supplied me the food who will be liable because it is located in the premises in specified premises where the room rent the room rent basically is more than declared tariff is more than 7500 sir in this scenario the restaurant will be liable the restaurant will be liable they have gone ahead and told over here i hope this point is clear to all chalo let's go ahead remember one thing supposingly i'll tell you now you guys have to go ahead and tell me sir restaurant not located in specified premises not located in specified premises sir and supplying food through zomato who will be liable sir zomato will be liable okay sir restaurant not located in specified premises registered person still supplying services through zomato if supplying services through zomato zomato will be liable then sir supposingly there is a restaurant which is there not located in specified premises okay and unregistered if unregistered then then also sir if supplying through zomato then baba zomato will be liable i hope this point is clear to all but if there is a restaurant which is located in specified premises remember one thing supplying services through zomato zomato will not be liable zomato will not be liable i hope this point is clear to all if it is located in specified premises in this scenario e commerce operator shall not be liable yes sir point is clear if restaurant is located in specified premise specified premise means those premises where hotel accommodation services having declared tariff of any unit of accommodation baba tell me one thing this is taj in taj they have one room of 5000 they have one room of 7000 and they have one room of 10000 tell me one thing now is this a specified premise okay if i ask you only this much is this a specified premises if i am asking you only this much is this a specified premise now no sir this is not a specified premise okay if i go ahead and add one more room where the room rent is only 7500 is it specified premise is it a specified premise quickly tell me sir now also it is not a specified premise remember one thing room rent has to be more than 7500 if i tell there is a room which declared tariff is 8000 rupees then is it a specified premise yes sir now it is a specified premise because the room rent is greater than 7500 now if the, yes greater than 7000 now if there is a restaurant over here and restaurant is going ahead and supplying food through supposingly zomato one person went to zomato zomato go three book the restaurant ka food and food is being supplied can you tell me in this scenario who will be liable who will be liable sir the restaurant will be liable zomato will not be liable e-commerce operator shall not be liable remember always e-commerce will not be liable to pay the gst i hope everyone is clear till here yes sir in this scenario zomato will not be liable e-commerce operator will not be liable done sir point is clear restaurant baba restaurant ka in this scenario yes this is what i am going ahead and telling if the hotel has different uh tariff then you have to see if any room any room ka rent is greater than 7500 then it will become a specified premise and in this scenario e-commerce will not be liable e-commerce will not be liable then whoever whichever is the restaurant if the turnover of the restaurant is more than uh 20 lakh and the restaurant is registered then the restaurant will be liable if the restaurant ka turnover is not more than 20 lakh might be suppose the restaurant is not registered then baba gst will not come please be very careful about it e-commerce will not be liable is what they are going ahead and telling over here done next please come i hope everyone is clear in the chart also i've gone ahead and made the amendment first of all transportation services through omnibus or any other motor vehicle also has been covered and secondly the amendment is restaurant services now brought under gst uh, so restaurant services uh, supplied through e-commerce has also now been brought under gst but 
एक सर्विसेस बाय रेस्टोरेंट इन स्पेसिफाइड प्रेमाइसेस स्पेसिफाइड प्रेमाइसेस एक्सेप्ट सर्विसेज बाय रेस्टोरेंट इन स्पेसिफाइड प्रेमाइस एंड स्पेसिफाइड प्रेमाइस मीन्स प्रेमाइसेज प्रोवाइडिंग होटल एकोमोडेशन सर्विस हैविंग डिक्लेयर टेरिफ ऑफ ग्रेटर देन सेवन प्लीज मेक दिस चेंज एवरी प्लीज मेक दिस चेंज एवरी greater than 7500 please make this change everyone greater than 7500 i hope everyone is clear quickly give me a heads up can we all go ahead everyone are we all yes baba please make it 7500 or equivalent what do you mean by equivalent they have used the word over here greater than 7500 or equivalent equivalent means might be if the restaurant has gone ahead and uh, sorry if the taj me the tariff declared tariff is in dollars then you have to see equivalent dollar so supposingly if that dollar uh, they have declared that 100 dollar is the room rent 100 dollar today the dollar rate is 78 so it is 7800 yes sir it is more than 7500 remember it should be more than 7500 always done sir point is clear let's go ahead equivalent doesn't mean 7500 no 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 equivalent means more than 7500 and e supposingly it is 8000 rupees 8000 rupees ka dollar equivalent if it has been given in dollars i hope this point is clear to all can we all go ahead quickly give me a heads up are we all 100% clear with section number 95 greater than 7500 baba remember greater than 7500 please make this change greater than 7500 can we go ahead everyone yes sir we are all clear with this now there is a circular which has been given please come down let's go ahead and do the circular please come to the circular which has been given below there are some issues which were there relating to this uh, industry which uh, government have gone ahead and clarified please come to the circular i hope everyone is clear till here can we all go ahead yes sir let's go ahead please come to the circular certain representations have been received requesting for clarification regarding modality of compliance of the gst law in respect of supply of restaurant service through e-commerce operator clarifications are as given below number 1 would e-commerce have to still collect tcs in compliance with section number 52 of the cgst act baba because restaurant services are now brought under now supposing there is a restaurant there is a restaurant which is there and there is zomato which is there and there is one person he ordered the food zomato went ahead and uh, zomato went ahead and directed it to the restaurant restaurant went ahead and supplied the food they are going ahead and telling is zomato required to do tcs on such service baba tcs is not applicable why because zomato is only deemed as the supplier when zomato is deemed as the supplier e commerce operator will collect the whole of amount of gst and give it to the government whenever section number 95 is applicable tcs provisions are not applicable remember always since e-commerce is liable to pay the tax under section number 95 it is not required to collect tcs i hope this point is clear in this scenario whenever restaurant services are provided through e-commerce baba tcs provisions will not be applicable e-commerce will will collect the amount also and whatever is their commission etc they will deduct and pay it to the restaurant in this scenario always remember one thing tcs provisions are not applicable tcs under section number 52 of the cgst act not applicable then would e commerce have to mandatorily take separate registration with respect to supply of restaurant services through even though they are re registered to pay gst on their own services everyone listen to me very carefully there is swiggy whenever one restaurant is registered on swiggy baba restaurant se the swiggy will collect commission yes sir because they are going ahead and providing intermediary services yes sir because they are providing intermediary services they are already collecting commission and might be their commission ka turnover is baba commissions are huge and because of that they are already registered gst registered theek hai for the commission now what is happening over here because the restaurant ka services are also provided through swiggy what is happening people order they direct it to the restaurant restaurant supplies the services in this scenario government have gone ahead and told one minute government have gone ahead and told for the restaurant services also for the restaurant wala the services for supply of food also swiggy is deemed as the supplier yes sir now for provide for giving the bill 
for the restaurant service because Swiggy will go ahead and give the bill to the customer, collect the GST from him and pay the GST for this also. On the commission also they will pay the GST. Whatever commission they are charging to the restaurant or any commission if they are charging to you, on that commission they will also go ahead and pay GST. Plus for the restaurant services, the food services also they will pay GST. Is separate GST registration required for that restaurant services which are supplied to the e-commerce, the question was asked. So, if there is Swiggy, Swiggy is going ahead and charging commission. For commission, it is already registered. Plus, whenever now they are going ahead and collecting GST on the restaurant service and paying the GST, do they have to take one more registration? The clarification came, e-commerce is not required to take a separate registration for payment of tax on restaurant service. Baba, because they are already registered, then for this restaurant service, they have to pay the GST. They don't have to take one more GST registration, not required. I hope this point is clear to all. Chalo, next. Would the e-commerce be liable to pay tax on supply of restaurant service made by unregistered business entity? They are going ahead and asking if there is a restaurant. This is registered this restaurant is registered. This restaurant is unregistered. Baba, doesn't matter. Whenever e-commerce operator get through, a restaurant is providing the services. Person went online, booked through registered restaurant or unregistered restaurant. Food was being supplied through an e-commerce operator. For registered or unregistered, both the case may e-commerce will be liable to collect the GST from the customer and pay it to the government. Always remember whether the service restaurant is registered or unregistered doesn't matter. In case of restaurant services, other than specified premises, well, I am not talking about specified premises. Other than specified premises, always remember, always remember one thing. Here, always remember, always e-commerce operator will be liable to pay the GST. Now, sir, what if it is located in a specified premise? Baba, specified premises may, if one restaurant is located, Swiggy or Zomato, okay, through, if you have gone ahead and uh, booked the food and the food has been supplied, always remember one thing, in this scenario, e-commerce operator shall not be liable. Now, if the restaurant is registered, restaurant will pay the GST. If restaurant is not registered, restaurant will not pay the GST. That's it. We are not bothered about the restaurant now. If it is a specified premise, Swiggy and Zomato, basically e-commerce operator will not pay the GST. That's it. Specified premises ka case may e-commerce operator will not pay the GST. Now, specified premises may if the restaurant is registered, restaurant will pay GST. If restaurant is unregistered, restaurant will not pay GST. That's it. Chalo, please come back. Sir, would, would e-commerce be liable to pay the tax on supply of restaurant service made by unregistered business entity? Always remember one thing. If the business entity is, Baba, we are not talking about specified premises. We are not talking about specified premise. Other than specified premises ka case may registered or unregistered, always e-commerce will be liable to pay the GST. Done, sir. Point is clear. Next. What would be the aggregate turnover of the person supplying restaurant service through e-commerce? Everyone over here, listen to me very carefully. Supposingly, I am a restaurant. I am a restaurant. I am supplying my services through e-commerce also. And I am supplying to normal walk-in customers also. Sir, now what happened? One person went ahead and ordered in e-commerce, basically Swiggy, Zomato, etc. And the order came to me and I went ahead and supplied the food over here. Now, listen to me very carefully. My turnover is this supplies also which I have supplied through the e-commerce and this supplies also which I have supplied directly to walk-in customers also. Always remember in my turnover, both the turnovers will be included. So, if you, I go ahead and ask you, me as a restaurant, what is my supply? This supply which I have done through Swiggy Zomato, this is also my turnover and this supplies which I have done to my walk-in customers who directly come to my restaurant, that is also my turnover. Is the point 100% clear to all? Are we all 100% clear till here? People, give me a what's, heads up. Can we go ahead? The aggregate of turnover of restaurant will include supplies made through e-commerce also and their direct supplies also. Next. Can the supply of restaurant services made through e-commerce be recorded as inward supplies of e-commerce? Liable to reverse charge. Baba, tell me one thing. Tell me one thing. This supply which has been done wherein e-commerce is collecting the GST and paying to the government, is it inward supply? Huh? Am I supplying services to e-commerce operator? No, Baba. 
ई कॉमर्स ऑपरेटर में वन ऑर्डर केम ऑर्डर डायरेक्टेड आई सप्लाइड द सर्विसेस टू दिस गाय ठीक है दिस गाय से जीएसटी कलेक्टेड एंड पेड द जीएसटी टू गवर्नमेंट बाबा ई कॉमर्स इज पेइंग द जीएसटी इट इज नेवर द इनवर्ट हैव आई सप्लाइड माय सर्विसेस टू ई कॉमर्स ऑपरेटर इज इट इनवर्ट सप्लाइज फॉर ई कॉमर्स ऑपरेटर लायबल टू पे जीएसटी अंडर आरसीएम नथिंग कैन द सर्विसेज ऑफ रेस्टोरेंट मेड थ्रू ई कॉमर्स बी रिकॉर्डेड इज इनवर्ट सप्लाई ऑफ रेस्टोरेंट दिस इज इनवर्ट सप्लाई नो सर इट इज नेवर इनवर्ट सप्लाई टू द रेस्टोरेंट दैट्स इट नेक्स्ट सप्लाइज ऑफ रेस्टोरेंट मेड थ्रू ई कॉमर्स आर नॉट रिकॉर्डेड एज इनवर्ट सप्लाइज नो आरसीएम ई कॉमर्स ऑपरेटर में वन सपोज इन दिस स्विगी वन पर्सन वेंट एड एंड प्लेस एन ऑर्डर स्विगी डायरेक्टेड द ऑर्डर टू मी आई एम ए रेस्टोरेंट आई वेंट एड एंड पैक द फूड एंड सेंड इट ओवर हियर इन दिस सिनारियो माय सप्लाई ऑफ सर्विस व्हिच इज देयर ऑन दिस स्विगी विल कलेक्ट द जीएसटी एंड पे टू द गवर्नमेंट दैट्स इट इज इट माय इनवर्ट सप्लाई व्हिच आई हैव गोन एड एंड सप्लाई टू द ई कॉमर्स ऑपरेटर व्हिच इज स्विगी एंड स्विगी विल हैव टू पे जीएसटी ऑन दिस इनवर्ट सप्लाई अंडर आरसीएम नो सर नथिंग nothing that's it would e-commerce be liable to baba i believe that they can ask you one question from all this circular only this circular which i am providing one small question can be asked so please be very careful would e-commerce be liable to reverse proportionate itc on input goods or services for the reason that itc is not admissible on restaurant services baba tell me one thing e-commerce operator is going ahead and supplying e-commerce operator is going ahead and supplying number 1 here is the e-commerce operator here is the restaurant theek hai here is the person who ordered the food now he ordered the food order got directed and food was supplied now e-commerce operator is deemed as the supplier of restaurant services theek hai now what they are going ahead and telling e-commerce would have gone ahead and taken lot of inward supplies of goods and services now they are going ahead and telling now the restaurant services which are being provided see would e-commerce be liable to reverse proportionate itc on his input goods and service for the reason that itc is not admissible on restaurant service first of all tell me one thing is the e-commerce operator going to reverse any credit baba on his inward supplies of goods and service whatever itc is there can he take full itc or proportionate itc which is with respect to the restaurant services should be reversed what kind of a question e-commerce provides their own services to an e-commerce and an intermediary for which input and input services while e-commerce avails itc means e-commerce operator baba might be there swiggy zomato etc they are going ahead and supplying other supplies also and for providing intermediary services basically they are charging brokerage to the uh, shopkeepers and all now they would have gone ahead and received some input services and all theek okay? hai now they are going ahead and telling over here the e-commerce charges commission fees for services it provides the itc is utilized by the e-commerce for the payment of gst on the services provided by e-commerce on own account say to a restaurant theek hai the situation in this regards remain unchanged even after e-commerce is made liable e-commerce would be eligible to take itc as before accordingly it is clarified that e-commerce should not reverse any itc on account of restaurant service on which it pays gst in terms of section number 95 it may also be noted that restaurant services e-commerce is liable to pay entire gst in liability in cash no itc can be utilized for the payment of gst on restaurant service simple as that everyone listen to me very carefully i am e-commerce operator whatever i am receiving inward supplies goods or services i can take the full itc there is no problem at all on availment of itc now for my own services also i have to pay gst for the restaurant services one person went and placed an order order got directed to a restaurant restaurant went ahead and supplied the food i collected the gst and this gst also i will be liable to pay for this gst payment of course i can't use my itc this itc i can go ahead and use for my other services ka gst which is there baba restaurant is go, uh, e-commerce operator is providing services as an intermediary on those intermediary services he is charging brokerage to restaurant and all on those restaurant brokerage services and all whatever gst is there for that payment he can use his inward supplies which are there now swiggy zomato might be they would have gone ahead and taken one office on rent whatever the gst is there they can use for payment of their 
जीएसटी ऑन देयर ओन अकाउंट बट रेस्टोरेंट सर्विसेज का वॉट एवर जीएसटी दे आर कलेक्टिंग दे हैव टू कलेक्ट एंड पे द जीएसटी दैट्स इट दे आर गोइंग एंड टेलिंग फॉर दिस आईटीसी कैन नॉट बी यूज्ड दिस आईटीसी कैन नॉट बी यूज्ड एंड देयर इज नो रिवर्सल आल्सो देयर इज नो नो रिवर्सल नो आईटीसी अपोर्शनमेंट एटसेट्रा फुल आईटीसी व्हाट वाज अवेलेबल इज अवेलेबल ऑलरेडी कैन बी यूज्ड फॉर पेमेंट ऑफ देयर अदर जीएसटी now restaurant ke liye whatever gst they are collecting they will just collect the gst and pay it to the government that's it they are going ahead and telling over here next e-commerce not required to reverse itc on account of restaurant service on which it pays gst under 95 e-commerce shall be liable to pay gst liability in cash itc cannot be utilized for payment of gst that's it they are going ahead and telling you can't use itc this gst has to be paid in cash that's it and itc reversal nothing has to be reversed no itc reversal will be attracted next can e-commerce utilize can e-commerce utilize itc to pay tax with respect to restaurant baba i have already told you it has to be paid in cash only itc utilization cannot be done next would supply of goods or services other than restaurant service through e-commerce be taxed at 5% without itc baba other services now supposing there is one uh, e-commerce operator there is an e-commerce operator they are supplying restaurant services also and they are supplying other services also now tell me one thing on the restaurant service though from the customer they will collect there is a restaurant over here customer went ahead and ordered order got directed order got supplied on the restaurant service though they will collect gst 5% gst and pay it to the government my question is what about other services for other services whatever is the respective rate applicable supposingly e-commerce is going ahead and selling some goods also might be they sold some goods also to this person from this person whatever the gst is applicable on the goods they will collect and pay it to the government simple as that baba it can happen no i am an e-commerce operator i am supplying restaurant service also i am selling some goods on my own account also if i am selling some goods on my own account for those goods whatever is the gst applicable i'll collect and pay it to the government simple other services also i am providing other services pay whatever gst is there i'll collect and pay it to the government simple that's it on other services gst will continue to be billed collected and deposited in the same manner as it is done in present e-commerce will deposit tcs on such supplies might be okay supposingly these are not provided on their own account theek hai what happened might be there is one person who is there there is another person who is there he is also supplying services or goods through e-commerce other services or other goods one person went online and he booked other services other services were being directed he went ahead and supplied he went ahead and made the payment other services ka case mein tcs will be deducted and the remaining amount will be paid to him simple as that only on restaurant service gst will be collected at the rate of 5% and paid to the government by the e-commerce operator other services as it was continuing before it will be continuing tcs or provision will be applicable because those other services might not be under section number 95 on 95 mein housekeeping accommodation transportation and restaurant services are only covered other than those services other services are not covered under section number 95 i hope everyone is clear till here people quickly give me heads up can we all go ahead would restaurant services and goods and services other than restaurant sold by a restaurant to a customer under the same order bill different bill differently who shall be liable to raise the invoices in such case baba when restaurant services and goods and service other than restaurant are sold to the to a customer under the same order it is advisable that e-commerce raises a separate bill what they are going ahead and telling supposingly there is one e-commerce operator theek hai i went and bought some other goods also and i went ahead and bought uh, took restaurant services also they are going ahead and telling if one person went online and booked restaurant service restaurant services may restaurant service will be supplied now here gst will be collected and paid on the restaurant services by the e-commerce operator theek okay? hai sir supposingly i went ahead and paid rest, uh, paid uh, for the restaurant ka food also and other goods also other goods or services also then what they are going ahead and telling baba restaurant services ke liye e-commerce operator you give one different bill charge gst at the rate of 5% for other goods please give, give a different bill is what they are going ahead and telling 
they are telling when restaurant services and goods and service other than restaurant services are sold by a restaurant to the customer might be there is one restaurant from whom i book food also might be this restaurant is supplying some candles also I wanted to buy birthday candles, so I went ahead and booked other goods also. So, Baba, in this scenario, they are going ahead and telling it is advisable that e commerce raises a separate bill for the restaurant services because for the restaurant service, they are liable to collect GST and pay it to the government. Now, what will happen? I'll tell you. Might be, supposingly, I am going ahead and supplying food also, and I am supplying some other goods also. Goods and food also. Okay. Now, what will happen? One person went to uh, e-commerce operator e-commerce operator directed it to me okay for food which i have supplied this person will pay gst to the e-commerce operator yes sir and e-commerce operator will pay gst to the government now other goods which this person has booked what will happen he will go he has gone ahead and booked the order order has come to me i will supply the goods i will go ahead and give him the invoice now in this scenario they are going ahead and telling baba listen to me very carefully e-commerce operator ko they have gone ahead and told for the food anyways you will be going ahead and collecting the gst and paid to the government so for food it is always advisable that you raise a separate bill for the goods it can happen that the person will place the order e-commerce will direct the order and for the goods there will be a separate which will bill which will go the payment will come to you you deduct tcs and pay it to him simple next who will issue invoice in respect of restaurant service supplied through e-commerce, whether by the restaurant or by the e-commerce? Who will issue the invoice? Sir, restaurant will issue the invoice. The invoice in respect of restaurant service supplied through e-commerce will be issued by the e-commerce operator because e-commerce operator has to charge GST from you. So, e-commerce operator will go ahead and raise the invoice for the food ka bill. Other things, ka, other things ka, if it is goods, you will only raise the bill, you, you will make the payment to him, he will deduct TCS and pay the amount to you. Done sir. Next. For restaurant service, who will raise the bill? E-commerce operator. Next. Clarification may be issued as regards to reporting of restaurant services, value and GST liability in the GST return. They are going ahead and asking about clarification. Now this clarification which is there is not important from exam point of view why sir baba because this was just a uh, how to go ahead and file the return they will not go ahead and ask you in the exam with respect to this question but still a number of other services are already notified under section number 95 in respect of such services e-commerce operators are presently paying gst by filing by filling the details in the their section number 9 in their GSTR 3B. So, if I am an e-commerce operator and 9.5 ka services are supplied by me, I am going ahead and showing it in my GSTR 3B and paying the GST for the 9.5 wala services, e-commerce operator is paying the GST. The e-commerce may on services notified under section number 9.5 include a restaurant service provided through e-commerce may continue to the pay the GST by furnishing the details in b means e-commerce operator can go ahead and pay the gst by including those restaurant services in their gstr 3b reporting them there as outward taxable supply for besides e-commerce may also from time for the time being furnish the details of such supplies in their gstr1 as the case may be for accounting purposes in their gstr1 also they can go ahead and furnish registered person supplying restaurant services through e-commerce under section number 95 basically they are going ahead and talking about the restaurant will report such supplies made through e-commerce in table 8 of GSTR 1 and table 3.1 of GSTR 3B. Basically what they are telling is GSTR 1 and GSTR 3B may both the restaurant as well as the e-commerce operator will go ahead and report. However, the GST will not pay to be paid by this person. GST will be paid by the e-commerce operator. Simple. They are telling registered person supplying restaurant service through e-commerce just report in GSTR1. You just have to report in your GSTR1 and GSTR3B. E-commerce operator will furnish the details in GSTR1 and GSTR3B and pay the tax. Who will be paying the tax? E-commerce operator. I hope this point is clear to all. Done sir, point is clear. For this circular, I will go ahead and tell you it's very very important for exam. They can go ahead and ask a small question. Are we 100% clear? Can we go ahead everyone? Is the point clear to all? Can we go ahead?
Now, the next amendment is in the chapter of composition. Everyone over here, composition ka chapter mein, I hope you guys have the chart. In the chart of composition, section number 10-2 went ahead and told us, Baba, section number 10-2 went ahead and told us, who are the people who are ineligible for composition scheme? Yes, sir, we remember, section number 10-2 went ahead and told us, who are the people who are ineligible for composition scheme? We remember, sir, that manufacturers, manufacturers of pan masala, aerated water, ice cream and tobacco, Pan masala, aerated water, ice cream and tobacco are ineligible for opting for composition scheme. Now, they have gone ahead and made an amendment and they have gone ahead and told, now these people are also ineligible. Yes, sir, we remember ineligible people were M, I, N, E, S. Mines were ineligible. So, M for manufacturer. If manufacturer, they have gone ahead and now included that if you are a person who is going ahead and making fly as bricks, blocks or aggregate with 90% or more fly as content, bricks of fossil meal, similar siliceous earth, then building bricks, earthen or roofing tile, then you are also not eligible for composition scheme. Sir, what do you mean by this? They are going ahead and telling if you are a manufacturer of fly as bricks or fly as aggregate with 90% or more fly as content or fly as block. Baba, these are fly as block blocks baba you know bricks bricks which are made of fly ash fly ash means sir what do you mean by fly ash uh, ash ash baba this is ash ashes if one thing is burned supposingly uh, wood is being burned after it is burned the ashes which remain yes sir so they are telling if fly ash because the ash flies baba you will see no the ashes which are there it will be flying so the name is fly ash for that ashes which is there so this fly ash bricks which are there or bricks of fossil meal. Sir, what do you mean by fossil meal? Baba, these mountains which are there, no? These mountains are old fossil remains which are there. These mountains say they go ahead and make bricks. These mountains, they go ahead and cut and make bricks out of it. Those are known as bricks of fossil meal or similar siliceous earth. These are known as bricks of fossil meal or similar siliceous earth means this earth may this brown color ka bricks gray uh, yellowish color ka bricks are also found in the market which are being sold okay those bricks who are selling manufacturers or building bricks baba this normal bricks which are there so bricks of flying as baba you will see this gray color ka ash bricks or this brown color ka bricks which are there or out of this no this kind of bricks are made i'll show you this kind of bricks this kind of bricks are being made. Okay, sir. These are known as uh, diatomite, diatomite bricks, etc. Okay, diatomite. Yes, diatomite bricks. So these bricks which are made out of fossil meal. Okay, or earthen or roofing tiles. Baba, these roofing tiles which are there, no? These roofing tiles which are there, which are earthen or roofing tiles, basically made out of earth. Okay, earthen or roofing tiles which are there, this roofing tiles etc. case may they are telling if you are a manufacturer of all these four items also, you will become ineligible for composition scheme. Always remember one thing, earlier manufacturers of pan masala, aerated water, ice cream and tobacco were ineligible for composition scheme. Now, if you are a person who is a manufacturer of flying as bricks, uh, bricks of fossil meal or similar siliceous earth or if you are making building bricks this brown color ka bricks or you are making earthen or roofing tiles okay we are not talking about normal tiles baba this roofing tiles which are there if you are a person who is making then you are also ineligible for composition scheme now remember one thing only if manufacturer of these four items or pit is there he is ineligible traders will be eligible for composition scheme only manufacturers are made ineligible i hope this point is clear are we all clear with the amendment relating to composition scheme yes everyone are we all 100 percent clear with the amendment yes sir we are all clear let's go ahead now, please come to the chapter of registration. In the chapter of registration, the next amendment which is there, they have gone ahead and told over here. 
बाबा मैन्युफैक्चरर ऑफ मैन्युफैक्चरर ऑफ पान सो यू हैव टू रिमेंबर फॉर योर एग्जाम पान मसाला एरिएटेड वाटर आइसक्रीम एंड टोबैको फ्लाई एज ब्रिक्स ठीक है ब्रिक्स ऑफ सिलिसियस अर्थ और फॉसिल मील ओके देन सर इफ इट इज बिल्डिंग ब्रिक्स और इफ इट इज अर्थन और रूफिंग टाइल्स विच आर देयर दिस पीपल इफ दे आर मैन्युफैक्चर दे आर इन एलिजिबल फॉर कॉम्पोजिशन स्कीम बट ट्रेडर्स विद बी एलिजिबल रिमेंबर ओनली मैन्युफैक्चर ऑफ दिस आइटम्स आर इन एलिजिबल फॉर कॉम्पोजिशन स्कीम डन सर पॉइंट इज क्लियर नाउ द नेक्स्ट वन इज रजिस्ट्रेशन इन द चैप्टर ऑफ रजिस्ट्रेशन द अमेंडमेंट विच इज देयर इज बबा डू यू गाइज रिमेंबर फोर्टी लैख का हायर लिमिट वॉज अलाउड सर फोर्टी लैख का हायर लिमिट विच इज देयर दिस पीपल आर अलाउड फोर्टी लैख का हायर लिमिट ये सर हु आर दिस पीपल सर सप्लायर्स हु एवर इज द सप्लायर ओके दिस पीपल वे आर नॉट अलाउड फोर्टी लैख का हायर लिमिट सर कैन यू टेल अस वॉट वॉज द लिमिट फॉर रजिस्ट्रेशन बाबा रजिस्ट्रेशन लिमिट इफ यू गाइज रिमेंबर एम स्क्वायर एन टी आई वेंट एड एंड टोल्ड यू टेन लैख सप्लायर ऑफ गुड्स टेन लैख सप्लायर ऑफ सर्विसेस सर प्यूमाज ऑफ तेलंगाना ठीक है सर यू वेंट एड एंड टोल्ड ट्वेंटी लैख सप्लायर ऑफ गुड्स ट्वेंटी लैख सप्लायर ऑफ सर्विस देन यू टोल्ड सर ओक ऑफ हिमाचल प्रदेश ऑल दिस पीपल्स हु आर देयर इफ यू आर ए सप्लायर ऑफ गुड्स फोर्टी लैख लिमिट एंड सप्लायर ऑफ सर्विस सर ट्वेंटी लैख का लिमिट वॉज देयर बट दिस फोर्टी लैख का हायर लिमिट यू वेंट एड एंड टोल्ड इफ यू आर ए सप्लायर सप्लायर ऑफ पान मसाला आइसक्रीम एंड टोबैको पान मसाला आइसक्रीम एंड टोबैको for you 40 lakh limit was not given for you the limit was 20 lakh now if you are a supplier always remember one thing if you are a supplier of fly ash bricks or bricks of similar siliceous earth or fossil meal or building bricks or if you are a person who is going ahead and uh, supplying uh, earthen or roofing tiles then they are going ahead and telling if you are a supplier of this items also 40 lakh ka higher limit will not be given to you for you the limit will become 20 lakh rupees baba that's all is the amendment supplier of pan masala aerated water baba aerated water is cut over here okay this is mistake aerated water is not there here aerated water please cut please cut aerated water everyone theek hai ice cream pan masala ice cream and tobacco were ineligible for 40 lakh baba now they were not eligible for a higher limit of 40 lakh now they are telling fly ash bricks or blocks or aggregates with 90% or more fly ash content bricks of fossil meal or similar siliceous earth building bricks or earthen on roofing tile these people are also not eligible for a higher limit of 40 lakh now these people if you are a supplier also remember and supplier can include manufacturer and trader also whether you are a manufacturer or trader always remember one thing suppliers of bricks or earthen or roofing tile also will not be given a higher limit of 40 lakh you will be given a limit of 20 lakh rupees only are we clear with this point can we go ahead remember one thing now with effect from uh 1st of april 2022 high limit of 40 lakh shall not be available earlier also for not available for pan masala ice cream and tobacco baba aerated water wala people are allowed 40 lakh ka limit remember uh, in registration 40 lakh ka limit is allowed to people who are supplying aerated water cold drinks etc theek hai now everyone over here so it is pan masala ice cream tobacco uh, flyers breaks breaks of fossil meal building breaks earthen or roofing tile this people are not allowed 40 lakh a hair limit for them the limit will be 20 lakh rupees only i hope everyone is clear till here can we go ahead everyone are we clear with this point that sir earlier pan masala ice cream tobacco these people were not eligible for a hair limit of 40 lakh they were taking only 20 lakh a, they were given only 20 lakh a limit now these four people are also included in this and they are also not given 40 lakh a hair limit i hope this point is clear to all yes sir this point is clear let's go ahead now please come back everyone now rule number 10b has been inserted i hope you guys have this chart which is there if you don't have this chart also no problem i have given over here in registration section number 25 which is there people are we all clear till here everyone quickly tell me are we all 100% clear till here can we go ahead chalo let's go ahead i hope everyone is clear till here next in registration they have gone ahead and introduced when one new rule 
Rule number 10B has been introduced. Sir, which is the rule number 10B? This rule number 10B has been introduced. I will go ahead and tell you. Baba, nothing simple. What they have gone ahead and told. Do you remember who are the people who are required Aadhaar authentication? Sir, Aadhaar authentication are, is required by individual authorized signatory, managing or authorized partner and karta. Individual authorized signatory, managing and authorized partner and karta are required Aadhaar authentication. Yes, sir, you had told under section number 25, 6B and 6C that, sir, individual authorized signatory, managing and authorized partner and karta are required Aadhaar authentication. Yes, sir, you had told. Now, sir, if they did not do Aadhaar authentication, then what used to happen? Physical premises ka verification used to happen and they were given registration. Remember one thing. Now they are telling, if you are a person who is required Aadhaar authentication, might be you would have gone ahead and taken a registration earlier, might be you would have gone ahead and taken a registration and at the time of registration, physical premises ka verification was done and Aadhaar authentication was not done. They are going ahead and telling now, now a person, if he wants to go ahead and file revocation application for filing application for revocation of cancellation of registration. Baba, do you remember? Sir, my registration is cancelled. Okay, I want to apply for revocation for applying for revocation or for filing a refund application under rule number 89 or filing refund application under rule number 96 rule number 96 is export of goods ka case mein whenever you are going ahead and paying the gst export of goods ka case mein whenever you are going ahead and paying gst uh, the shipping bill which is filed with the custom authority custom department goes ahead and gives you the refund yes sir now always remember one thing whether you are claiming refund by filing rfd01 or it's a case of refund under rule number 96 whenever you are filing revocation application or refund application. Revocation application, revocation of cancellation of registration or refund application. If your Aadhaar authentication is not done, the application will not be entertained. Always remember one thing. Now, Aadhaar authentication is made mandatory if you want to file revocation application and refund ka application. Done, sir. Point is clear. Remember one thing. If the registered person, whoever is the registered person who has been issued a registration certificate might be before coming of Aadhaar authentication on before Aadhaar authentication came on 1st of April 2020 you had already taken registration okay or might be after Aadhaar authentication came your individual authorized signatory managing authorized partner and karta you took registration by going ahead and getting your physical premises ka verification done without giving Aadhaar without giving your Aadhaar they are going ahead and telling those people who are granted registration without their Aadhaar being verified now, those people, please make sure that if you are, you have to undergo authentication of Aadhaar of the proprietor in case of proprietorship firm. If in case of partner, any partner in case of partnership firm or Karta in case of Hindu undivided family, managing director or whole time director in case of company or any of the member of the managing committee of association or body of individual or society or of the trustee of board of trustees in case of trust and so baba a, this people and of the authorized signatory means partner ka also you have to do and if there is an authorized signatory who is other than that partner then that authorized signatory ka also other authentication is done only then so sir i am a registered person in gst okay they are going ahead and telling Sir, you are a partnership firm, partner and the authorized signatory who is there, his other authentication has to be done. Only then you can apply for revocation application and your refund applications will be accepted. Done, sir. Point is clear. Sir, I don't have Aadhaar. Baba, do one thing. Apply for Aadhaar. When you apply for Aadhaar, one Aadhaar enrollment number you will get. So, they are telling if Aadhaar has not been assigned to the person required to undergo Aadhaar authentication, such person shall furnish the following identification document. Aadhaar enrollment ID slip. Baba, you apply for Aadhaar, you will get one and Aadhaar enrollment ID slip that plus give your bank passbook with photocopy, photo, photograph or voter ID card or passport or driving license. So, sir, Aadhaar enrollment ID along with bank passbook, Aadhaar enrollment ID along with, sir, uh, voter ID card or Aadhaar enrollment ID along with passport or other enrollment id along with driving license can also be given 
but remember one thing because now we are going ahead and taking your Aadhaar enrollment ID slip or ID along with that passbook we are taking but you have not done Aadhaar authentication still once you are given the Aadhaar number Baba now you have applied once you are given you apply you apply for Aadhaar give your Aadhaar enrollment ID slip along with this any one of this you give and we will accept your revocation or refund application but Provided further that such person shall undergo the authentication of Aadhaar number within a period of 30 days of the allotment of Aadhaar number. Once you are allotted the Aadhaar number, within 30 days you have to undergo Aadhaar authentication. Simple as that. Sir, what is this amendment? Nothing, Baba. I'll tell you about the amendment. Rule number 10B has been introduced when you are going ahead and applying for a revocation application or refund application is being filed by you. Remember one thing, Aadhaar authentication has been made mandatory. Sir, who are the people who are required to do Aadhaar authentication? They have gone in and told. If you are a registered person who has already been issued certificate of registration, proprietorship firm may, the proprietor and the authorized signatory. Partnership firm may, any partner and the authorized signatory. Sir, HUF may, Karta and the authorized signatory. Sir, company may, managing director, whole time director and the authorized signatory. Then, sir, uh, any member of managing committee of association or body of individual or society or trustee in case of board of trust and the authorized signatory has to undergo other authentication only then your revocation application or refund application under rule number 89 or 96 shall be entertained i hope everyone is clear till here can we all go ahead always remember one thing for your revocation application or refund application, both the case may Aadhaar authentication has been made mandatory. Sir, I don't have Aadhaar. Apply for Aadhaar. Aadhaar enrollment ID along with bank passbook or voter ID or passport or driving license. You can go ahead and submit and your uh, revocation or refund application will be taken. But once you are given Aadhaar number, within 30 days you have to undergo Aadhaar authentication. I hope everyone is clear with this point. Can we go ahead everyone? Yes, sir, we are all clear. Listen, rule number 10B may they went ahead and told for filing your revocation application, your Aadhaar authentication has to be done. So now in rule number 23, which is basically talking about a revocation application, they are telling revocation application is subject to rule number 20, uh, subject to Aadhaar authentication means nothing, no amendment. First, do your Aadhaar authentication, only then you can file your revocation application. The same because of this amendment, because of rule number 10B wala amendment, they have gone ahead and made the amendment in rule number uh, 23. They are telling, sir, if you want to go ahead, if you want to go ahead and file your revocation application, simple, please do your Aadhaar authentication. It is subject to rule number 10B means first do your Aadhaar authentication, then file your revocation application. That's it. With effect from 1st of January, Aadhaar authentication has been made mandatory for submission of revocation. Sir, my registration is cancelled. Please, I want to apply for revocation. If you want to apply for revocation, first do your Aadhaar authentication. Sir, don't have Aadhaar. Okay, Aadhaar enrollment ID or slip along with that bank passbook or voter ID or driving license you can go ahead and give. Yes, sir, point is clear. Chalo, let's go ahead. Everyone over here, see. I have gone ahead and made the amendment in the chart also. Revocation of cancellation of registration always remember application ke before the application your Aadhaar authentication has to be done done sir that's all is the amendment so what are the amendment in the chapter of registration everyone sir registration chapter may we went ahead and understood number one number one remember sir if you want to go ahead and registration ka higher limit of 40 lakh will not be available to whom pan masala ice cream tobacco supplier plus bricks wala supplier and that fly ash bricks or sir bricks of fossil meal or building bricks earthen or roofing tiles wala people are also not allowed 40 lakh a higher limit sir they will they will be given a lower limit of 20 lakh rupees only for the purpose of registration okay sir secondly rule number 10b has been introduced please do your other authentication if you want to file revocation application and refund application thirdly in rule number 23 which is relating to your revocation application they have told other authentication is mandatory same because of this amendment uh, consequential amendment has been done in rule number 20 nothing do your other authentication then apply for revocation application that's all they are going ahead and telling are we all clear, Baba? 100% clear with the amendment for registration chapter? Yes, sir. We are all 100% clear. 
चलो द नेक्स्ट अमेंडमेंट नाउ एवरी वन एग्जामशन चैप्टर एग्जामशन चैप्टर में दे हैव गॉन एड एंड मेड वन अमेंडमेंट नाउ एग्जामशन चैप्टर में वॉट इज द अमेंडमेंट देव मेड आई टेल यू एग्जामशन का चार्ट आई मॉडिफाइड ए लिटिल यू गाइज कैन टेक डाउन दिस न्यू चार्ट ऑल्सो इफ यू वॉन्ट एवरी वन लिसन सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट स्टेट गवर्नमेंट यूनियन टेरिटरी गवर्नमेंट को इफ एनी वन इज प्रोवाइडिंग प्योर सर्विसेस एवरी वन लिसन टू मी वेरी केयरफुली प्योर सर्विसेस और कॉम्पोजिट सप्लाई ऑफ सर्विस इन रिलेशन टू दोज आइटम्स विच आर दोज एक्टिविटीज विच आर टोल्ड इन टू फोर्टी थ्री जी एंड डब्ल्यू इफ दे आर प्रोवाइडिंग इफ एनी वन इज प्रोवाइडिंग आइदर प्योर सर्विसेस और कॉम्पोजिट सप्लाई वेर वैल्यू ऑफ गुड्स इज ट्वेंटी If they are providing in relation to those activities which are told in 243 G N W, it is provided to government or governmental entity or governmental authority. It was exempted earlier. Now this exemption has been withdrawn. So if pure services or composite supply, where value of goods is 25 percent, and it is in relation to those activities which are told in 243 G N W. For an example, I am going ahead and providing pure services or composite supply to the government. Then it is exempt. But if you are providing to government entity or governmental authority the exemption has now been withdrawn and hence it is taxable so if one person is going ahead and providing pure services or composite supply where value of goods is up to how much 25% and it is provided to whom governmental authority or governmental entity the exemption is no more there it is taxable exemption has been withdrawn the scope of taxability has been widened so now they have gone ahead and told pure services or composite supply if you are providing to government and it is in relation to 243 gnw then it is exempt but if you are providing to governmental authority or governmental entity the exemption has been withdrawn and hence it has become taxable now that's all is the amendment exemption is withdrawn and now it shall be taxable i am telling exemption is withdrawn done sir point is clear that's all is the amendment in government related services the next service which is there is transportation service sir transportation services what is the amendment listen to me very carefully if baba you guys know that if transportation services which are there everyone transportation services are provided by road and sir it is stage carriage or contract carriage or metered cab auto rickshaw e rickshaw it is always if non ac it is exempt yes sir so sir supposingly there is a stage carriage or contract carriage or auto rickshaw or e rickshaw or sir metered cab and they are providing the services to you if this is non ac baba ac etc is taxable i am not talking about them non ac and they are providing you the services directly sir then it is always exempted now what happens supposingly if they are providing their services to an e commerce operator might be a red bus is there or might be there is ola uber which is there and you went online and booked the services of stage carriers contract carriage etc and they are going ahead and providing the service now because this e-commerce operator is involved what they are going ahead and telling this people ka services will no more be under exemption e-commerce operator made liable under section number 95 e-commerce operator will be liable to pay the gst done sir point is clear always remember one thing and hence they are telling it is generally exempt but if this services are provided through e-commerce operator it will not be exempted e-commerce will be liable to pay gst under section number 95 baba still stage carriers non ac contract carriers non ac metered cab auto rickshaw e rickshaw ka services directly provided to a customer is exempted but if this services are provided through e-commerce then it will no more be under exemption under section number 95 e-commerce will be liable to pay gst under RCM. I hope this point is clear to all. See, it is saying exemption not applicable if services are supplied through e-commerce. Basically, supposingly you booked a bus through Red Bus, they are going ahead and telling Red Bus will be liable to pay the GST under section number nine five. Done, sir. Point is clear. Are we all clear with this point, everyone? Can we go ahead? Is this exemption clear to all? that baba if they are providing you directly the services stage carriage uh then metered auto rickshaw e rickshaw road etc ke through services baba generally these services are exempted but provided through e-commerce online e-commerce operator 
then e-commerce operator will directly collect the GST from you and pay it to the government and hence it will not be exempted. Done sir, point is clear. Please come to the next chapter. Tax invoice chapter. Everyone please come to the chapter of tax invoice now. Please come to the chapter of tax invoice. Tax invoice chapter related amendment. Let's do it. Tax invoice chapter may they have gone ahead and Baba, do you guys remember e-invoicing? Yes, sir. E-invoicing we remember that whenever one registered person whose aggregate turnover is greater than 50 crore, it used to be. Now they have made the e-invoicing uh, turnover limit applicability is only 20 crore rupees. So if you are a registered person, earlier this was 50 crore, now made 20 crore. That's all is the amendment. Sir, if you are a registered person whose aggregate turnover is greater than how much? 20 crore. With respect to supplies to a registered person or which is B2B supplies and for export, you will always do e-invoicing. I hope you guys remember if you are supplying B2B supplies and for export, you have to go, go ahead and do e-invoicing. If your turnover is greater than 50 crore, now that limit has been made as 20 crore. That's all is the amendment in your chapter of tax invoice. Are we all clear with this point, everyone? Can we go ahead, everyone? Are we all clear with this point? E invoicing provision made applicable if your turnover from any preceding financial year 17, 18, 18, 19, 19, 20, 20, 21 in any preceding financial year exceeds 20 crore. It is not 50 crore, now it is 20 crore. Done, sir. This point is clear. Let's go ahead now. Okay, there was one circular, there was one circular. Relating to e-invoicing, everyone listen to me very carefully. I will tell you what is the amendment made over here. I went ahead and did some export of service. But you know what? When is it supply export of service? You can call something as export of service. Baba, if it is export, you will do. If it is export, export ka case mein always e-invoicing is applicable yes sir but sir what is export supplier is in india recipient is outside india place of supply is outside india if you are receiving foreign convertible currency and you both are not mere establishment of distinct person then it is export of service yes sir you know what happened i did not receive foreign currency i received i did not receive foreign convertible currency i received in i did not receive in foreign convertible currency now tell me one thing is it export of service? No, sir, it is not export of service. Because if you don't receive foreign convertible currency, it is not export of service. If it is not export, e-invoicing provisions are not applicable. Because only for export, e-invoicing provisions are applicable. Sir, if e-invoicing provisions are not applicable, it means it's a B2C supply. And for B2C supply, dynamic QR code is applicable. So government ko people went ahead and told, sir, I went ahead and did one supply of service outside India. Suppliers in India, recipient is outside India, place of supply is outside India, but I did not receive foreign convertible currency. If I don't receive foreign convertible currency, then sir, it is not export of service. If it is not export of service, e-invoicing provisions are not applicable because e-invoicing provisions are applicable only in case of export. And now invoicing provisions are not applicable, sir. It's a B2C supply. And for B2C supply, sir, dynamic QR code is applicable. It means, sir, now if I have gone ahead and provided services to this guy in the invoice, I should give dynamic QR code so that he can scan and pay. Government co people ask, sir, in my invoice, which I went ahead and supplied outside India, because it is not export of service, it's a B2C supply. It's not export. If it is export, then e-invoicing provisions are applicable. When e-invoicing provisions are applicable, dynamic QR code is not applicable. But now, sir, because e-invoicing provisions are not applicable and it's a B2C supply, do I have to go ahead and give dynamic QR code? Baba, tell me one thing. I supplied my services to a person in US. Do you think the US person will use Google Pay of India, phone pay and make the payment? Government went ahead and told Baba, the outside wala person will never make the payment using such dynamic QR code and hence, even though it's not an export of service, B2C supply, but still you don't have to go ahead and give dynamic QR code. I hope this point is clear to all. I went ahead and supplied the services outside India to a person in US. 
but it is not export of service why sir because i did not get i am not going to get foreign convertible currency it is not export of service and e invoicing provisions are not applicable when e invoicing is not applicable already it's a b2c supply dynamic qr code ka provisions are applicable so people asked what to do government went ahead and told in your invoice don't give dynamic qr code also because the person outside india he will anyways not be able to use the dynamic qr code that's all is the clarification given by the government sir when an invoice is issued to a recipient outside india for supply of service such invoice may be issued without dynamic qr code as the dynamic qr code cannot be used by the recipient located outside india for making the payment i hope everyone is clear till here yes sir the point is clear chalo let's go ahead baba whenever you are going ahead and supplying the services outside india please remember one thing in case where the receiver is outside india and the payment is being received in foreign currency through rbi approved mode but as per the provision of igst the place of supply okay here theek hai i'll tell you okay sir listen the payment is received to in foreign currency but still you did not qualify the export of service ka definition then what okay i'm changing my explanation now as per them theek hai sir i receive foreign convertible currency or wherever pro provided inr also received in case of nepal bhutan inr is also permissible but sir it is still not export of service why supplies in india recipient is outside india foreign convertible currency also received but place of supply by applying section number 13 came in india only sir place of supply is in india so sir it is not export of service e invoicing provisions are not applicable e invoicing provisions are not applicable can i call it b2c supply and dynamic qr code has to be given government went ahead and told beta always remember one thing the person outside india cannot scan and pay and hence you don't have to go ahead and give a uh, dynamic qr code also i hope everyone is clear till here can we go ahead everyone are we all clear with this point yes sir Yes sir let's go ahead can we all go ahead everyone chalo now itc chapter ka amendment please come to the chapter of itc please come to the chapter of itc everyone in the chapter of itc the first chart which is there section number 16 in section number 16 we had section number 16 2 which went ahead and told us sir t t tr tr condition yes sir we remember tax uh, paying document has to be there receipt of goods has to be there sir tax should be paid to the government and return has to be filed only then i can take the itc i hope you guys remember sir i should have the tax paying document number 2 sir tax paying document should be there number 2 i should have received the goods tax should be paid by the supplier and i should file the return only then i can take the itc in section number 162 double a has been inserted sir what is section number 162 double a going ahead and telling section number 162 double a goes ahead and says you can take the itc section number 162 went ahead and told number 1 tax paying document number 2 receipt of goods tax paid to the government and return filed here one more point has been added now if one person wants to take itc he can take itc only if the supplier has gone here and filed his gstr1 he has gone ahead and showed the invoice ka details in gstr1 and it is appearing in your gstr 2b 2a may it came from gstr 2a gstr 2b is created i hope you guys know from gstr 2a always remember one thing one supplier he will always go ahead and file gstr 1 yes sir the gstr 1 ka details come in gstr 2a and from gstr 2a every next every 14th gstr 2b is created and now from gstr 2b whatever is appearing a person who is the recipient takes the credit government have gone ahead and inserted one more provisions now saying that sir the details of the invoice you can take the credit with respect to an invoice if the details of the invoice or debit note referred to in clause a basically whatever invoice or debit note you have 
has been furnished by the supplier and such details have been communicated to the recipient of such invoice in such manner prescribed under rule number 37 it means this person has gone ahead and shown in his gstr1 or he has gone ahead and used invoice furnishing facility and the amount is appearing in your gstr2b only then you can go ahead and take the credit done sir point is clear so it means now section number 16 2 does not prescribe four condition number one t tax paying document sir you should have the tax paying document with you yes sir tax paying document means invoice debit note etc sir r receipt you should have received the goods okay sir number three t tax paid to the government the supplier should have paid the tax to the government and sir r for return filed yes sir point is clear always remember one thing earlier provisional credit used to be given 100 percent plus five percent now that provision is gone only if one more provision inserted only if the supplier has shown in his gstr1 and the amount is appearing in your gstr 2 b only then you can take the credit earlier what was there sir whatever the invoices are shown 10 lakh invoices are shown 10 lakh credit i can take but some invoices supposedly 5 lakh invoices are not shown by the suppliers then out of 10 lakh additional 5% I can take, it means I was allowed to take 50,000 ka extra credit with respect to the invoices not shown by the suppliers. But now, if any invoices ka details are not shown by the supplier, you cannot take this 5% credit also. They have made the same amendment in rule number 36.4 also and told, Consequential amendment, no ITC shall be availed by registered person with respect to invoices or debit note which are required to be furnished unless the details have been furnished by the supplier and the details have been communicated in GSTR 2B. Sir, it means now if I want to take the credit, they have made the amendment in section number 16 to AA has been inserted. Because of this, they made the amendment in rule number 36 sub rule 4 also and they went ahead and told now Ramesh if you want to take any ITC TR TR condition to you have to fulfill plus one more condition now is that supplier should have included the invoices or debit note in his GSTR1 or invoice furnishing facility may he should have gone ahead and shown the invoices or debit note and it should be communicated to in GSTR 2A from GSTR 2A 2B is made so only if it is appearing in your GSTR 2B you can take the credit otherwise you can't take the credit I hope this point is 100% clear to all can I go ahead everyone is the point clear to all Yes, sir. Point is clear. This is the amendment in section number 16.2. Because of the amendment in section number 16.2, they made the amendment in rule number 36 sub rule 4 also. They have gone ahead and told ITC simple. You just have to remember one thing. 100% sir invoices furnished. I can take 100%. Whatever invoice is not shown for that I can take whatever is appearing ka 5% additional. Baba, all those things are gone now. Now, only if the amount is appearing in your GSTR 2B, you can take the credit. Otherwise, you can't take the credit. Yes, sir. Point is clear. The same thing has been told over here. Section number 16, this was the amendment. Section number 17 and 18, no amendment. Sir, what was what is the amendment you taught till now? Everyone over here, whenever goods and services is being supplied, supply may I went ahead and told section number 71, double A ka amendment. Please be very careful. Then, sir, GST will be levied. GST will be levied. One GST is levied. Okay. If it is interstate supply or interstate supply, GST will be levied. In GST, one GST is levied, then, sir, uh, you went ahead and told composition levy. In composition levy, I went ahead and told you that, sir, sir manufacturers of PAIT, then I told bricks and roofing tiles, wala manufacturers also are ineligible. Done, sir. Then what happened? Then the next one. Uh, you went ahead, I went ahead and told you about the exemptions also. Yes, sir. Tax invoice ka amendment I told you in e-invoicing chapter. Yes, sir. This point is clear. Now, in ITC chapter, I went ahead and told you the amendment. Always remember one thing. 100, sir, whatever is appearing in my GSTR 2A of that 100% plus additional 5%. Baba, all those things are gone now. Remember one thing. If you want to go ahead and take the amendment, 
if you want to go ahead and take the itc whatever is appearing in your so if the supplier has gone ahead and shown in his gstr1 or invoice furnishing facility and now from 2b to a 2b is prepared in 2b if it is appearing only then that credit can be taken by you i hope this point is clear to all yes sir can we all go ahead everyone yes sir let's go ahead now payment of taxes chapter everyone listen to me very carefully what happened there was one guideline which was issued this is the guideline this is the original guideline which was being issued in payment of taxes chapter okay now what happened out of these guidelines which are issued you know what happened do you remember rule number 86a in payment of taxes there is one rule i will go ahead and show you in my chart which is there one minute everyone Rule number 86A is there. Yes, sir. We know rule number 86A. Rule number 86A goes ahead and gives the power to the commissioner or officer authorized if they have reason to believe that ITC availed in e credit ledger is availed fraudulently or ineligible, then he will not allow the debit of such amount equal to the credit for discharge of the liability or you can't claim refund also. So, if commissioner or the officer authorized by the commissioner, he has reason to believe that the itc which is there in the e credit ledger you have gone ahead and taken it fraudulently or you are ineligible then they will go ahead and block that credit yes sir we remember the reason for blocking also you had gone ahead and told over here now what was happening was every officer was going ahead and blocking the credit however they want for this because so that the officers who are there are following rule number 86a uniformly the government have gone ahead and issued one circular which is there guideline has been issued sir now from exam point of view the actual guideline if you see this big the guideline is there four page ka guideline has been issued however in your ICI ka amendment material they have gone ahead and included one small guideline saying that sir CBIC has issued guideline for disallowing debit of the amount in the e credit ledger means they are going ahead and telling they have issued guidelines to the commissioner or the person authorized by the commissioner for blocking the credit rule number 86a provide that in respect of certain circumstances commissioner or officer authorized by the commissioner has reason to believe that itc in the e credit ledger has been fraudulently availed or ineligible then he may not allow the debit of the amount equivalent to such credit in the e-credit ledger. They can go ahead and block that credit. Okay. On personal of rule number 86A, it is evident that commissioner or officer authorized not below the rank of assistant commissioner must have reason to believe that ITC in the e-credit ledger is ineligible or fraudulently availed before allowing before disallowing the debit means they should have a reason to believe a strong reason to believe has to be there just like that ah huh? hey i will block your credit officers were going ahead and doing that people are there hey i'll block your credit your credit i'll block your credit i'll block they were just blocking the credit just like that block the credit baba rule number 86a does not go ahead and give the power to the commissioner just like that to block the credit they should have a reason to believe a correct reason to believe has to be there only then the credit can be black blocked ground for disallowing the credit the reason for such belief must be one of the following this you guys already know the credit is availed by registered person on the invoice or debit note of the supplier who is not existing supply is not existing or not found to conduct the business sir these reasons to you guys you had already taught us yes baba these reasons are already over here they are telling at least any one of this reason has to be there only then the blocking of the credit can be done that's all has been told to the officer they have told hey officers just like that don't block the credit you can use rule number 86a and block the credit of a person commissioner or the person authorized can block only if the circumstances are there only if they have reason to believe that these circumstances exist they can go ahead and block my credit that's all has been told that's all is the amendment done sir point is clear sir do we have to remember baba this i have already told you under if you remember in the chart these reasons are already told only if they have this reason then they can block your credit otherwise they can't go ahead and just like that block your credit that guideline has been issued so cbic has issued this guideline to protect the 
taxpayer because officers commissioners or officers were just like that going ahead and blocking the credit so guidelines have been issued total bakwas amendment mm -hmm. next then sir then they have gone ahead and told who is the proper authority for the purpose of rule number 86a they have gone ahead and told if you want to go ahead and block the credit if you believe that the amount of ineligibility or fraudulently availed itc does not exceed 1 crore then deputy commissioner or assistant commissioner is the person officer to disallow the debit of the amount from the e-credit ledger who has the authority to block deputy or assistant commissioner above 1 crore up to 5 crore additional commissioner or joint commissioner above 5 crore principal commissioner or commissioner has the authority this small paragraph you can remember otherwise this amendment is total bakwas done sir point is clear remember one thing nothing they just cbic went ahead and told its officer hey officer when you are blocking the credit you should have reason to believe that people have gone ahead and done all this thing only if you have reason to believe the reason to believe must be based on all of this okay uh, any, uh, hey, I think you have done this. I will block the credit. Just like that you can't block the credit. Your reason to believe should be associated to any one of them. Only the, what is told under rule number 86A. Only then you can block the credit. Otherwise you can't block the credit. And sir, which is the officer who will block your credit? If the amount of ineligible credit exceeds 1 crore, not exceeding 1 crore, then sir, Deputy Commissioner, Assistant Commissioner, more than 1 crore, up to 5 crore, not exceeding 5 crore, then additional commissioner or joint commissioner above 5 crore principal commissioner or the commissioner has the power this you can remember that's it otherwise there is no important amendment which has come done sir point is clear now are we all clear till here can we move to the next amendment everyone the last amendment basically uh, in the chapter of returns now please come to the chapter of returns yes everyone are we all clear till here can we go ahead In the chapter of returns, everyone, in the chapter of returns, the amendment which has come now. Rule number 59 used to go ahead and tell. Yes, sir. Rule number 59 used to go ahead and tell when your, when registered person will be barred from filing his GSTR 1 or invoice furnishing facility. They are going ahead and telling. Earlier, there were three reasons which were there. When you will not be able to file your GSTR 1 or do invoice furnishing facility. Now, out of the three reasons, the third reason has been dropped. Only two reasons are there. That's all. Sir, cases when registered person will be debarred from furnishing GSTR 1 or invoice furnishing facility. You know what you are doing. You are full bad boy. You are filing your GSTR 1, passing on the credit. He is GSTR 2B, may it was appearing. Aram Singh is enjoying. You are not filing your GSTR 3B. Again, next month you are filing GSTR 1. He is getting the credit. You are not filing GSTR 3B. Or you are doing invoice furnishing facility. The credit is going to the front party. He is enjoying the credit. You are not filing your GSTR 3B. They are going ahead and telling, we will block your GSTR 1 and invoice furnishing facility in these two reasons. Earlier there were three reasons. Now, last reason has been deleted. Total bakwas, only two reasons are remaining. What are the two reasons where you are when your GSTR 1 or invoice furnishing facility will be blocked, they are telling registered person not allowed to furnish GSTR 1 if GSTR 3B is not furnished. So, Baba, if you are a person who is not under QRMP scheme, you are not under QRMP scheme, you will be filing GSTR 1 every month and GSTR 3B. Yes, sir. So, for example, April month ka GSTR 1 you filed, it went to the other person in GSTR 2B and he took the credit. Aram se maja, he did took the credit, recipient took the credit. Now, if you don't file your GSTR 3B for the month of April, May month mein, you can't go ahead. Always remember one thing, April month ka GSTR 3B is not done. May month onwards, GSTR 1 not allowed to you. Done, sir, point is clear. This is people who are not under QRMP, basically people who are filing monthly returns. Okay, sir, if I am a person under QRMP scheme, then I will do invoice furnishing facility. It will go in the person ka GSTR 2B, he will take credit. I will do invoice furnishing facility. Again, April month, May month and June month, sir, I will do GSTR 1 and it will go to the other person ka GSTR 2B and he will take the credit. Baba, for April, May and June, because you are under QRMP, only one GSTR 3B has to be filed. Yes. For the quarter, if you don't file GSTR 3B, 
नेक्स्ट क्वार्टर के लिए एवरी वन ओवर हियर नेक्स्ट क्वार्टर के लिए जी एस टी आर इनवॉइस फर्निशिंग फैसिलिटी इनवॉइस फर्निशिंग फैसिलिटी एंड जी एस टी आर वन ऑल द थ्री विल नॉट बी अलाउड टू यू इट विल बी ब्लॉक इफ यू डोंट फाइल दी जी एस टी आर थ्री बी ऑलवेज रिमेंबर वन थिंग इफ यू आर ए पर्सन अंडर मंथली रिटर्न देन बाबा you will be going ahead and filing your gstr1 it will go to the gstr to be of the person uh, then 11th you will be going ahead and doing this and 20th you have to file gstr 3b yes sir but i did not file my gstr 3b remember if april month ka gstr 3b you did not file may month onwards gstr1 may month ka gstr1 will not be allowed to you it will be blocked if you are a person under qrmp scheme april may and june you have to do invoice furnishing invoice furnishing gstr1 and return will be quarterly they are going and telling if quarterly gstr 3b you don't file the next quarter ke liye invoice furnishing facility or gstr1 will be blocked for you i hope everyone is clear to all see it says see now it has been amended what they are going and telling see A registered person shall not be allowed to furnish the details of outward supply of goods, services, or both. Means GSTR one will not be allowed if you have not furnished GSTR three B for the preceding month. Baba, preceding month only one month. Last month, if you have not filed, then also gone. Next, this is also an amendment. Okay. Next, registered person who is under QRMP scheme, basically for them they are telling opted for QRMP, not allowed to furnish GSTR one. or invoice furnishing facility if you have not furnished gstr 3b for preceding tax period so baba this is for non qrmp this for qrmp person non qrmp person baba gstr 1 filed 3b not filed next gstr 1 block sir quarterly return person if you don't file your quarterly gstr 3b next invoice furnishing facility and gstr 1 all shall be blocked are we all clear with this point yes baba it is not preceding 2 months ka it is only 1 month ka if you don't file gstr 3b then baba next gstr 1 will be blocked for you are we all clear with this point yes sir we are all clear remember earlier it was two preceding months but now it is only one preceding month if last one month ka return gstr 3b not filed next month onwards gstr 1 you will not be able to file and sir uh qrmp scheme wala invoice furnishing facility and gstr1 both will be blocked if one quarter ka gstr 3b is not filed is the point clear to all are we all 100% clear till here everyone are we all 100% clear yes sir we are all clear here we are done with the amendment till the chapter of returns congratulations people done चलो लेट्स डू वन थिंग लेट्स डू वन थिंग लेट्स टेक ए ब्रेक ऑफ 15 मिनट्स क्विकली लेट्स गो एंड क्विकली लेट्स रिज्यूम 15 मिनट्स ब्रेक इलेवन ट्वेंटी वी रिज्यूम लेट्स टेक ए ब्रेक एवरी वन वंस वी कम बैक फ्रॉम द ब्रेक वील गो एड एंड रिज्यूम एंड देन वील गो एड एंड स्टार्ट विथ डिमांड एंड रिकवरी लेट्स टेक ए ब्रेक एवरी वन आर वी ऑल क्लियर टिल हियर यस सर वी आर ऑल क्लियर 11:20 we resume everyone let's take a break quickly go quickly come back 11:20 we resume chalo people welcome back after the break let's go ahead and continue our amendment let's go ahead and continue our amendment everyone please come back now the next amendment is in the chapter of demand and recovery baba i hope you guys remember chapter of demand and recovery yes sir chapter of demand and recovery we remember now section number 73 and 74 which is there in your chapter of in demand and recovery this section number 73 and section number 74 73 told about bona fide case mein demand order section number 74 told about fraud case mein demand order now there is an explanation which is there in the explanation there is a small amendment which i have gone ahead and done sir what is the explanation earlier what used to happen in this explanation in the explanation actually says this there are two points which are written let's read the explanation it says 
फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ सेक्शन नंबर सेवेंटी थ्री एंड दिस सेक्शन मीन सेक्शन नंबर सेवेंटी फोर सेवेंटी थ्री एंड सेवेंटी फोर में देर वॉज ए सेक्शन विच यूज टू बी देयर द एक्सप्रेशन ऑल प्रोसीडिंग इन रेस्पेक्ट ऑफ द नोटिस सेल नॉट इंक्लूड सेक्शन नंबर वन थर्टी टू इट मीन्स इफ सपोजिंगली यू वेंट एड ऑफिसर वेंट एड एंड इशूड शोकोज नोटिस यू वेंट एड एंड paid the amount with respect to the show cause notice then what used to happen is means all the proceedings under section number 73 and 74 used to be closed but section number 132 which was relating to your imprisonment proceeding baba so if section number uh, 73 and 74 ka by chance notice came you entered and made the payment of the notice proceedings used to be concluded yes sir but section number 132 which is imprisonment ka imprisonment ka proceedings never used to be com, com, uh, concluded this change this thing mein there is no amendment theek hai then when the notice under the same proceeding is issued to the main person liable to pay tax you know what happened supposingly there was a there was a so for an example everyone please listen to me very carefully for an example this is ram राम पे वन नोटिस हैज बीन इश्यूड अंडर सेक्शन नंबर 73 और सेक्शन नंबर 74. नाउ एंड देर इज वन सपोजिंगली ट्रांसपोर्टर ऑल्सो ट्रांसपोर्टर पे ऑल्सो वन नोटिस हैज बीन इश्यूड नाउ वट हैपेंड राम इज द मेन अक्यूज मेन पर्सन एंड दीज आर द पर्सन हु आर हेल्पिंग माइट बी द ट्रांसपोर्टर दीज आर द पीपल हु आर द बेसिकली कॉल्ड एज द को नोटिस Co notice means if main person co notice is issued, the people who are going ahead and helping the person in going ahead and doing some crime, those people pay also notice will be issued. Now what used to happen earlier is if notice is issued the to the main person, all other persons to whom notices were issued under section number one twenty two, one twenty five, one twenty nine, one thirty, all proceedings used to get concluded. means if main person is proved that sir i am not guilty supposing it is proven that main person went ahead and fought the case and it was proved that main person is not guilty then baba all the co notices we are there against them also all the proceedings used to get concluded everyone over here when the notice under the same proceeding is issued to the main person and some other person basically might be i was helped by some warehouse keeper might be i was helped by some transporter etc they are also issued notice if notice is issued to me under section number 73 or 74 to co notice the other helpers who are them for them also notice used to be issued such proceedings against the main person have concluded under 73 or 74 against me the proceeding under 73 or 74 have been concluded now then what used to happen earlier 122 125 129 and 130 ka proceedings also used to get concluded against the co notices now they are going ahead and telling that sir the proceedings against all the person liable to pay tax under 122 125 129 120 and 130 129 130 122 is what sir penalty proceedings 125 general penalty 129 detention when your truck is being stopped on the way 130 confiscation baba all these uh, proceedings which were there if main person main accused ke against proceedings are concluded co notices were there whom 122 125 129 130 ka proceedings were initiated those also used to get concluded now they have gone ahead and told if section number 173 and 74 ka proceedings are concluded against the main person co notices who are the helping people for them 122 and 125 only those proceedings will be concluded but if any person who helped me and him one notice was issued under section number 129 or 130 those proceedings will not be concluded so for an example i am the person who was going ahead and getting my goods transported and the transporter helped me so if notice was issued to me proceedings against me is concluded under 73 and 74 they have taken all the penalties everything is closed now the person who helped me 
to him proceedings under 129 or 130 is initiated then baba 129 and 130 ka proceedings will not be concluded now they are going ahead and telling if 73 and 74 ka proceedings against the main person is concluded if any other person may 122 or 125 ka proceedings are started section number 122 and 125 may any proceedings are going on those will be concluded but section number 129 and 130 has been dealing over here and they have told if main notice pay section number 73 and 74 ka proceedings get concluded 129 and 130 ka proceedings are independent proceedings and they can be done against the co notice who is there those proceedings will not be deemed to be concluded is what they have gone ahead and told are we all clear with this point they are telling over here see Proceedings under 129 and 130 dealing from the proceedings under 73 and 74 making detention, seizure, confiscation of goods a separate proceedings from recovery of tax. Section number 73 and 74 ka proceeding concluded doesn't mean 129 and 130 ka proceedings also concluded. 129 and 130 ka proceedings are separate proceedings now. I hope everyone is clear. Yes sir, point is clear. Remember one thing. See, earlier... 74 where the notice was issued to the main person liable to pay tax and some other person such proceedings against the main person have been concluded against me the proceeding is concluded against the co-notices who, who had helped me also proceedings is to get concluded under 122 125 129 130 but now they are telling 122 and 125 may if any proceedings were there those will be closed but 129 130 ka proceeding will not be closed so for an example i am a person whose goods were being transported in contravention there is a transporter who went and helped me and against the transporter 129 may supposing some proceedings are going on then baba if my proceedings under 73 and 74 are concluded doesn't mean that 129 ka proceeding against the transporter also will be concluded earlier it used to get concluded but now it will not be concluded 129 and 125 30 proceedings are separated from 73 and 74 ka proceedings against the main person i hope this point is clear to all done sir next one section number 75 used to go ahead and talk about general provision relating to determination of tax now this general provision relating to determination of tax which was there used to go ahead and say section number 25 12 used to go ahead and say if there is any self-assessed tax which is there which is not paid if any self-assessed tax is not paid, then they are telling self-assessed tax means you went ahead and showed it in the return, but you did not go ahead and pay the tax. However, actually it never used to happen because you have to pay tax only then you can file your return. Practically, this was not possible that you self-assess the tax in the return and you file the return without paying the tax. This was not possible practically. So they went ahead and told, what do you mean by this self-assessed tax notwithstanding anything contained in 73 or 74 where any amount of self-assessed tax in accordance with a return under section number 39 means earlier what used to happen they are telling that sir for this month supposingly you filed your gstr 3b and you went ahead and self-assessed the tax at 10 lakh rupees you did not go ahead and pay but you went ahead and filed the return then for this 10 lakh, we can go ahead and do a direct recovery. Baba, is it possible that you don't pay the tax and file the return? No, sir. And hence, this was, and hence, this was practically not happening. So, practically what was happening was, I'll tell you, what people used to do in their GSTR 1, they used to say, output tax liability is 10 lakh. And in their GSTR 3B, they used to go ahead and show their liability, output tax, supposingly liability, they used to go ahead and show okay they used to show supposingly outward supply as 10 lakh in an output tax liability 1.8 lakh but sir when filing their gstr 3b they used to show outward supply as 1 lakh and pay gst supposingly 1 lakh pay 18,000 only government is going ahead and telling if now self-assessed tax means what they have clarified so it says where any amount of self-assessed tax in accordance with the return remains unpaid either wholly or partly and any interest payable remains unpaid the amount shall be recovered under provision of section number 79 means any self-assessed tax you went ahead and showed the self-assessed tax over here but you did not make the payment and you filed the return for this tax for this self-assessed tax, direct recovery used to be there. Direct recovery under section number 79. 
but now they have gone ahead and explained what do you mean by self assessed tax they have gone ahead and told which self assessed tax ka direct recovery will be done for the purpose of this section subsection self assessed tax shall include tax payable in respect of details of outward supply furnished under section number 37 tax payable in respect of outward supply under section number 37 but not included in the return under section number 39 it means when you filed your gstr1 you showed your outward supply 10 lakh and 1.8 lakh is the output tax liability now when you filed your gstr1 front party ka gstr2 bhi mein 1.8 got reflected aram se recipient went ahead and took the credit But now, when you are filing your GSTR three B, you did not go ahead and show one point eight lakh, nine lakh ka outward supplied. You showed less, and this related GST also you did not go ahead and pay. They are going ahead and telling this amount. के लिए direct recovery can be done. They are going ahead and telling self assessed tax means that included in the tax payable in the outward supply in GSTR. Uh, outward supply under section number 37 but not included in the return filed under section number 39 means whatever you did not go ahead and include in your gstr 3b we will assume that you had self declared that liability that is your self assessed tax because in the gstr 1 you told your liability is 10 lakh for an example in your gstr 1 GSTR one, I showed one crore as my out uh, outward supply and output tax liability one point uh, one eighty lakh. No, no, sorry, uh, one crore pay supposingly eighteen percent. So eighteen lakh, eighteen lakh is my output tax liability. The front party got in their GSTR two B eighteen lakh ka ITC. Now while filing my GSTR three B, I went ahead and showed my output tax liability out outward supply as nil and my output tax liability as nil. they are going ahead and telling we will consider this outward supply and output tax liability as your self assessed tax and for this 18 lakh we will go ahead and initiate direct recovery now baba direct recovery is done for self assessed tax and they are telling because you did not you showed in gst 1 but you did not show the amount in gst r 3b we will consider this as your self assessed tax and direct recovery will be done now sir supposingly I went ahead and showed only ten lakh, say one lakh. Then, Baba, nine lakh is your self-assessed tax, which was there for nine lakh. Whatever is the tax for that, direct recovery can be done. They have just gone ahead and inserted one explanation. What do you mean by self-assessed tax? Self-assessed tax means what amount you showed in GSTR one, but you did not go ahead and show in your GSTR three B. They are going ahead and telling, but not included in the GSTR three B will be considered. As your self-assessed tax liability, and that amount के लिए direct recovery can be done. But then, analysis of amendment section number seventy-five twelve provides where an amount of self-assessed tax in accordance with where an amount of self-assessed tax in accordance with return furnished under section number thirty-nine remains unpaid either wholly or partly. Any amount of interest payable remains unpaid. There is no need to. Issue show cause notice and it shall be directly recovered. No show cause notice order, ex demand order, etc. is issued. Direct recovery is done. If you have already told in your GSTR one that this is my liability, अरे बाबा why show cause notice? Why demand order? बाबा for that direct recovery is done. So now with effect from first, an explanation has been inserted to clarify that self assessed tax shall include. the tax payable in respect of outward supply furnished under section number 37 but not included in the return furnished under section number 39 you 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 show 10 crore here but here you are showing only 1 crore as your liability 9 crore ka liability which is there is your self assessed liability you show 10 crore ka liability in gstr 1 1 crore liability only in your gstr 3b 9 crore ka liability which is there is your self assessed liability for that they will not give show cause notice demand order direct recovery will be done then they are telling thus the scope of self assessed tax has been widened and hence for the recovery proceedings will be straight away initiated for outward supply shown in gstr1 if it is not reflected in gstr 3b in other words they were the tax payable in in gstr1 has not been paid in gstr 3b here you showed 10 crore tax payable you paid only 1 crore ka tax 9 crore which is there either wholly or any amount of interest unpaid in this case the tax short paid on self assessed and self admitted liability and interest thereon are liable for direct 
recovery direct recovery will be done so they are going ahead and telling you showed over here supposedly 18 lakh liability you did not go ahead and pay in your gst at 3b it means it was your self assessed tax liability which you have not gone ahead and made the payment and direct recovery will be done are we all 100 percent clear till here so supposedly i went ahead and showed him my gstr 1 10 100 crore on this my liability is 10 crore rupees i showed gstr 2b may the person got the credit of the 10 crore now while filing my gstr 3b supposedly i showed only 1 crore ka liability they are telling sir you showed only 10 crore ka sale and 1 crore ka liability 9 crore is your self assessed tax liability on for this direct recovery will be done direct recovery under section number 79 they are telling show cause notice demand order all these things will not be done i hope everyone is clear with this point can we all go ahead now what happened people went ahead and told sir it can also happen no what happened when i went ahead and showed supposingly sir my uh, output tax liability i went ahead and showed over here liability as 1 crore but by mistake when i was filing gstr 3b output tax liability i missed writing one zero and it became 10 lakh sir typographical error also can happen no so government went ahead and issued one instruction however the difference in mis difference or mismatch in the gstr1 and 3b may arise due to genuine reasons also in that case i am a genuine person sir by mistake mistake happened i will correct in my next gstr1 it's a mistake so they are telling for instance a typographical error or wrong report reported details gstr1 or gstr3b which may be rectified in the subsequent gstr1 gstr3b or where supply could not be declared in gstr1 of an earlier tax period the tax on the same was paid correctly uh, by correcting correctly reporting in gstr 3b might be gstr 1 may i did not go ahead and show some tax but gstr 3b may i went ahead and showed that amount uh, details may now be reported in the gstr 1 of the current tax period they are going ahead and telling due to some other reason also might be a person ka thought is not fraud but sir in gstr 1 the amount which is shown is more but gstr 3b may the amount which is shown is less might be a typographical error they are telling therefore one instruction was issued to all the officers provided that in case of mismatch in gstr1 and 3b the the cbic has issued one instruction the proper officer must first send a communication to the registered person to pay the self assessed tax short paid or not paid or to explain the reason for the same within a reasonable time period in the time prescribed in the communication done sir point is clear they are going ahead and telling the officer must first send a communication then start the recovery sir recovery proceedings under section number 79 can be issue initiated by the proper officer direct recovery ke pehle, before direct recovery means they will not give show cause notice and demand order but they will go ahead and give one communication they'll send you one communication saying sir gstr 3 1 and gstr 3 b there is a mismatch and we are going to start recovery direct recovery so recovery proceedings will be initiated by the proper officer only when the said person either fails to reply to the proper officer when you fail to reply or fails to make the payment of such amount short paid not paid within the prescribed time or fail to explain the reason so they will not start direct recovery now if your gstr1 and gstr3b mismatch is there first they will give you a communication saying sir there is a mismatch now if you fail to reply or fail to make the payment of such short paid not paid within the prescribed time he will give you time or you fail to explain the reason then they are going and telling then we will start direct recovery we will not give you any show cause notice demand order but section number 79 may the modes of recovery which are there we will apply and we will start the direct recovery done sir what is the point what did we learn Section number 79, ka direct recovery can be done if a person has self-assessed the liability but not paid it. Now, simple one clarification has been inserted. What do you mean by self-assessed tax? Sir, I have shown an amount of liability in my GSTR1 but did not go ahead and show the same amount of liability in my GSTR3B. The difference ke liye direct recovery can be done. And Baba, whenever direct recovery is done, show cause notice and demand order is not given. Always remember. However, officers are instructed that first they will communicate that there is a difference give you some reasonable time to go ahead and reply or to go ahead and pay the differential amount if you pay then no recovery otherwise without show cause notice and demand order recovery will be done are we all clear with this point can i go ahead 
क्लियर बाबा कैन वी गो अहेड देज ए क्रक्स फॉर यू गाइज टू रीड Yes, sir. Point is clear. In provisional attachment, I hope you guys remember when we are learning the demand and recovery ka chapter. The first amendment is this explanation which I have already told you. The second amendment is section number seventy-five. In section number seventy-five, this amendment wherein the explanation is inserted, self-assessed tax, is what what you have shown in GSTR one. In GSTR one, whatever you have shown but not shown in GSTR three B, whatever is the difference that ke liye direct recovery can be done. Direct question is not there, but direct question can be asked. Please be very careful. I have gone ahead and shown you the example. In supposing the GSTR one, you showed a liability of ten crore. In GSTR three B, you have gone ahead and showed only one crore, and you have paid only one crore ka liability. The difference nine crore ke liye direct recovery can be done. Remember this. Next, done sir. Seventy seventy three. I told you. Demand order in bona fide case, seventy four demand order in fraud fraud case, seventy five general provision. I went ahead and told general provision me amendment seventy six seventy seven there is no amendment seventy eight seventy nine eighty eighty one eighty two there is no amendment. Now the next amendment is in your section number eighty three provisional attachment. Everyone listen to me very carefully, sir. What is the amendment in provisional attachment? Now they are going ahead and telling earlier provisional attachment could be done. Only when the proceedings were pending under section number sixty-two, best judgment, section number sixty-three, sir, best judgment again of uh, non-filers of return, section number sixty-four, summary assessment, section number sixty-seven, inspection, sir, seizure, seventy-three and seventy-four. Now what they have gone ahead and done is they have gone ahead and deleted this section and they have told. that sir whenever any proceedings are going on under say chapter number 12 chapter number 14 chapter number 15 which is basically assessment inspection search seizure is going on or demand and recovery is going on means earlier it was when during the pendency of any proceeding but now where after the initiation even if even if means even before going ahead even before going ahead and starting the proceeding if they initiate also supposingly officer has initiated scrutiny against you baba earlier section number 60 section number 61 59 60 61 all these were not covered now they have covered chapter number 12 means assessment ka 59 60 61 now 61 mein supposingly scrutiny of return officer has started he did not give you a show cause notice yet proceedings have not started but baba before starting of proceedings also now if the officer wants he can go ahead and do your provisional attachment of the property everyone remember one thing earlier it was only under this section if proceedings have started only then provisional attachment of movable immovable property etc could be done but now they are telling sir if we have initiated any proceeding means sir even before any issuance of show cause notice if the officer wants in case of section number 59 60 61 62 63 64 sir inspection search and seizure everything always remember one thing all these cases may they are telling chapter number 12 chapter number 15 14 15 they are going ahead and telling whenever after the initiation of any proceedings they are telling the commissioner is of the opinion that for the purpose of protecting the interest of the government it is necessary then he can do provisional attachment but what do you guys remember in section number 122 1 a was in introduced which went ahead and told about those masterminds who are there behind any uh, fraud do you remember sir one person is issuing bogus invoices baba name is mine my i am just the driver of one big person and that big person is actually issuing bogus invoices but the registration has been taken in my name sir the person behind me was also penalized under section number 122 1a now provisional attachment can be done of my property also who is a registered person and also the person who is the main person the fraud the main person behind the fraud supposingly Now, registration taken in my name and bogus invoices are being issued now behind me there is a person who is there the main person the main fraud who is going ahead and issuing this bogus invoice he is not the registered person but provisional attachment now can be done of this person also the person who is basically behind a fraud his property also can be attached 
आर वी क्लियर एवरी वन यस सर बोगस इनवाइस इज इशूड इन माई नेम बट अ मेन मास्टर माइंड इज वन पर्सन बिहाइंड मे दैन मेन मास्टर माइंड का प्रोविजनल अटैचमेंट ऑफ प्रॉपर्टी कैन ऑल्सो बी डन दिस इज ऑल्सो एन अमेंडमेंट सो वट आर द टू अमेंडमेंट नंबर वन आफ्टर द इनिशिएशन ऑफ द प्रोसीडिंग्स Sir, during the pendency earlier, what was the word? During the pendency means show cause notice is issued, proceedings are going on. Then, but here even after initiation, you just initiated scrutiny of return, sir. You can go ahead and now, everyone over here, you can now go ahead and officer can go ahead and do the provisional attachment. Provisional attachment ka scope has been widened. It can provisionally also the attachment can be done. of the property which belongs to the mastermind yes sir mastermind behind a fraud mastermind ka properties also can be provisionally attached and sir provisional attachment ke liye there is this uh, provisional attachment of property ke liye one rule number 159 is there rule number 159 mein also amendment is done theek hai sir analysis earlier the commissioner was empowered to invoke provisional only during the pendency of proceeding under 62 63 64 67 73 73 and section number 74 now as a result of the aforesaid amendment property including bank account can be attached provisionally at the time after the initiation of any proceeding means sir even before issuance of show cause notice when you initiate one proceeding scrutiny return started baba you can go ahead and do provisional attachment under chapter number 12 14 and 15 basically assessment audit inspection search seizure demand and recovery even if initiated against you during initiation only they can attach they will not wait for issuance of show cause notice before show cause notice only they can go ahead and attach your property further now property can be attached of a person under section number 122 basically the mastermind behind a fraud his property also can be attached thus the power of the commissioner for invoking provisional attachment has been widened now sir what are the amendments over here listen to me very carefully what i have gone ahead and done is i have drawn one chart please come to this chart make one small uh, change this one you can cut this now sir you can write over here not pendency of proceedings you can write uh you can write the word ha huh. even after initiation sir after the initiation after the initiation of proceedings means even before issuance of show cause notice if they want commissioner is of the opinion that attachment is necessary then first of all baba this uh, procedures which were there the rules which was there has been amended and the amended rule which is there i have gone ahead and drawn a small chart which we are going ahead and seeing over here everyone please come here see now there is uh, the officer want he has started scrutiny supposingly and he is of the opinion that sir provisional attachment is necessary commissioner is of the opinion that provisional attachment is necessary then sir first he will go ahead and record the reason that sir what is the basis of my opinion he will have to write down that sir why do i provisionally want to attach the property sir i feel that this guy is going to run away even after sir by the time i finish scrutiny and issue him a show cause notice he will run away so sir that time they can go ahead and provisionally attach your property including bank account first he will pass an order drc 22 and the details of the property he will mention in that drc 22 then sir copy of the order will be sent to the concerned revenue authority transport authority your bank etc and also this order which is issued of one copy will be sent to your bank saying please attach the bank account and also it will be sent to you whose property is attached done sir now earlier whenever one provisional attachment used to be done you had to file an objection within 7 days now that 7 days ka time limit has been done away with it is not necessary that within 7 days of issue of order only you have to run no baba requirement of running is done away with they are not going ahead and telling any more that you have to go within 7 days only apply for uh, release of your property sir please don't provisionally attach for that the application had to be given in 7 days earlier now that 7 days ka time has been deleted they are telling once your provisional attachment is done you can file an objection in gst drc 22a if property is not liable to be attached once you go ahead and file then if objection 
filed commissioner should provide opportunity of being heard once he provides you opportunity of being heard if commissioner is satisfied that property should be released he will issue drc 23 if he is not satisfied then attachment will continue but remember attachment he can do maximum for what one year only because after one year the attachment which he has done will be ineffective so in this between this period he should basically complete all the scrutiny whatever proceedings he has to complete and do the adjudication otherwise after one year the provisional attachment will no more be valid done sir point is clear listen to me very carefully i'll tell you once again sir this is your of commissioner ha is of the opinion that attachment is necessary and sir proceedings against you has been initiated and assessment audit inspection search seizure demand and recovery of proceeding initiated also even before issuance of soko's notice then if he has reason to believe then first he will record the reason to believe then he will pass an order gst drc 22 order ka copy will be sent to the authority whom he wants to go ahead and say okay sir stamp duty authority don't allow him to go ahead and transfer the property so that order ka copy will be sent to the stamp duty authority order ka copy will be sent to your bank bank account uh, if bank account attachment has to be done it will be sent to your bank also and also one copy will be sent to you then after once it is received by you earlier there was seven days time limit only to go ahead and apply for uh, objection basically now objection ke liye, time limit of seven days has been removed there is no time limit to go ahead and apply for objection you can file an objection in drc 22a if property is not liable to be attached officer will go ahead and provide you opportunity of being heard after providing opportunity of being heard if he is satisfied then he will release the property otherwise the attachment will continue but the maximum time attachment can be done is one year within one year the officer has to make sure he has to go ahead and complete the proceedings against you otherwise after one year the attached property has to be released done sir point is clear here one small point is there if perishable or hazardous goods supposingly he came to your place and they have gone ahead and attached your goods which are there and they are mangoes or a perishable goods so they are telling be it will be released after the person pays lower of the market price of such goods might be the market price of the mangoes is one lakh or amount that is or may become due from such person whatever amount he is telling you that sir this is the amount which will become due from you this is the amount according to me you have not paid 50,000 1 lakh or 50,000 whichever is lower you will be liable to pay then the property shall be released immediately in DRC 23 on proof of payment in case the person fails to pay the property may be disposed of and the amount can be recovered against tax interest penalty late fee or any other amount perishable and hazardous goods ka case may they will not go ahead and wait for so much time they will go ahead and tell you hey you are going to pay the market price or the amount which you are liable to pay whichever is lower you pay if you don't pay we will go ahead and sell off this property and recover whatever is the tax interest penalty late fee or any other amount which we feel you have to go ahead and pay that amount will go ahead and recover by selling that perishable or hazardous goods is the point clear to all can we go ahead everyone demand and recovery chapter the first amendment which is done is explanation may explanation may second explanation section number 129 and 130 has been deleted it means if main person ke against 73 and 74 ka proceeding concluded then co notices who are there additional people who were there to whom also notice was issued again them 122 and 125 ka proceedings will continue will be concluded if again this person concluded again this people also concluded but 129 and 130 ka proceedings will continue they will not be deemed to be concluded sir self-assessed tax ka meaning has been inserted in section number 75 and section number 83 read with rule number 159 the amendment which is there relating to provisional attachment earlier provisional attachment had to be done prior after issuance of shoko's notice during the pendency now before shoko's notice also the uh, provisional attachment can be done and whenever the provisional attachment will be done the process which is there they have gone ahead and refined it so that process also i have gone ahead and explained i hope everyone is clear with this can we go to the next amendment everyone Yes, everyone, are we all 100% clear? Can we move to the next amendment? Yes, sir, clear till here. Everyone, listen to me very carefully. Sex appeals, uh, not section numbers, appeals and revision ka section which is there, I will discuss. But first I want to discuss offenses and penalties and then I will come back to 
अपील्स एंड डिविजन का सेक्शन प्लीज कम टू ऑफेंसेज एंड पेनल्टीज एवरी वन प्लीज कम टू ऑफेंसेज एंड पेनल्टीज फर्स्ट यू विल अंडरस्टैंड दिस देन यू विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड अपील्स एंड डिविजन प्लीज कम टू ऑफेंसेज एंड पेनल्टीज बाबा सेक्शन नंबर वन ट्वेंटी नाइन विच वॉज देयर यूज टू गो एड एंड टेल यू अबाउट डिटेंशन सीजर एंड रिलीज ऑफ गुड्स एंड कन्वीनियंस इन ट्रांजिट एवरी वन लिसन very important amendment for your exam you were taking the goods in a truck and going your goods were being taken these goods which were there belongs to supposing this person ram and there is a transporter who is there sir he is sitting on the bus yes baba they are going taking the goods and going on the way the officer stopped officer asked for tax invoice and eway bill and he found that eway bill is not there or might be he found any contravention which is there now what will happen if on the way any contravention he finds section number 129 gets attracted which says detention will be done then they will seize your goods and now if you want to get your goods released you will have to pay a penalty so section number 129 goes ahead and talks about the penalty which is there so it says not withstanding anything contained where any person transports the goods or stores any goods when they are in transit in contravention of the provision of section number provisions of the act or rules all the goods and conveyance sir this goods also and this conveyance also supposingly i am a truck driver i am taking the goods and going and baba the conveyance is mine i am taking the goods and going and by chance there is no eway bill or any mismatch between tax invoice eway bill etc is there or might be documents etc is not there first the officer will go ahead and detain detention will be done hey you put your car, truck in the side and then seizure of the goods will be done detention and seizure will be done theek hai sir and now if i want to go ahead sir please leave my goods please leave my truck then i'll have, i'll be liable to pay penalty which is told by section number 129 it says over here then all the goods will and the conveyance used for transporting and documents relating to goods sh shall be liable to be detained and seized and after detention shall be released baba very very important for your exam earlier it was tax penalty tax was also payable penalty was also payable so tax and penalty tax you supposingly earlier what used to happen 100 rupees ka goods are there on that tax is 18 rupees so you have to pay 18 rupees tax also and you have to pay a uh, penalty which was there equivalent to the tax amount which was 18 rupees so you had to pay tax also and penalty also but then lot of cases went to the court and people went in and challenged saying sir tax can't be recovered because tax when i am going on the way why will you recover tax from me only you take penalty tax to anyways i am going to file my return and i'll pay the tax so in my return also i'll pay the tax this officer is also taking the tax and then i am paying penalty it means two two time tax is taken i hope you guys are able to understand i send the goods on the way the goods are going on the way what used to happen if i am caught with goods of worth rupees 100 rupees i had to pay tax also earlier plus penalty also so sir if i have already paying the tax in my return but still the officer used to make me make me pay the tax and also when i used to file the return i used to pay the tax again two two time tax paid double taxation so people went ahead and challenged the uh, point over here then government went ahead and told do you think we are a fool we'll do one thing this tax ka name they gave penalty and they told whenever your truck is caught 200% penalty story over 100% penalty now made 200 chapter only closed by the government government went ahead and told on payment of penalty equals to 200% of the tax payable they are telling now when you are caught you are no more required to pay tax you just have to pay penalty penalty will be 200% instead of tax and penalty tax was 100 penalty was 100% of the tax amount so it was 200 only now they deleted the name tax and they named it as penalty only so supposingly i am going on the way everyone very very important if i am going on the way with goods in the truck supposingly these goods which are there which it is 1 crore ka goods cgst is 9% sir cgst is 9% which is 90000 rupees sir 1 crore pe uh 9% is 9 lakh rupees sir theek hai 9 lakh rupees which is there sir sgst is how much 1 crore ka goods pe 9% sgst is 9 lakh rupees they are going ahead and telling on payment of penalty equal to 200% of the tax payable on such goods sir 200% means 9 lakh 
into 200 percent will be how much sir 18 lakh rupees under cgst is the penalty amount and into 200 percent which is 18 lakh rupees is the penalty under sgst if in the exam they ask you under cgst please write only this much and come please be very careful one crore ka goods you are taking and going on the way one crore pe gst is nine percent so 90 uh, nine lakh rupees which is there sorry nine lakh which is there of that 200 percent means 18 lakh a penalty will be payable by you sir sgst will be same amount sir if they ask me under igst remember one thing igst means your penalty will be 36 lakh story over are we all clear with this point can you please tell me is this point clear to all that sir on payment of penalty equal to 200 percent of the tax payable on the goods and sir if these goods are exempted goods supposing the goods which i'm taking if these are taxable goods exempted goods then what will happen if they are exempted goods then they are going ahead and telling an amount equal to 2% of the value of the goods. Sir, what is the value of the goods? 1 crore is the value of the goods. Of this, 2% has to be paid, which is, sir, 2 lakh rupees or 25,000, whichever is less, 25,000, whichever is less. So, sir, 25,000 is payable under CGST. 1 crore into 2%. Sir, this is under CGST. This is under SGST. 2 lakh or 25,000 whichever is lower how much it will be sir 2 2 lakh or 25000 25000 so if i go ahead and ask you how much is the amount payable baba owner comes forward only i am teaching you the next in owner does not come forward now i am teaching you when the owner comes forward second is owner does not come forward okay so if the owner comes forward 1 crore into 9 percent 9 lakh rupees into 200 percent is 18 lakh under cgst and sir 1 crore into 9 percent is 9 lakh into 200 percent is 18 lakh under sgst if they ask you under igst it is the total amount take okay, sir point is clear now if these goods are exempted goods then 2 percent or 25,000, whichever is lower so under igst if i go ahead and tell you it is how much sir it is either under igst it is 50,000. so igst is basically 1 crore into 2 plus 2 is 4 percent 4 percent means 4 lakh or 50,000 whichever is lower lower is 50,000 rupees I hope everyone is clear till here yes sir point is clear remember always it is when the owner comes forward so when the owner comes forward you have to always remember it is uh, 200 percent ठीक है sir under CGST, under SGST, also 200%, IGST, this plus this will be double. Done, sir. But always remember, when it is exempted goods, 2% or 25,000, 2% or 25,000, whichever is lower. And hence, they have gone ahead and told 4 lakh or 50,000, which is lower is 50,000 rupees. Are we all clear with this point? Can we go ahead, everyone? Please be very careful, everyone. Whenever they are going ahead and talking about this, uh, 2% and 2%, 1 crore rupees is the value of the goods under CGST, 1 crore is under GST, 2%, 2% will come to 2 lakh, 2 lakh or 25,000, whichever is lower, whichever is lower is 25, 25 and 50,000 rupees. Yes, sir, we are clear. Now, if the owner does not come forward, does not come forward, then what will happen? They are telling on payment of penalty, equal to 50 percent of the value of the goods sir can you tell me uh cgst ka penalty sir one crore rupees ka goods into 50 percent 50 percent of the value of the goods is 50 lakh rupees or 200 percent of the tax payable on the goods whichever is higher sir can you tell me what is 200 percent one crore into nine percent sir 50 percent of the value of the goods is 50 lakh rupees one crore into nine percent is 9 lakh rupees they are going ahead and telling over here 50 percent of the value of the goods or 200 percent of the tax payable whichever is higher 200 percent is how much sir 18 lakh whichever is higher which is higher over here sir 50 lakh rupees is higher see over here everyone and if i ask about an sgst amount sir 1 crore into 15 percent that is value of the goods ka 15 percent that is 50 lakh rupees 1 crore into 9 percent is the gst uh, which will be 9 lakh into 200 percent is 18 lakh rupees which is higher 50 lakh rupees it means they will make you pay a penalty 
50 plus 50 lakh, 1 crore. If they ask you under IGST Act, please be very careful. 1 crore rupees will be your penalty over here. I hope everyone is clear with this point. Let's go ahead. Please remember, sir, they have gone ahead and told on payment of penalty equal to 50% of the value of the goods, 50% of the value of the goods, 1 crore is value of that 50% or 200% of the tax payable on the goods, whichever is higher. Okay, 50%. Done, Baba. Okay. Or uh, whatever is the tax payable of that 200%. Okay, sir. Point is clear. Remember one thing. One minute. Sir, IGST Act, it will be how much? IGST Act, it will be, if I go ahead and tell you, 1 crore ka, 1 crore into 100%, which is uh, 1 crore over here, and 1 crore ka, 9 ka, 18%, it will be 18 lakh, 18 lakh into 200%, which is 36 lakh. So, 1 crore or 36 lakh, 1 crore rupees under the IGST Act. Please be very careful in the exam. If they are asking you CGST, write this. If they are asking you IGST, you have to write this. I have gone ahead and done the numerical problem also. Are we clear with this point? Yes, sir. Point is clear. Now, in case of exempted goods on payment of amount equal to 5% of the value of the goods or 25,000, sir, can you tell me if owner does not come forward, does not come forward, then sir, exempted goods, what will happen? If it is exempted goods, 1 crore ka goods, sir, on 1 crore goods, 5% of the value into 5%, this is under CGST Act. Sir, 1% into 5, 1 crore into 5% is 5 lakh or sir, 25,000, whichever is less, 25,000, whichever is less, less is 25,000, theek hai? Under SGST also, when the owner does not come forward, SGST also 1 crore into 5%, which is 5 lakh or 25,000, whichever is lower, so it will be 25,000. If I ask you under IGST Act, remember always under IGST Act, it will be, sir, 1 crore into 5 and 5, 10%, which will be how much? 10 lakh or Sir, 50,000, whichever is lower is 50,000 rupees. I hope everyone is clear till here. Can we go ahead, everyone? Please be very careful in the exam. Is the question asking you under CGST Act? Then do this. If the question is asking you under IGST Act, then please do this. Yes, sir. We are all clear. Let's go ahead. Next. There was one provision which was there in uh, second one. Okay, section number 129, one which is the most important part. I have gone ahead and done one example also and explained it to you. I hope everyone is 100% clear till here. Now, let's go ahead. The second provision which was there was relating to provisional uh, release ke liye bond, etc. Oh, this provision has been deleted. They are going ahead and telling provisional release and all the thing is there. We will finalize and we will tell you the amount. Are we clear till here? And I have told you what is the amount which is payable on finalization. Yes, sir. Point is clear. Provisional release and all total bakwas point which was there. They have gone ahead and deleted this point from here. Okay. It was unnecessarily lying over here. They are telling once we go ahead and catch you, we will not provisionally release and all. We will issue the final order. They are telling we will issue the final order and we will tell you how much is the amount which is payable. You either go ahead and pay the amount or you can go ahead and give a security also. But provisional release ka point which was there, the second point which was there has been deleted. Theke sir, this point is clear. Provisional release is no more done. Provisional release ke liye bond etc was told earlier. Now, nowadays there is no provisional release. If they detain you, they will go ahead and give you a notice and they will go ahead and issue an order. Now listen to me very carefully. Whenever, supposingly, sir, everyone, very important, see, you were taking the goods in a truck and going on the way. Theke sir. Here, officer went ahead and stopped you. Sir, where is the officer? Here, officer went ahead and stopped you. He told, hey, stop. The day they detain, you know, within seven days, they will go ahead and give you a notice. Always remember, show cause notice. Show me the cause within seven days will be given. Always remember, show cause notice saying, sir, this much amount of penalty. Sir, how much penalty? I have already told you. This penalty charging ke liye, they have to give a show cause notice always remember for recovery there has to be a demand order and for demand order show cause notice has to be there so show cause notice then demand order and then recovery starts okay now they have gone ahead and told 
whenever this order will be given penalty order so sir here detentions happen whenever you are being detained might be invoice or e-way bill some problem was there detention will be done within seven days they will go ahead and issue you a show cause notice remember see it is telling over here the proper officer detaining goods shall issue a notice within seven days of such detention okay earlier the time limit was not given within how much time the show cause notice will be given okay now they are telling the proper officer detaining or seizing the goods shall issue a notice within seven days specifying the penalty payable so in the notice they will go ahead and tell you the penalty sir penalty owner comes forward owner does not come forward remember always both the case may penalties i have gone ahead and explained you okay sir and thereafter pass an order within seven days from the date of service of the notice for the payment of penalty sir from shoko's notice within how many how many days demand order will be given basically penalty order will be given penalty order will be given within how much time sir seven days remember always everyone that sir whenever you are being detained detention was done that sir you are not going ahead and carrying your e-way bill might be invoice was not there invoice and e-way bill some mismatch was there they will go ahead and give one detention once the detention is done within seven days they will give you a show cause notice earlier this time limit was not being told now they have defined the time limit once the show cause notice is given within the next seven days penalty order shall be given done sir point is clear till here that is that is what is being told under clause A or clause B means this clause A and B may whatever the penalty amount is told for that they will go ahead and give the show cause notice everyone now sir rule number 142 3 also has been amended that sir generally to sir demand order the time limits is there yes baba the demand order the time limit is there but in case of detention always remember because your truck is being standing on the road when they detain you the show cause notice ka time limit over here is only seven days and demand order basically the penalty order ke liye time limit is only seven days over here that is what is the amendment made in rule number 142 3 the same thing i have told you that within seven days of the notice they will go ahead and issue a uh, before the issuance of the penalty order before that within seven days uh, of the detention they will give you a notice that that is all there that whenever a person makes the payment of the amount within seven days okay before of the show cause notice before issuance of the order uh, and informs in drc 23 okay sir he has gone ahead and given me a show cause notice telling that i you owner has come forward owner does not come forward whatever the penalty amount has been told in the show cause notice you know sir here only i went ahead and you made the payment using form drc03 if you make the payment and you inform the officer using gst drc03 then baba officer will go ahead and conclude the proceeding and issue drc05 sir drc05 he will go ahead and issue that's it they have gone ahead and told section um, rule number 142 may one small amendment is made that wherever a person makes the payment of the amount referred in section number 129 basically once you are being detained you are given a show cause notice penalty amount is being told to you then sir within seven days of the show cause notice before issuance of the order means before this order is being issued sir they can issue the order within seven days from show cause notice any time they can issue but sir before they issued if you go ahead and make the payment inform in dst drc03 po shall issue an order in gst drc05 that i am going ahead and concluding all the proceedings people quickly tell me are we clear till here very very important this is that sir your detention was done within seven days show cause notice was given within seven days penalty order will be given but before that you can make the payment inform the officer and officer will issue PO will issue DRC 05 saying proceedings are concluded are we all clear yes sir we are all clear till here now listen to me very carefully <coughs> opportunity of being hurt baba now earlier uh, there was tax also interest also penalty also but now they are only going ahead and charging penalty 
can you see over here only penalty is there there is no tax interest etc which is being taken and hence the reference of tax interest etc which was not required has been deleted they have kept only the word penalty because after detention they don't ask you any tax nowadays they ask you only penalty done sir point is clear then then they are going in and telling sir this point is very important everyone listen to me very carefully where the person transporting any goods or the owner of such goods fails to pay the amount of penalty under subsection 1 within 15 days from the date of receipt of the copy of the order sir here penalty order was passed and supposingly on the same day penalty order is being issued issued penalty order is received by you also for an example you received it on the same day always remember with the from the date of receipt you are given 15 days to pay 15 days ka time limit is given within 15 days so okay i need some more space so we'll do one thing after this we'll continue so it says where the person transporting the goods or the owner fails to pay the amount of penalty within 15 days from the date of receipt of copy of the order the goods and conveyance so detained shall be sold and disposed of okay sir within 15 days what you can do is i'll tell you either you can pay pay then chapter closed okay sir or or sir you can go for an appeal also pay or you go for an appeal Sir, can I go for an appeal? Yes, Baba, against this penalty order, the time limit to go for an appeal is only 15 days. Remember one thing, time limit to go for an appeal is only 15 days. And now I'll connect appeals and revision ka chapter a little. Listen to me very carefully. Before the appellate authority, when you are filing the appeal, can you tell me everyone, whenever you go for an appeal, sir, against a adjudication order, Whenever you go for an appeal, the time limit to go for an appeal is generally three months, sir. But sir, whenever it's a penalty order, penalty order under section number 129, remember, you are given only 15 days. Within 15 days, either you pay, okay, or you go for a appeal. Sir, appeal goes to the appellate authority. Remember one thing. Sir, whenever you used to go to the appellate authority, you have to give a pre-deposit. Yes, sir, we remember we have to give a pre-deposit. Can anyone tell me how much was the pre-deposit amount when you used to go for an appeal to the appellate authority? Can anyone tell me how much was the pre-deposit amount whenever you used to go for an appeal to the appellate authorities? Yes, everyone, can you tell me what was the penalty amount? What was the pre-deposit amount whenever appeal goes to the appellate authority? Sir, pre-deposit amount was 10% of the tax in dispute. Now everyone, if they have gone in and charged you a penalty order, penalty, supposedly 1 crore rupees ka penalty order is there, your pre-deposit to the appellate authority was 10% only, sir. Now, they, they have gone in and told, see, 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 they have gone in and told, Provided that no appeal shall be filed against an order under section number 129.3, that is the penalty order, unless a sum equal to 25% of the penalty has been paid by the appellant, it means now for an order which is under section number 129, Baba, normally penalty is 10% only, but if the order is under section number 129, supposing the order is for 1 crore ka penalty, then pre-deposit is minimum 25% if you want to go for an appeal to the appellate authority. See, provided that no appeal, normally it is still 10% only, up to a maximum of 25 crore. But sir, for a penalty order which is there under section number 129, the minimum pre-deposit is 25% of the penalty has to be paid by the appellant. Always remember, normally, adjudication order ka 10% of the tax in dispute is your pre-deposit amount. Yes, sir, I know. Remember, adjudicating authority ad, uh, and, up, uh, sorry, appellate authority and appellate tribunal, pre-deposit is 10% of the tax in dispute. Sir, here 20% of the tax in dispute, but here only when section number 129.3 may penalty order is given penalty order ke liye when you go for an appeal yes sir maximum up to 25 crore maximum up to 25 crore but for this 
there is no nothing which has been told like maximum 25 crore for this they have gone ahead and told whatever is told in the penalty order you have to pay 25 percent of the amount which is told as pre-deposit has to be paid sir tell me one thing here maximum 25 crore is applicable see baba if you go ahead and read it over here this maximum 25 crore is applicable only when it is 10 percent all amount sir provided that no appeal shall be filed against an order under section number 129 that is the detention ke time pay whatever order is issued for that if you go for an appeal it is 25% of the penalty has to be paid. There is no maximum limit which is told. Sir, whatever is the penalty amount of that 25% has to be paid. Is my point clear to all? Sir, if I am going further for an appeal, then Baba Appellate Tribunal ke liye, it is still 20% only. There is no amendment over here. The only amendment is here. Is my point clear to all? Can I go ahead everyone? Is my point clear to all the amendment they have got is only over here wherein whatever penalty order is passed under section number 129 subsection 3 will you have to pay 25 percent as your pre-deposit i hope everyone is clear to all cgst amount ka 25 percent sgst amount ka 25 percent igst it is going to be the total done Yes, sir. Point is clear. So, appeals and division may amendment. I have told you in appeals and division. What is the amendment, everyone? Sir, appeal may whenever you go for an appeal, you have to pay 10% of the tax in dispute up to a maximum of 25 crore. However, the amendment only amendment in your appeals and division chapter is proviso appeal against an order under section number 129. The penalty pre deposit will be 25% of the penalty amount which is there. No, 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 no. Whenever you go for an appeal now to the appellate tribunal, then sir, 25% plus additional deposit is there 20%. Remember always additional deposit. It is 25% plus 20% additional when you go to the appellate tribunal. I hope everyone is clear. Can we go ahead everyone? Yes, sir. Point is clear. Appeals and revision done. In appeals and revision, the only amendment is generally it is 10% up to a maximum of 25 crore. But if it is Appeal against section number 129.3 ka order, penalty order under section number 129.3, then the minimum pre-deposit is 25% of the penalty amount which is being charged. Are we all clear till here? Can we go ahead? So, I have linked your offenses and penalties also. Offenses and penalties may, this point is very, very important everyone. Please don't forget. And sir, this I have already told you. Yes, it says, where the person transporting any goods or the owner fails to pay the amount of the penalty within 15 days from the receipt of the copy, the goods or conveyance so details shall be liable to be sold. Okay. Sir, tell me one thing everyone. Supposingly, uh, I will go ahead and sir, what are you doing with this? This I am just trying to see if we can go ahead. One minute. I am just putting it over here. You guys can see at home later. Huh. Here, we are with this only. This I want to continue now. Sir, I was taking the goods on the way. Detention was done. Within 7 days, Shoko's notice. Remember this, very important. I am teaching you one flow. Within 7 days, penalty order. Before this, if you want, you can make the payment and proceedings will be concluded. Then they are going ahead and telling within 15 days, either you pay or you go for an appeal. When you go for an appeal, sir, appeal may I told you 25% is the pre-deposit. Okay, sir. Now, sir, I did not pay also. Sir, you did not pay also or you did not go for an appeal also. Then, once 15 days gets over, what they will go ahead and do is, they will go ahead. See over here, the goods and the conveyance shall be liable to be sold. They will go ahead. Goods and conveyance. Once 15 days gets over, goods and conveyance to be sold. Now, what will happen once 15 days gets over? So, supposingly here, here what they will do? Goods and conveyance. Once 15 days gets over, they will be selling it off. So, it says in such manner and within such time as may be prescribed to recover the penalty. Okay? Provided that the conveyance shall be released if the transporter pays a penalty of, sir, tell me one thing. Now, this truck is going. Everyone listen to me very carefully. In this truck, the goods which are going, the uh, Officer stop. Okay. Once the officer stop, the goods, supposingly two people ka goods are there. Ram ka goods and Sham ka goods. 
the officer went in and found contravention is done by ram now officer went in and stopped the truck wherein ram ka goods are also there and sham ka goods are also there now what will happen sham will start calling ram has done a contravention because of that why my goods are not coming so what will the, the truck truck uh, this transporter this person is the transporter he went ahead and told the officer sir ram ka goods you keep it at least let me take my truck and sham ka goods and go officer will tell hey transporter you were also helping ram your truck your truck which is there for truck also you have to pay a penalty are see ram to has to pay a penalty ram also has to pay and transporter also has to pay ram will pay sir if ram comes forward that 200% which i have told you okay under section number 129 uh what whatever penalty i have gone ahead and told you that 200% of the tax amount which is there now transporter also has to pay this penalty which we have gone ahead and discussed or 1 lakh rupees whichever is lower means transporter will sir please let me take other people ka goods and go no ram ka goods you keep it then baba what will the officer tell you you know officer will tell this goods pay this much contravention ka penalty is there you pay this or 1 lakh and take the goods and go it means minimum 1 lakh rupees ka maximum 1 lakh rupees ka whichever is lower or higher ha or 1 lakh whichever is less means maximum you have to go ahead and pay 1 lakh rupees so what will the truck driver do truck driver will give 1 lakh rupees he will take the other goods of the other people and go and he leave your goods with the officer done sir point is clear it means sir government is going to recover 129 ka penalty from ram also and from transporter also yes baba transporter has to pay the 129 wala penalty which is there or 1 lakh whichever is lower that much amount of penalty will be taken from the transporter and then he can take the truck and go yes sir point is clear provided further that where the detention is of perishable or hazardous goods likely to depreciate with passage of time the period of 15 days may be reduced by the proper officer tell me one thing now officer went ahead and stopped your truck he did the detention now mangoes are there in the truck but what do you think 7 days he will go ahead and take to pass the shokos notice demand order no quickly immediately he'll give shokos notice immediately he'll give you a penalty order and now he will not wait 15 days to sell off your goods he will sell the goods immediately because see this 15 days etc ka time limit will not be applicable it means sir 7 days etc nothing he will detain you immediately he will give shokos notice immediately he will give you a penalty order and now he is not going to wait for 15 days and all after the pen penalty order he will wait for 15 days and all no nothing no that is the maximum time remember always within 7 days shokos notice is the maximum time within the next 7 days penalty order is the maximum time he can immediately give you a shokos notice immediately give you a demand order and he will tell these are the goods which are hazardous goods these are the goods which are perishable goods we will go ahead and sell it off immediately they can do that also they will not go ahead and wait for 15 days ka time and all if it is hazardous goods that all that's all is being told over here this was the amendment which i had to go ahead and explain you guys people are we all 100% clear till here can i go ahead quickly tell me are we all clear till here can we go ahead everyone quick 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 everyone yes sir we are all clear now listen to me very carefully now officer is going ahead and telling sir your goods and conveyance will be sold see what happened you were detained after detention shokos notice given after shokos notice penalty order is given everyone over here shokos notice after shokos notice penalty order was given then either you have to pay if you pay chapter is closed your goods will be released or you have to go for an appeal if you go for an appeal that is also very good sir if i don't go for an appeal also i did not pay also and 15 days for appeal got over then baba remember one thing after 15 days the goods and conveyance will be sold sir how this goods and conveyance will be sold and the amount will be recovered by the department for that they have released rule number 144a not very exam important from exam point of view but in your statutory update they have gone ahead and touched this a little so i have to go ahead and explain it to you everyone over here recovery of penalty by sale of goods or conveyance detained or seized now sir they gave me a shokos notice they gave me a penalty order i did not pay also i did not go for an appeal also then once 15 days gets over from the penalty order sir then after that they will go ahead and goods and conveyance will be sold how will they sell it where the registered person transporting the goods or the owner fails to pay the amount of penalty 
तो सर कैन आई गो हेड एंड ड्रॉ वन अमाउंट ओवर ड्रॉ वन चार्ट ओवर हियर यस सर सर वट हैपेंड आई वेंट हेड एंड नाउ सर ऑफिसर वेंट हेड एंड गेव मी वन शोकोज नोटिस देन पेनाल्टी ऑर्डर आई डि नॉट पे ऑल्सो आई डिड नॉट गो फॉर एन अपील ऑल्सो फिफ्टीन डेज गोट ओवर देन गुड्स एंड कन्वीनियंस आर लायबल टू बी सोल्ड नाउ सर वन फिफ्टीन डेज दिस वॉज द टाइम लिमिट वेन फिफ्टीन डेज ओवर फिफ्टीन डेज आर ओवर ओवर हियर आई एम कनेक्टिंग दैट चार्ट विथ दिस चार्ट नाउ ठीक है then when the person transporting the goods or the owner fails to pay the amount of penalty under section number 129 within 15 days from the receipt of the copy of the order the proper officer shall proceed to dispose of the goods so detained or seized by preparing an inventory and estimating the market value of the goods or conveyance so it means first here what will he do he'll prepare an inventory okay what are the goods we are going to sell prepare an inventory and also he will estimate the market value of the goods and conveyance market value of goods or conveyance he will go ahead and estimate theek hai sir he will prepare one inventory saying these are the goods and these are the conveyance which we are going to sell because we have not received the penalty amount we will sell theek hai then provided that baba uh, the time limit is not applicable remember always 15 days after 15 days gets over mangoes mangoes became seed so for of this 15 days etc ka time limit is not applicable in case of hazardous goods and perishable goods okay the said goods or conveyance should be sold through a process of auction including e auction for which a notice shall be issued in form drc 10 clearly indicating the goods or conveyance to be sold and the purpose of sale now here he will issue drc 10 which is a notice saying that sir notice of auction or e auction one notice will be issued done sir after 15 days gets over first he will go ahead and issue a notice theek hai in gst drc 10 saying that sir we are going to do the auction or e auction provided that where the person transporting the goods pays the amount of penalty including all the expenses whatever the expenses were there or government went ahead and stored the goods including handling and custody charges after the time period but before the issuance of notice the proper officer shall cancel the process of auction sir here if you go ahead and pay penalty means after 15 days got over but still you paid the penalty you inform the officer then auction will be cancelled auction will not happen otherwise so it means even after 15 days still before the issuance of this notice that we are going to do the auction of your goods even before this notice of auction if you go ahead and pay the penalty then also auction will not happen chapter will be closed along with the penalty you have to pay other charges also because they would have stored your goods and conveyance they will go ahead and recover other charges also from you done sir point is clear are we all 100% clear till here can we all go ahead everyone quickly tell me are you able to digest it everyone people sitting with me are you able to digest it till here yes sir we are all able to digest it till here what happened i went ahead and told you over here first your truck was being detained within 7 days show cause notice within the next 7 days they will go ahead and give you the penalty order this is the maximum time and once the penalty order is given within the next 15 days if you make the payment or you go for an appeal very good if you don't go for an appeal or you don't make the payment then the goods and conveyance will be sold now we are understanding rule number 144 which is going ahead and telling how it will be sold now once 15 days get over they will prepare one inventory theek hai sir they will prepare an inventory that okay these are the goods to be sold and these are conveyance to be sold and they will give one notice that we are going to sell now one auction ka notice will be given and they'll tell hey people who want to do the bidding please give the pre bid amount see here everyone the last day for submission of the bid or the date of the auction shall not be earlier than 15 days from the date of the notice sir from here 15 days mein what will happen last date to submit your bid how much you want to bid hey these are the goods we are selling this is the conveyance we are selling please go ahead and submit your bid so it is telling the last day for submission of bid or the date of auction shall not be earlier than 15 days from the date of issue of notice now what will happen here auction will happen theek hai auction will happen or online e bid then last uh, 15 days mein you have to submit the 
bid amount sir that how much am i willing to pay okay i'll pay 10 lakh rupees online bid etc may submission of the bid should happen so 15 days ka minimum time has to be given after issue of the notice okay then sir uh, this time limit will not be applicable in case of perishable goods hazardous goods that i have already told you perishable and hazardous goods mangoes ke liye supposingly one month two months you will wait mangoes will become seed done the proper officer may specify the amount of pre-bid deposit to be furnished in the manner specified by such officer to make bidders eligible to participate if you want to bid they can go ahead and tell you that sir this is the minimum amount of pre-bid uh, which is amount you have to deposit that they can go ahead and tell you okay sir means if you want to participate in the bid they will go ahead and tell you sir if you want to go ahead and uh, participate in the auction might be they will tell you pre-bid amount is there one lakh rupees which you have to deposit that you have to go ahead and give deposit actually what happened before the bidding uh, what they go ahead and do is they will tell you everyone has to pay minimum one lakh, lakh rupees after the person who successfully wins the bid supposingly 50 lakh a bid one person won then that other supposingly a gave one lakh B gave 1 lakh, C gave 1 lakh, okay? This is a pre-bid amount which has to be given. So, he will go ahead and tell one pre-bid amount which you have to deposit. This is like one advance which you have to deposit. Now, B won the bid. He told 50 lakh may I will buy the goods and the conveyance. So, B won. Now, when B will win, no, then he has to pay only remaining 49 lakh rupees. 1 lakh rupees was the advance already deposited. And this 1 lakh will be returned to A and this uh, 1 lakh will be returned to C when b will win supposingly sir b after winning did not pay the remaining 49 lakh rupees then this then this 1 lakh rupees of b will be forfeited this is the this is how bidding happens bidding may what they do is they take a pre-bid amount then if you win the bid whatever is the differential you have to pay other bidders who are there their pre-deposit amount their pre-bid amount will be returned to them that's all they have gone in and told over here the proper officer may specify the amount of pre-bid to be furnished in the manner specified to such officer to make the bidders eligible where any which may be returned to unsuccessful bidder and forfeited in case successful bidder fails to make the payment of the full amount okay hey, sir the proper officer shall issue a notice to the successful bidder okay hey, sir once now auction will happen now auction kit before the auction they will take the pre-bid amount etc once you win if you win the bid then they will go ahead and give you one drc 11 in drc 11 they will go ahead and demand the amount which you have to go ahead and pay that is if b wins free bid was given 1 lakh rupees 49 lakh rupees has to be paid now might be the bidding happened and he won for 50 lakh rupees now he is the owner but before the goods are being transferred to you you will have to deposit this amount for that they will go ahead and demand using drc 11 okay sir requiring him to make the payment within 15 days from the date of auction once the auction happens then uh, DRC 11 will be issued and they will tell you from the date of auction you have to pay the amount within 15 days in the auction you have won now you have to pay the amount within 15 days okay sir point is clear one second I'll make it little small okay Aditya told me sir it should be 144A right Aditya I got your point now okay now from here from here you have to see that you have to go ahead and make the payment within 15 days okay sir uh, perishable goods ke liye, this uh, time limit is not applicable on payment of the full bid amount the proper officer shall transfer okay sir 15 days happened you paid you paid the ownership will be transferred to you ownership of goods and conveyance will be transferred to success full bidder whoever has done the bidding successfully the amount uh, ownership of the goods and conveyance will be transferred and he will be given one drc 12 and certificate will be given that now you are the owner and that certificate will be drc 12 done sir point is clear then the proper officer shall cancel the process and proceed for re-auction when no bid is received or the auction is considered to be uh, non-competitive due to lack of adequate participant they can also go ahead and cancel the bid uh, cancel the auction supposingly the bidding amount which is there is very low or might be only two three people have come then they can go ahead and cancel the bidding process also then where the appeal has been filed by the person under the provision of subsection one then baba the proceedings for recovery of penalty 
by the sale of goods and conveyance shall be deemed to be stayed. Now, everyone tell me one thing. One side you went for an appeal. You went for an appeal. They will go ahead and do the bidding. No, Baba. When, if you go for an appeal, the auction, etc. will not be done. They will stop the process, etc. Okay, sir. Whatever is the process. Provided that, Baba, nothing is applicable. Always remember all these time limits, etc. is not applicable in case of perishable and hazardous goods. Quickly tell me, are we all clear with this point? Can we go ahead, everyone? Are we all clear with the bidding process? Baba, I will do one thing. Rameshsoni.com free resources in free resources uh, November 22 folder I will go ahead and upload this notes which I am writing as uh, amendment notes for amendment classroom notes for November 22 I will upload these notes also so if you want to go ahead and draw this process from here till here if you want to go ahead and draw this process you can make one simple sir, chart also and keep it with you okay done sir Next, I don't believe it is very important for exam point of view, but still knowing is always good. Next, rule number 154, sir, after they have gone ahead and disposed of all your goods and conveyance, what will they do with the amount? Disposal of proceed, Baba, you have paid the amount. Now, what will the department do with this amount? That is being told, again continued in rule number 154. Sir, bidding happened, amount received by department now what will they do with this amount what will they recover with this amount now they sold all the conveyance etc to me i gave them 50 lakh with 50 lakh what will the department do they have gone ahead and told in rule number 154 newly inserted rule which goes ahead and says the amount so realized from the sale of goods or conveyance movable or immovable property for the recovery of dues from the defaulter or for the recovery of penalty payable under subsection 3 of section number 129 means whatever is the amount so realized from the sale of goods, conveyance, movable, immovable property, whatever they have gone ahead and sold, your goods they have sold, conveyance they have sold, might be under recovery they went ahead and sold your movable and immovable property. Recovery proceedings were going on against you. They sold your movable properties, immovable properties. <coughs> for the recovery of the dues from defaulter or recovery of penalty under 129.3 might be any recovery ke liye they sold your movable property, immovable property, etc. Or 129 May, they went ahead and sold your goods and conveyance. They are telling, first it will be apportioned against the administrative cost. Means where will they use it? Their, the money which they have recovered, this money which they go ahead and recover. What will they do with this money? They are going ahead and telling they will first use it towards administrative cost. What were, whatever was the department ka cost against that they will use. Might be to do the auction etc. The department went ahead and spent 5 lakh rupees to do the departmental ka, uh, auction etc. Goods etc. to store. They might have gone ahead and done some expenses. All that they will recover. First administrative cost of the recovery process okay? might be they had to sell your movable property immovable property goods uh, conveyance etc auction expenses auctioneer came all those auction expenses will be first recovered then next be apportioned against the amount recovered or the payment amount to be recovered whatever was the penalty amount which you had to pay or whatever was the demand amount Baba, demand and recovery may also whenever they go ahead and sell off your movable immovable property to recover the amount what will they do with the amount always first of all always remember whenever they have gone ahead and sold your goods conveyance or might be movable immovable property always first of all they will go ahead and recover their administrative cost then secondly whatever was the penalty order no whatever was the penalty order or any demand order which was passed whatever was the amount told in the penalty order or demand order the amount to be recovered or the payment of penalty payable under section number 129 that will be recovered okay sir then uh, next be apportioned against any amount due from the defaulter if you have any default under the cgst act sgst act igst act rules etc any default next apportioned against any other due from the defaulter might be you have not filed one month return there some amount is payable they will go ahead and recover any amount which is due might be uh, any other amount which is due from you they will go ahead and recover that amount then the balance if any shall be created to the electronic rate ledger remember one number one they will go ahead and recover their administrative cost admin cost number two 
secondly they will recover the amount to be recovered whatever the amount to be recovered was there as per the notice as per the order as per order they will go ahead and recover and thirdly they are going ahead and telling any other amount which a defaulter you are a defaulter you have to pay that amount also they will go ahead and recover okay the balance will be created to your electronic cash ledger first they will recover their administrative cost okay they sold my goods and the conveyance what will they recover administrative cost whatever was recoverable from me as per the penalty order or demand order thirdly they will go ahead and recover from me any other amount might be one demand order was already raised for me some other amount ke liye that demand amount also they will recover then the balance will be created to my e cash ledger of the owner of the goods or conveyance in case the person is registered and supposingly i am not a registered person under gst then it will be created to the to my bank account sir supposingly where it is not possible to the pay the balance to the person concerned within 6 month might be uh, they had to go ahead and pay the amount to a person and the person is not traceable 6 months already over sir we are we don't know we don't have his bank account then so from the date of sale of the goods or conveyance or such further period as the proper officer may allow such balance of proceedings shall be deposited in the fund consumer welfare fund theek hai sir they are going ahead and telling everyone over here first of all whatever the amount recovered amount received by the department they will use against administrative cost theek hai whatever is the department ka cost to do all that auction and all they will use secondly they will go ahead and use against the amount to be recovered amount to be recovered as per the demand order or penalty order whatever the amount is there against that the third they will go ahead and any amount which is due from the defaulter any other amount if it is due from me they will recover that also fourthly they will put in my e cash ledger if i am a registered person if i am an unregistered person they will put in my bank account if they are not able to find out the unregistered person then the amount will be put in consumer welfare fund are we all 100% clear with this can i go ahead quickly give me a heads up are we all 100% clear with this point Yes everyone can we all 100 go ahead yes sir we are all 100% clear please remember this point might be a small question they can go ahead and ask you so i have written it in a summary also over here chalo next now uh, section number 130 which was there see baba section number 129 went ahead and told about detention and seizure section number 129 which was there is very very important for a exam they are going to ask a question they will ask you on section number 129 only please see section number 129 properly and go done sir now section number 129 was detention and seizure earlier and then section number 130 comes section number 130 talks about confiscation of goods or conveyance and levy of penalty sir section number 130 is talking about what confiscation of goods or conveyance and levy of penalty the goods will be confiscated confiscation of goods or conveyance and levy of penalty there are five circumstances which were given when your goods and conveyance will be confiscated confiscated means the ownership will be transferred to the government earlier excuse me notwithstanding anything contained in this act this line was written however they went ahead and understood that this line is of no relevance and they went ahead and made it simple saying if directly they went ahead and deleted this lines and because it was not required over here simple they made it where any person has done this five thing we will go ahead and do the confiscation simple they went ahead and simplified the section number 130 by just going ahead and saying that sir this line which was there that not withstanding anything contained in this act means they are telling whatever is told in this act forget it in this five case we will go ahead and do the confiscation means we will go ahead and transfer the ownership to the government this section may this lines were not required actually to make it very simple they went ahead and told where any person has done this five thing we will go ahead and do the confiscation earlier also it was the same now also it is the same that sir if you go ahead and do all this five thing then confiscation can be done confiscation means the ownership of your goods will be transferred to the department theek hai sir point is clear now the main amendment which has been done in this section is everyone here listen to me very carefully section number 132 may there was one proviso which was there tell me one thing confiscation can be done of goods conveyance 
and there is one person also behind it yes sir this conveyance is there done truck is there this truck is there might be some goods were being there okay which are being transported in a truck and there is a person who is involved on in all this thing they are going ahead and telling this goods ke liye this goods also will confiscate conveyance also will confiscate person is not confiscated i government will take over the ownership of the person no a person pay penalty is levied theek hai everyone penalty as told in section number 122 remember on a person if you are going ahead if your goods are liable to be confiscated person pay penalty is levied but if you are telling sir please don't take over my goods then you are liable to pay a confiscation fine in lieu of confiscation for goods also you have to pay a fine and for conveyance also you have to go ahead and pay a fine sir if i don't want my goods ka ownership to be transferred to the government how much is the fine i have to pay remember always <coughs> whenever any goods or conveyance is authorized by the act the officer or adjudicating it shall give the owner of the goods and sir in this five cases your goods can be confiscated now whenever the officer is going home and taking over your goods they will tell sir listen to me very carefully they will go ahead and tell that sir if you want we will not take over the ownership means government will not take over the ownership of your goods if you have done this five acts also if you do, do this five act your goods ka ownership will be transferred to the government but if you go ahead and pay a fine whenever confiscation of any goods is authorized by the act confiscation is authorized under this five scenario the officer adjudicating it whoever is the officer he will give you give the owner of the goods an option to pay in lieu of confiscation such fine as the said officer thinks fit whatever he thinks fit he will tell you to pay the fine theek hai provided that such fine shall not exceed the market value of the goods confiscated whatever is the market value might be the market value of the goods is 10 lakh rupees okay sir he will tell you fine as he thinks fit officer will ask whatever he thinks fit theek hai then provided that such fine levyable shall not exceed the market price of the goods less the tax chargeable might be the tax chargeable on these goods was supposedly 6 lakh sorry 1.8 lakh 18% so sir how much is it 10 lakh minus 1.8 8.2 lakh he will go ahead and tell you sir this is the maximum fine officer can go ahead and recover from you they are going ahead and telling see over here provided that the such fine which fine he will give the owner of the goods owner of the goods pay whatever fine in lieu such fine as the officer thinks fit means sir the fine on the goods will always be whatever the officer thinks fit but that fine can be maximum how much maximum can be whatever is the market value of the goods one minute this fine which is there it can be maximum market value minus the tax sir market value of the goods is 10 lakh tax is 1.8 lakh then maximum can be 1.8 lakh theek hai sir point is sorry 8.2 lakh theek hai sir then such fine levyable shall not such fine means on the goods shall not exceed the market value of the goods confiscated less the tax chargeable thereon less the gst basically provided that the aggregate of such fine and penalty levyable shall not be less sir fine and penalty penalty is on whom person pay there is a penalty under section number 122 theek hai sir so they are telling this fine and this penalty sir which one this fine which the officer is charging and the penalty fine can be maximum i have already told you now they are telling provided that the aggregate of fine and penalty shall not be less than this amount of penalty under section number 12991 this reference has been deleted because 12991 may now the penalty is 200% so they have reference deleted the reference and they have told penalty equal to 100% of the tax payable on such goods 
sir this uh, goods pay how much was the tax payable this goods pay how much was the tax payable 1.8 lakh so they are telling fine this fine plus this penalty total minimum fine plus penalty minimum fine plus penalty will be this, this plus this will be how much sir tax payable on the goods which is 1.8 lakh done sir point is clear they have gone ahead and told this point sir uh, in my textbook what has happened is one mistake has happened which i want to go ahead and tell you guys okay offenses and penalties chapter may section number 120 130 may when you go what i have done by mistake is everyone over here section number 130 may 132 if you guys have version 8 version 7 if you have you can make this correction version 8 if you have this version 8 may also this mistake has been done so please be careful this paragraph which is there is not deleted which paragraph is deleted third paragraph this is deleted but by mistake this paragraph got deleted no sir this paragraph is not deleted this paragraph is deleted so this paragraph was unnecessarily over here which was not required and this had to be deleted and the government went ahead and deleted sir okay provided also that where any conveyance is used for the carriage of the goods so sir section number 130 ka subsection 3 has been deleted why sir this has been deleted because this was unnecessarily not required and hence it was deleted over here sir it means this point is not deleted no sir where any conveyance is used for the carriage of the goods or passenger on for hire the owner of the conveyance shall be given an option in lieu of confiscation of the conveyance a fine equal to tax payable on the goods means in this case now if the owner of the conveyance is telling sir please don't take over my conveyance for conveyance the penalty will be how much the fine in lieu of confiscation okay sir we will not take over your conveyance you have to pay a fine which is tax payable on the goods which is 1.8 lakh rupees always remember one thing you being the owner for you the penalty which is there i've already gone ahead and told you how much is the penalty owner of the goods has to go ahead and pay penalty fine as the officer thinks fit and sir on the person the owner the penalty will be there for the goods so that the goods are not confiscated you are telling sir please don't confiscate my goods you are paying as he thinks fit that amount of fine and on you there will be a penalty under 122 maximum it can be 8.2 lakh minimum it will be how much this fine plus penalty minimum will be how much sir the tax payable on the goods maximum can be sir value of the goods market value minus the tax and sir the transporter supposing there is a transporter his truck is also being liable for confiscation then transporter will be told that sir if you want your truck not to be confiscated then for the conveyance there will be a penalty and for the conveyance the penalty is uh, the tax payable on those goods i hope everyone is clear till here please give me a heads up are we all clear with this three point i believe for your exam these three points are very important and also you have to remember this five point when your goods and conveyance is liable for, to be confiscated so when can confiscation happen these points are important and sir when goods and conveyance is being confiscated what is the fine amount that also i have gone ahead and explained and i have also gone ahead and drawn the amount over here is my point 100 percent clear to all can we go ahead yes sir clear chalo let's go ahead next now i have gone ahead and given over here the chart also for offenses and penalties if you see over here for detention and seizure i have given higher of 50 percent or 200 percent 200 percent okay sir this point is clear and i have told you seven days plus seven days may uh, they will go ahead and give you seven days may notice and seven days may order and from there 15 days ka time limit will be given to you 15 days ka time limit is not applicable okay period can be less than 15 days you have to write over here period can be less than 15 days if goods are perishable goods or likely to depreciate with time it should be 15 over here okay by mistake it is written 14 please make it 15 then sir on goods 
ऑन कन्वेन्स एंड पर्सन पर्सन विल बी लाइबल टू पेनल्टी गुड्स के लिए एज द ऑफिसर थिंग्स फिट बट मैक्सिमम कैन बी मार्केट प्राइस लेस जी एस टी कन्वेन्स इफ यू वॉन्ट टू रिलीज फॉर दैट जी एस टी पेबल सर दिस फाइन विच इज देयर प्लस दिस पेनल्टी विच इज देयर ऑन द पर्सन दैट कैन बी मैक्सिमम हंड्रेड परसेंट ऑफ द टैक्स पेबल ऑन सच गुड्स द सेम थिंग हैज बीन रिटर्न ओवर हियर प्लीज डू दिस एंड गो वन ट्वेंटी नाइन एंड वन थर्टी वन क्वेश्चन दे आर गोइंग टू आस्क यू श्योर शॉर्ट that's all is the amendment in your offenses and penalties chapter please come to the next amendment everyone the next amendment is exports under gst ka chapter mein no amendment at all listen to me very carefully whenever you are exporting the goods i hope you guys remember whenever you export the goods in that scenario also in that scenario rule number 96 is applicable yes sir refund of gst paid on export of goods baba always remember whenever in rule number 96 they have just gone ahead and given one uh reference to 10b saying that sir if you are filing refund of the tax paid on your export of goods also under rule number 96 beta for refund application to be admitted your aadhar authentication has to be done otherwise your refund will not be entertained i hope you guys remember this point yes sir that's all is the amendment that sir always remember one thing the applicant has undergone aadhar authentication only then your refund will be processed i hope you guys remember that whenever you export the goods from india outside india the shipping bill which is filed is your refund ka application that is told by rule number 96 yes sir in rule number 96 they have just gone ahead and told your refund will be processed only if always remember only if aadhar authentication is done that's all is the amendment over here rule number 96 may small amendment saying sir the applicant should have undergone aadhar authentication as told in rule number 10b yes sir point is clear let's go ahead next refund baba listen to me very carefully in the refund ka amendment what is the amendment that has come in the refund ka chapter listen to me very carefully over here firstly you have to file gst rfd 01 application yes sir gst rfd 01 is the application everyone gst rfd 01 is the application for filing for refund that application has been made subject to 10b it means they are going ahead and telling sir if you want to go ahead and file your gst rfd 01 refund ka application under rule number 89 your aadhar authentication should be done that's it is the point over here that sir whenever you are filing a refund application it is subject to 10b means your aadhar authentication is made mandatory only if your aadhar authentication is done sir aadhar authentication not done then baba aadhar slip along with bank passbook or voter id card that also can be done theek hai sir point is clear it is made subject to 10b means only when your aadhar authentication is done your application for refund can be submitted theek hai sir next it's a consequential amendment because of insertion of 10b next Rule number ninety-five. Baba, everyone, listen to me very carefully. Rule number ninety-five went ahead and told about UIN holder. When will UIN holder, uh, when a UIN holder is going ahead and applying for refund, he will get refund of only those invoices on which their UIN number is written. It means, sir, I hope you guys remember. If there is a UIN holder who is there, whenever a UIN holder is going ahead and taking inward supplies, on this inward supplies, he would have received a tax invoice. in this tax invoice his uin number has to be there only then whatever gst was paid that gst government will go ahead and give a refund to a uin holder done sir whenever a uin holder is going ahead and applying for refund he will get refund of only those invoices the inward supply should be received against a received from a registered person against tax invoice and the name of uin number of the applicant has to be mentioned it means the tax invoice which you have received on that your uin number has to be there only then whatever this uin holder has paid the tax on this inward supply that gst ka refund is given by the government now sir uin holders went ahead and told sir in my tax invoice the registered person who went ahead and supplied me there is no uin number mentioned what to do now it means i will not get a refund of the tax which i have paid on my inward supply government went ahead and told uin holder you do one thing when you are going ahead and giving us the refund ka application rfd 10 is the refund application then this invoices do one attestation if these invoices are attested 
by the person who is going ahead and who is the authorized person if the authorized person basically UIN holder you can go ahead and attest those invoices saying yes sir we have received the invoice supplies then even if your GST UIN number is not mentioned on those invoices, still we will give you the refund that's all government have told where the UIN of the applicant is not mentioned in the tax invoice the refund of the tax paid to the applicant by the applicant on such invoice shall be available only if the copy of the invoice duly attested by the authorized representative of the applicant means UIN holder ka whoever is the authorized representative is submitted along with the refund application GST RFD 10. Baba listen to me very carefully if you are a UIN holder UIN holder whenever they go ahead and file a refund application to the government Baba all the inward supplies should be received on a tax invoice in the tax invoice UIN number should be there supposingly one person supplied to them on this UIN number is not mentioned will they not get any ITC GST which is paid this GST ka refund will they not get government went ahead and told if in one invoice UIN number is not mentioned do one thing when you are going ahead and filing the refund application GST RFD is 10 along with that this tax invoice attested by your authorized representative please submit along with the refund application to the officer and officer will go ahead and give the refund of those invoice related GST also it means even if UIN is not mentioned still the GST ka refund will be given to the UIN holder that's it government has gone ahead and told refund of GST can be claimed on submitting of attested copy of tax invoice by the UIN holder if UIN is not mentioned in the tax invoice still the refund relating to the tax invoice will be given to the UIN holder is the point clear to all I have gone ahead and told you the two amendments which are there number one whenever you are filing your refund application your refund application will be admitted only if your uh, Aadhaar authentication is done. Okay, sir. Second amendment which I have gone ahead and told you, UIN holder are given a refund of the tax invoices on which UIN number is mentioned. Supposingly on one tax invoice UIN number is not mentioned, still the refund will be given to him if they go ahead and submit. If UIN is not mentioned on the tax invoice, refund will be available if invoice ka copy duly attested by the authorized representative is submitted. Are we all 100% clear till here? Can we go ahead everyone? Quickly tell me, are we all clear with this point? Yes, sir, we are all clear. Let's go ahead. Everyone over here, please come back. Baba, refund me only this much amendment is there. One small clarification circular has also been issued. Let's go run quickly through the circular. Everyone. Whether the provision of section number 51 of the CGST Act regarding the time period within which application for refund can be filed would be applicable in case of refund of excess balance in the e-cash ledger. Sir, in my e-cash ledger, some amount is remaining. Is there a time limit of two years if I am claiming a refund of my e-cash ledger ka amount? Baba, e-cash is your cash. Your cash which is lying in your e-cash ledger, two years ka time limit is not applicable. That's all. There is no time limit. See, generally for refund, you have to go ahead and apply within two years. But if it's a, it's your e-cash ledger, Baba, e-cash ledger is your cash. For cash ledger ka refund, sorry, in my e-cash ledger, there is some amount which is lying. I want to file a refund application and claim that refund. Baba, e-cash ledger is your money. There is no time limit which is applicable. That's all is the amendment. Uh, not amendment, clarification. Whether certificate declaration, Baba CA certificate basically, CA certificate is required to be furnished along with the application for refund of e-cash ledger. Hey, any doctrine of unjust enrichment is applicable. My e-cash ledger, my amount which is lying in my e-cash ledger which I have deposited, there is no CA certificate etc required. You don't have to give any self-declaration or if the amount is more than 2 lakh, you have to give CA certificate. All those things are not required if the refund is of your E cash ledger ka balance. Baba, e cash is your cash. For that, doctrine of unjust enrichment to prove and all is not required. You don't have to prove that the sir, this money is mine. Are you have deposited your e cash ledger ka amount? You can claim a refund. There is no uh, CS certificate or self declaration required. In case of refund of excess balance in the e cash ledger, neither a declaration by the applicant 
nor a certificate by the chartered accountant or cost accountant is required to be furnished always remember ca certificate is also not required and self self declaration uh, also is not required sir self declaration is required i hope you guys remember sir whenever i am going ahead and submitting the application and documentary evidence plus documentary evidence if refund is refund is due to me sir for that self declaration if the amount is less than 2 lakh greater than equal to 2 lakh ca certificate was required the ca certificate or self declaration both are not required in case of refund of e cash ledger ka balance because that is your money for that there is no unjust enrichment sir my cash ledger mein amount is lying am i becoming rich at the cost of someone else i have deposited the amount i can claim the refund there is no doctrine of unjust enrichment applicable next everyone over here now so first clarification done second clarification done let's go ahead with the third one now where refund of tds and tcs deposited in the e cash ledger can be refunded as excess balance in the e cash ledger everyone listen to me very carefully i went ahead and supplied to the government department government department went ahead and deducted supposingly tds and this tds government department went to the paid to the government government went ahead and gave in the supplier ka e cash ledger i hope you guys remember your tds amount which is deposited to the government by the government department comes in your e cash ledger okay sir sir there is an e commerce operator i went ahead and supplied through an e commerce operator i am the supplier here is the recipient recipient paid the e commerce operator e commerce operator deducted tcs he paid the tcs to the government government went ahead and gave me the credit in the e cash ledger now tell me one thing e cash ledger me your tcs amount is there e cash ledger me only your tds amount is there baba tds amount and tcs amount which is lying in my e cash ledger can i claim a refund government told simple baba claim a refund no problem everyone over here if in your e cash ledger or e e cash ledger any tds or tcs is being deposited that refund also can be claimed can be refunded as excess balance in the e cash ledger no problem at all they have gone ahead and told whatever tds and tcs is there in your e cash ledger it can be claimed as a refund no restriction nothing is applicable it's your money you can claim as a refund next whether relevant date for refund of tax paid on deemed supplies by the recipient is to be determined as per section number 54 whether the date of return filed uh by the supplies or the date of return filed by the recipient will be relevant for the purpose of determining the relevant date everyone listen to me very carefully tell me one thing i have gone ahead and supplied to one person and my supply is a deemed export supply sir deemed export if you supply to a person who is holding an advance authorization epcg authorization or sir 100% eou is there or bank or public sector undertaking is supplying gold to a person sir in that scenario this people i am the supplier if i am going ahead and supplying to a person a recipient who is holding an advance authorization for the time being then sir a a e e boys pg yes sir we remember a a e e boys pg yes always remember one thing in this scenario my supply is deemed supplies deemed export supply on this deemed export i can also claim a refund and recipient also can claim a refund this refund ke liye you have to see if you remember in the chart it is told that sir in case of deemed export the two years will be seen from the return relating to such deemed export is furnished now always remember one thing whether supplier is claiming a refund or recipient is claiming a refund if supplier is claiming a refund then he has to go ahead and take an undertaking from the recipient that recipient will not take itc and he will not claim refund also theek hai but can recipient also claim yes sir recipient if he has gone ahead and paid the gst to this guy then recipient will go ahead and claim a refund now they are going ahead and telling if supplier is going ahead and claiming a refund he has to see within 2 years he has to file rfd 01 refund application within 2 years from what date from the date he has filed the gstr 3b including this deemed export 
done from that day when he files his gstr 3b including the deemed export ka supply which he has done from that day two years may supplier can go and claim a refund sir what about the recipient recipient will see two years from which date baba for recipient also to claim a refund the supplier should have filed the re return with respect to the deemed export and hence recipient also can claim a refund within two years from the day when the supplier files the gstr 3b that clarification has been given that the relevant date for the purpose of filing refund claim for refund of tax paid on deemed export supply would be the date of filing of return related to such supplies by the supplier means if the supplier is filing the refund claim or the recipient is filing the refund claim always remember two years will be seen from the day the supplier files the gstr 3b return basically including the deemed export supplies is my point clear to all so whether supplier is claiming the refund or recipient is claiming the refund both the cases may in always remember the date will be seen two years from the date the supplier files the return showing the deemed export supplies from that day two years will be seen baba we are done with the amendments relating to the chapter of refunds over here i hope everyone is clear quickly give me a heads up can i go ahead and close my amendment with respect to the chapter of refund over here are we done now <coughs> the last amendment which is there is in the chapter of miscellaneous topics everyone listen to me very carefully miscellaneous topic everyone section number 151 which is there earlier the name was power to collect statistics now they have name name has been changed baba name has been changed the na name now is power to call for information please change the name it should be power to call for information power to call for information please change the name everyone now earlier they used to go ahead and say sir full section only has been changed the commissioner if he considers it necessary to do direct the statistics may be collected relating to any matter in connection with the act upon such notification means the commissioner can go ahead and issue a notification once the commissioner has issued the notification the commissioner or any person authorized by him in this behalf may call upon concerned person to furnish such information on return in such manner as may prescribe all these things were written total bakwas now they have gone ahead and made it very simple saying power to call for information if it is see this commissioner can issue notification you know which commissioners can issue notification notification means amendment and commissioner which commissioner can issue notification do you know that baba the commissioner or joint secretary who are posted in the board baba the cbic ka commissioners who are there those people can issue this notification but now what they have gone ahead and done is they have deleted the reference of section number 151 from here only and they have told now your jurisdictional commissioner if he wants some information baba see the commissioner or officer authorized by him means your jurisdictional commissioner can give an order he there is no notification required order will be issued direct any person registered unregistered to furnish information relating to to furnish information relating to any matter dealt in with connection with this act within such time in such form and in such manner as may be specified now nothing your commissioner or your jurisdictional commissioner or any person authorized by your jurisdictional commissioner can call for any information he can call for any information now the commissioner or officer authorized by him may by an order direct any person to furnish information relating to any matter dealt in with connection with this act it means now the uh, commissioner who is in the cbic ka commissioner need not issue any notification all those things are not required now if your jurisdictional commissioner wants he will go ahead and issue an order and tell you hey i want these details and you are required to provide those details that's all is section number 151 now okay sir sir 
section number 168 went and told that the commissioner who is posted at the CBIC, he can issue notification. In this, section number 151, one ka reference was given that section number 151 may, section number 151 may, whenever section number 151 may, any uh, noti notification has to be issued that will be issued by the CBIC posted at the uh, commissioner posted in the CBIC. Baba, now your jurisdictional commissioner only can issue, right? So, this, uh, this uh, point was not required over here. So, they deleted it off. Because of this amendment, this uh, section number 168 may one amendment happened. Total bakwas. Next. Bar on disclosure of information. Baba, your information relating to your return, relating to any proceedings, etc. could not be disclosed anywhere. They told no information of any individual return or part thereof with respect to any matter for the purpose of 150, 151 without the previous con consent of the person or his authorized representative be published so as to enable such particular to be identified as referring to a particular person or no such information can be used against any proceedings under this act basically your uh, re return related details all those details could not be made public without going ahead without your previous consent in writing now they have gone ahead and told without giving an opportunity of being heard to the person it means now your information can be made public means they can go ahead and use the information which are there so they are telling no information with respect to any matter given for the purpose of 150 or 151, Baba, 150 and 151 may, whatever information has been collected to, from you, they were not allowed to use it. Now, they will just give you an opportunity of being heard. Without giving an opportunity of being heard, they will not use it. It means now, the officer can just give you an opportunity of being heard and use those information which he has along with him. So, it means nothing. Now, information which is collected can be used for the purpose of any proceeding any proceedings ke liye, those information can be used only under this act after providing opportunity of being heard earlier if you don't give writing in if you don't give uh, written consent then they could not use it now just they will give you an opportunity of being heard and they can go ahead and use those information which is collected by the officer under section number 150 and 151 okay sir total bakwas next rule number 137 everyone listen to me very carefully Amendment in the chart 151, I have gone ahead and written over here. And this anti-profiting and national anti-profiting authority. I hope you guys remember anti-profiting and national anti-profiting authority. This national anti-profiting authority which was there, their tenor was only 4 years. Government thought people will stop profiting after 4 years. Government thought after 4 years of GST coming, basically after 4 years, uh, from the day national anti-profiting authority comes into existence they will cease to exist means four year was the tenor of the national anti-profiting authority now this tenor is made five years that's all earlier it was four years now it is made five years that's all is the amendment are we all clear till here everyone are we all clear till here yes everyone Here we are done completely. Baba, seven years likha hai. Kaan likha hai, Baba? Five years, five. Five years, it is five years. It is five years now. Earlier it was four. Now it is five years. No, like done sir point is clear this is five years okay baba here we are completely done with the gst related amendments congratulations people we are done with the amendment relating to gst over here people now break 10 minutes and then we'll do custom related amendments yes custom uh, we'll go ahead and do after a quick break 10 minutes we'll go ahead and do then the amendments break is 10 minutes and uh, it is 1 
थर्टी फाइव विल रिज्यूम टेन मिनट्स का ब्रेक आई टेक ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फाइव मिनट्स टू एक्सप्लेन द कस्टम्स का अमेंडमेंट ऑल्सो लेट्स टेक ए क्विक ब्रेक वंस वी कम बैक फ्रॉम द ब्रेक वन थर्टी फाइव विल स्टार्ट टू टू टेन विल क्लोज इट डन एवरी वन चलो गो क्विकली कम बैक क्विकली देन वील गो एड एंड स्टार्ट द अमेंडमेंट नो बाबा नो लंच एंड ऑल लंच विल बी टू टू फाइव यू गो एड एंड डू द लंच हाफ एन आवर आई टेक कस्टम्स का अमेंडमेंट टेन मिनट्स गो क्विकली इट क्विकली एंड कम इफ यू वॉन्ट टू देन वील गो एड एंड स्टार्ट विथ कस्टम्स का अमेंडमेंट लेट्स टेक ए क्विक ब्रेक एवरी वन चलो बाबा लेट्स गो अहेड एंड कंटिन्यू आर क्लास नाउ प्लीज कम टू कस्टम्स एंड एफ टीपी का अमेंडमेंट एवरी वन लेट्स डिस्कस कस्टम्स एंड एफ टीपी नाउ ओके कस्टम्स एंड एफ टीपी रिलेटेड अमेंडमेंट कस्टम्स एंड एफ टीपी रिलेटेड अमेंडमेंट विच आई एम गोइंग टू टीच नाउ Even if you are a student who has taken my classes earlier, or you are a student who has taken my November twenty-two ka classes, people please listen carefully. Even if you have taken my November twenty-two ka classes, I want you to attend the amendment. It is twenty twenty-five minutes, which we will try to complete it. But I want all the students who have taken my November twenty-two ka classes also to watch this amendment. ठीक है? Done, sir. Point is clear. Listen to me carefully over here. Now. कस्टम्स एंड एफ टीपी में देर इज नो मेजर अमेंडमेंट विच इज देयर लेट्स गो एड एंड डू इट क्विकली चैप्टर नंबर टू इम्पोर्टेशन एक्सपोर्टेशन एंड ट्रांसपोर्टेशन ऑफ गुड्स इफ यू गो गाइज रिमेंबर इम्पोर्ट प्रोसीजर एक्सपोर्ट प्रोसीजर ट्रांसिट एंड ट्रांसिपमेंट ट्रांसिट एंड ट्रांसिपमेंट वी गो एड एंड लर्न इन चैप्टर नंबर टू इन चैप्टर नंबर टू वन सेक्शन कम्स विच इज सेक्शन नंबर फिफ्टी वन ए विच गोज एड एंड टॉक्स अबाउट पेमेंट ऑफ ड्यूटी इंटरेस्ट एंड पेनल्टी through the e cash ledger yes sir they have gone ahead and told under the custom automated system we will go ahead and maintain e cash ledger and a person has to go ahead and may pay, make the payment of his custom duties by using the e cash ledger there one section number rule uh, basically section number 51a sub section 4 is there which says the board is empowered to exempt deposits made by specified class of person or with respect to specified category of goods from board is exempt board can exempt specified class of person or with respect to specified category of goods from all or any of the provision of this section if it is necessary or expedient to do so that the cbic has the power that if cbic want cbic can exempt a class of person from making the payment from e cash ledger it means in some scenario you can make the payment directly in cash and e cash ledger ka requirement is not there now using this power the cbic had issued one small notification which i have gone ahead and told over here in terms of section number 51a4 of the custom act cbic by notification exempt certain deposit they have exempted certain deposits to which provision of e cash ledger will not be applicable means for this deposit e cash ledger is not required means you don't have to make this payment through your e cash ledger which is maintained under the custom automated system they are telling you can directly make the payment in cash also for this purposes only okay so for your exam they can ask you a small question what are the certain deposits which can be made other than through e cash ledger always remember cbic has specified deposited which are exempted from the provision to make payment through the e cash ledger with respect to goods imported or exported in the custom station where custom automated system is not in place you are going ahead and importing or exporting from a port where custom automated system is not there where basically payment through e cash ledger cannot be made are baba if payment cannot be made through e cash ledger on in that port custom automated system is only not working then baba you can make the payment directly in cash e cash ledger ke through payment is not required secondly with respect to accompanied baggage you came from outside india with your bag in your bag some go, some item was there on which custom duty had to be collected baggage pe 38.5% duty is there yes sir now that duty which is there at the airport you will tell okay officer let me create one e cash ledger then i will make the payment is it possible there you can make the payment in cash e cash ledger ke through payment is not required next 
other than those used for making payment of means other than this if any other amounts you are paying then that can be paid through other than e-cash ledger means e-cash ledger is not required it means for this to e-cash ledger is required other than this it says for other than those used for making payment of any duties of custom including cess etc igst gst compensation says interest penalty fees payable under the custom act or custom tariff act e cash ledger is required other than this amounts other than those used for making payment of this if any other amount you are going ahead and paying that can be paid through directly in cash also e cash ledger may first deposit and then make the payment that problem is not there so they have gone ahead and told specified deposited exempted from the provision of e cash ledger number one where custom automated system is not there that puts if you are importing exporting payment can be done directly in cash it means e cash ledger ke through payment is not required then with respect to accompanied baggage and thirdly other than those used for making payment of means other than this any payment if you have to go ahead and make then that can be made through other modes of payment e cash ledger ke through payment is not required i hope everyone is clear till here yes sir this point is clear this was the only amendment in your uh, chapter number 2 which is there then foreign trade policy ka amendment nothing baba foreign trade policy mein no amendment at all the foreign trade policy 2015 20 which was valid till 30 31 of march 2022 is now extended up to 30th of september okay the exemption from igst gst compensation says which was there basically in case of import under advance authorization epcg eou estp stp btp whenever they were importing the exemption was till 31st of march 2022 this exemption is now extended till 30th of june 2000 22 that's all is the amendment in your ftp ftp no amendment wherever it was 30th ha huh, ha huh, sir theek hai wherever it was written ftp which was till 31st of march 2022 is amended extended till 30th uh, of september 2022 all this advance authorization may if you are importing epcg authorization may if you are importing eou estp etc if they are importing igst and gst compensation says was exempted till 30th uh, 31st of march 2022 now the igst and gst compensation says is exempted till 30th of june 2022 22 done sir point is clear now everyone listen to me very carefully the main amendment in your customs import of goods at concessional rate of duty i believe one small point can come listen to me very carefully now the customs everyone over here customs import of goods at concessional rate of duty rules 2017 which was there this amendment this amendment i have missed it out in my version 8 books also and also for the number 22 classes i have missed it out so this amendment is very important if you have studied my classes for may 22 or number 22 baba this amendment which is there okay this amendment which is there i will go ahead and include in the classes now but those students who had already taken the live class or face to face classes for number 22 would would have missed this amendment baba i have already taught you customs import of goods at concessional rate of duty now listen to me very carefully even if you have version 8 books kindly this chart which is there this chapter which is there you have to read from here only now if you go down can you see the amendment part i have gone ahead and marked in green also for every amendment i have gone ahead and given some notes also if you want you can go ahead and read this at home what i have done the main main part over here is now these two charts which are there these two charts which is there i will repeat once again the students who have taken my number 22 ka classes or version 8 books custom import of goods at concessional rate of duty rules has been missed out in number 22 ka classes also as means the amendment part has been missed out plus the uh amended chart is also not there in your book what you can do is please follow for custom import of goods at concessional rate of duty this part of the amendment done sir point is clear now for the google drive pen drive and mobile app students i'll be updating it theek hai at the last it will be there for you guys but the people who have taken my face to face classes or live classes please follow this done everyone over here 
आई विल गो एड एंड टीच यू कस्टम्स इम्पोर्ट ऑफ गुड्स एट कंसेशनल रेट ऑफ ड्यूटी डायरेक्टली प्लीज कम डाउन एवरी वन ओवर हियर दिस कस्टम इम्पोर्ट ऑफ गुड्स एट कंसेशनल रेट ऑफ ड्यूटी रूल्स विच वेर देयर टू थाउजेंड सेवेंटीन दे हैव गॉन अहेड यस ओल्ड पार्ट विच इज देयर कैन बी स्किप you don't have to go ahead and read custom import of goods at concessional rate of duty old one which is there please see directly everyone listen to me very carefully now in your icai ka material this chapter is there in chapter number 1 okay everyone theek hai everyone over here let's go ahead and now do custom import of goods at concessional rate of duty rules 2017 everyone listen to me very carefully this is basically talking about end use based exemption end use based exemption everyone over here concessional rate of duty is allowed to be paid on import of goods if the end use is as specified in the exemption notification everyone over here government went ahead and issued one exemption notification in the exemption notification government told ramesh if you are importing steel and steel say if you are making this bottle the steel pay i will go ahead and charge concessional rate of duty government went ahead and told ramesh import steel on the imported steel please go ahead from the steel make this bottle i will go ahead and allow you concessional rate of duty is what the government has gone ahead and told now i imported steel i cleared it by paying concessional rate of duty might be the rate of duty actually on steel is 30% but government has given me a concession of 20% and i am paying only 10% because the end use is going to be the bottles now how will the government ensure whether i am actually going ahead and making bottles only this is the the control which the government has ensured is ensured by this notification which go by this basically rules custom import of goods at concessional rate of duty so i can import steel clear it at concessional rate of duty but government is telling by these rules we will make sure that you actually make bottles only and if you don't make bottles whatever concession was given we will go ahead and take it back from you everyone over here so first of all the first step which is there now which you have to remember sir always whoever is the importer basically you can import some goods and manufacture goods also and might be in the exemption notification government told ramesh you can import ipad and if you teach ca student ipads pe rate of duty which is there is actually 20% on import but we will go ahead and allow you to import only at 0% duty or might be only 5% duty that is import of goods at concessional rate of duty based on the end use the end use has to be as told in the exemption notification so government issued an exemption notification telling the mesh you get steel from the steel you have to make bottles okay done so i went ahead and imported steel now on that steel the concessional rate of duty will be given but government has to make sure that the end use is as per the exemption notification only so government have gone ahead and told one procedure now the procedure which is there is government is telling if you are the importer manufacturer or service provider first of all in the first stage government is telling please go to the ice gate ka website ice gate.gov.in and there the person who wants to import has to first of all provide the information earlier this information was provided to the officer now not required to be provided to your officer etc at additional commissioner jurisdictional commissioner no government is telling please provide one time information in form import of goods at concessional rate of duty number 1 icgcr form number 1 containing the name and address of the importer who am i and his job worker if any if i have any job worker his details also i have to go ahead and provide the goods produced are the process undertaken or at the manufacturing facility of the importer or job worker what are the goods i am going to produce and what is my job worker who is there what is he going to do the nature and description of imported goods used in the manufacture of goods at the premises of the importer or job worker they are going ahead and telling what is the imported goods you want to use in the manufacturing of the goods which you want to manufacture that also you have to tell particulars of exemption notification sir this is the exemption notification that also you have to provide applicable on such import and not nature of output service utilized importing goods uh utilizing the imported goods means what is the service i am going to provide by using the goods and 
the intended port of import what is the intended port of import the intended port of import also i have to provide so sir before i go ahead and import first of all i have to go ahead and provide the information in the ice gate ka website online i have to go and i have to provide this information number one sir name and address name and address of the importer my name my address and my job worker ka address basically the name the goods and the process undertaken what are the goods i am going what is the goods i am going to produce what is the imported goods i need for producing what i am going to produce or what my job worker is going to produce what are the imported goods we need sir we are going to make steel and i am going to need first i have to tell i am going to make out of steel bottle and also i have to tell that i would be importing steel ठीक है देन दे आर टेलिंग पर्टिकुलर ऑफ एक्सम्शन नोटिफिकेशन दिस द एक्सम्शन नोटिफिकेशन दैट डिटेल्स यू हैव टू प्रोवाइड एंड द नेचर ऑफ आउटपुट सर्विस माइट बी बाय इंपोर्टिंग समथिंग आई एम गोइंग टू प्रोवाइड ए सर्विस बाबा मैन्युफैक्चरर और सर्विस प्रोवाइडर बोथ आर एलिजिबल अंडर कस्टम इंपोर्ट ऑफ गुड्स एट कंसेशनल रेट ऑफ ड्यूटी सो इफ आई एम ए सर्विस प्रोवाइडर द नेचर ऑफ आउटपुट सर्विस रेंडर्ड यूटिलाइजिंग द इनपुट गुड्स व्हाट इज द सर्विस आई एम गोइंग टू प्रोवाइड that i have to go ahead and tell and the intended port where am i going to get the goods that i have to go ahead and inform i informed all this information in the ice gate ka website once i go ahead and inform the ice gate ka website will verify everything and once it is accepted what will happen everyone import of goods at concessional rate of duty uh, concessional rate identification number i and then number shall be generated so you went online first of all the importer who is there he has to go online and provide this information he went ahead and provided the information the verification will be done and the importer will be given i and n number that's it now i have got the i and n number what will i do now at the second stage sir now i also have to go ahead and provide my jurisdictional ac or dc additional assistant commissioner or deputy commissioner ko i have to provide one bond with surety or security as deemed appropriate by the assistant commissioner or deputy commissioner he will tell me ramesh how much do you want to import during the year means i am going ahead and telling sir i will go ahead and import for 10 crore rupees on 10 crore 20% duty is there which is 2 crore sir please on the steel the duty concession is there that if i go ahead and import steel if i go ahead and import steel 10 crore ka steel pe you will take only 5% duty if i am going to make bottles so i will import steel and concessional rate of duty will be allowed now how much i have to pay only 50 lakh it means can you tell me can you tell me the difference 1.5 crore for this 1.5 crore he will go ahead and tell me ramesh i want a bond what if you don't go ahead and pay later what if you don't go ahead and use it for the end use as as is being specified so he will go ahead and keep making a bond he will uh, officer will tell you to go ahead and provide him a bond see over here so bond with surety or security so officer will tell ramesh 20% duty is there i am allowing you to clear at 5% what if after clearing you don't make bottles you started making with steel calculators example so they are going ahead and telling from steel you should make bottle only and to ensure the end use is as told in the exemption notification i want a bond also done so he will go ahead and take a bond from you bond with security will also be taken from you theek hai sir whatever is the basically concession which you are going ahead and taking for that amount that much amount they will go ahead and take a bond from you first step i provided online the information i got the i i n number import of goods at concessional rate identification number i went ahead and got it theek hai sir then then i will have to go ahead and provide a continuity bond to my jurisdiction ac or dc theek hai now what i will do i will go ahead and import the goods my goods have come and they are lying in the custody of the custodian what will i do now simple baba file your, your uh, bill of entry when you file your bill of entry just mention this in number why to again provide the details when you have already provided once online again providing the details is not required just go ahead and file your bill of entry mention the i i n number because in the portal when you submitted the details you have already got the i i n number and the continuity bond number you have given a bond to him that bond ka number has to be written theek hai sir and then self assessment and payment of duty means whatever is the difference this 5% concession is allowed no 15% ka concession is allowed so 15% ka concession is allowed only 5% duty so please pay whatever self assessment you have to do 5% duty which is there you have to pay now you have to go to the additional commissioner or deputy commissioner of customs who is there at the port he will go ahead 
and say okay fine by looking at the bill of entry oh this guy is the import of goods at concessional rate of duty he will go ahead and allow concessional rate of duty and issue one clearance order for home consumption now what will happen sir always remember Five, uh, point number five may he'll allow concessional rate of duty. What did you do till now? You went online, you went in, you went online and you provided one time information in form IGCR. Okay, sir, I provided the information post acceptance, acceptance of my information. I, I, n number got generated then i went ahead and provided bond with security now what will happen i will import the goods third step may i imported the goods now i will go ahead and file my bill of entry in the bill of entry i will have to mention the iin number plus this bond ka number also has to be mentioned that under this bond this bond has already been provided by me for import of goods at concessional rate of duty okay sir then what will happen then they will allow the concessional rate of duty and issue a clearance order for home consumption. Always remember one thing on once the bill of entry is cleared and then once the bill of entry is cleared, then whatever amount you are going ahead and using. See, you went ahead and gave a bond for 1.5 crore bond credit amount, which is lying with you with the with the government saying sir i have given a bond with security of 1.5 crore supposingly now you imported wherein the concession which was given was 50 lakh rupees so your bond will be debited with that amount and your bond now remaining with the government is only 1 crore rupees so they are going ahead and telling bond gets debited automatically in the custom automated system and the details shall be made available electronically to the jurisdictional custom officer he will also be informed that sir the bond which was provided from that bond amount this much uh, goods he has already imported at concessional rate of duty so the bond amount now becomes this much okay sir point is clear next the next one over here is uh okay done now what will happen now uh so sir what did i do now first of all i went ahead and First of all, I went ahead and gave all the details. Okay, sir. I gave the details. Post acceptance, what happened? Sir, one I and I I and number was generated. Now what happened? Now after this, I went ahead and gave a bond with security and uh, surety. Then what happened? Then at the third step, sir, I went ahead and filed the bill of uh, entry. Third step was what? Uh, third step I imported. Then the fourth step was I filed the bill of entry along with the bill of entry i did the self-assessment made the payment of the duty now the custom port may officer who is there he will verify everything and he'll allow concessional rate of duty once the bill of entry is cleared for home consumption the bond will be debited in the custom automated system and the details will be made available to my custom officer also and then the goods will be coming to my premises in the sixth point receipt of goods imported at the premises the goods will be coming to my premises okay sir point will be cleared now the goods have come to my premises everyone listen to me very carefully once the goods are received in your premises earlier what used to happen you had to inform your superintendent and uh, jurisdictional superintendent that sir i have received the goods now all those things are not required seventh point comes which says you just have to maintain your account which is bill of entry wise you have to go ahead and maintain your accounts really clearly indicating the quantity of goods received well, how much is the steel i have imported and the value of the goods imported the date of receipt of goods in the premises okay of the goods which i have consumed the goods which i have sent to my job worker the nature of job work which has been carried out the goods which i have received back after job work if i have sent it for job work i should have received it back so sir the date of uh, the goods received after job work then the goods re-exported i sir i send it for job work did the job work goods came back i re-exported might be okay not that sir i imported the goods at concessional rate of duty now some goods i don't need so i have to re-export so unutilized goods if i have re-exported those details if any and if anything is remaining in stock that details also have to go ahead and maintain so you have to maintain the accounts and if the officer is going ahead and asking you only then you have to produce to the jurisdictional ac or dc okay sir supposingly when i have received the goods from here there was some short receipt always remember non-receipt or short receipt should be intimated on the gs uh portal in the form igcr2 import of goods at concessional rate of duty form number two may you have to go ahead and inform to your officer jurisdictional ac or dc not jurisdictional ac or dc sorry you just have to go online in the ice gate portal and you have to file this form saying sir this is the non-receipt or short receipt of goods okay sir point is clear then sir 
पॉइंट नंबर एट गोज एड एंड सेज अर्लियर द रिटर्न वॉज क्वार्टरली नाउ द रिटर्न इज मेड मंथली सबमिट मंथली स्टेटमेंट ऑन द पोर्टल इन इम्पोर्ट ऑफ गुड्स एट कंसेशनल रेट ऑफ ड्यूटी आई जी सी आर थ्री बाई टेंथ ऑफ द फॉलोइंग मंथ ठीक है सर पॉइंट इज क्लियर एवरी वन वट डिड आई डू फर्स्ट आई वेंट एड एंड सबमिटेड द डिटेल्स आई टेल इट वंस अगेन Remember always, first you have to go ahead and submit all the details and get one IIN number. Secondly, you have to go ahead and give a bond to, with security to your officer. Then thirdly, you have to import the goods. Fourthly, you have to go ahead and file your bill of entry. The officer will go ahead and see the bill of entry and he'll allow concessional rate of duty. Once the concessional rate of duty is allowed, then bill of entry is cleared. The custom automated system, whatever is the bond amount, because the bond amount may you would have given one bond ka amount. From that bond ka amount, the amount will be debited. Whatever concession is basically being allowed. Then, sir, you have to file bill of entry and okay, sorry. Then the Uh, goods will be received in your premises once the goods is received in your premises then what will happen sir once you have received the goods in your premises you have to maintain the accounts bill of entry wise accounts have to be maintained how much you went ahead and imported how much uh, goods you went ahead and used it what are the goods you went ahead and re-exported all those goods ka detail have to be maintained short receipt and non receipt also you have to go ahead and inform in the portal and submit one monthly statement igcr so basically government is trying to make sure that control is imposed on you you told with the steel you will make bottle so government has implemented lot of control on you sir you have to maintain stock accounts also and you have to submit monthly statement earlier this was quarterly statement now monthly statement on the portal in import of goods at concessional rate uh by 10th of the following month theek hai sir now what will happen now in the premises imported goods if within 6 month you have to use within 6 month within 6 month if you are using for manufacture of goods or providing a service specified in the notification then very good you have gone ahead and used it as per the notification no problem at all but sir if you are not using it re-export you can go ahead and re-export also unutilized or defective goods within 6 months from the date of import either within 6 months please go ahead and use it for the purpose which you have told you told from steel you will make bottle please use it if you don't go ahead and use it you can go ahead and re-export the goods within 6 months earlier for re-exporting permission etc was required nowadays permission etc is not required of the additional commissioner or joint commissioner simple you just have to maintain the records of necessary uh export document in the monthly statement record the details basically when you are filing your monthly statement this ic gr3 you have to go ahead and tell what are the goods which you have gone ahead and re-exported unutilized goods which you have re-exported or defective goods which you have re-exported those details are to be provided in the monthly statement and re-export value shall not be less than the value of the goods at the time of import when you imported the value of the goods was 1 lakh rupees when you are exporting it shall not be less is it can be greater than re export value can be greater than or equal to the import value but it can't be less than if supposing you imported you had spent 1 lakh dollar while re exporting the value can't be less than 1 lakh dollar the re export value should be more than that or at least equal to 1 lakh dollar only then they are going ahead and telling baba sir if i don't go if i go ahead and re export uh always remember your re export value shall not be less than the value of goods at the time of import at the time of import if the cif which is there 1 lakh rupees at the time of export it should be greater than equal to 1 lakh dollar only then basically they are telling we'll allow you concessional rate of duty otherwise whatever concession was allowed will be taken back from you done sir point is clear the next one over here is sir imported goods can i go ahead and clear within the domestic tariff area yes baba you don't have to take any permission and all clear for home consumption unutilized or defective goods within 6 months from the date of import but sir if you go ahead and clear it within the domestic tariff area when you imported you had to pay 20% but you paid only 5% 15% concession which was allowed from the date of import till the date you are making the payment of that 15% you have to pay along with interest basically sir it was 20% i had paid only 5% 15% concession was allowed so that 15% you have to pay along with interest from the date of import when you had imported and now when you have cleared it for home consumption when you are paying the custom duty till that date you will have to pay interest record the particulars of such clearance which you are clearing in the domestic tariff area and payment of duty in the monthly statement sir whatever this details are re they are recording record that 
particulars of such clearance and the payment of duty which you have gone ahead and paid the differential duty along with interest this payment ka details also has to be provided in the icg r3 basically you re-export that details also has to be provided you clear in the domestic tariff area that clearance ka detail along with payment ka detail also has to be provided in the igcr3 done sir point is clear everyone listen to me very carefully sir i imported but i did not go ahead and use it for the intended purpose i made something else or you did not go ahead and re-export or you failed to comply with the condition or where payment is not paid or short paid means this you have to pay the differential you did not make the full payment they are telling any contravention always remember one thing jurisdictional ac or dc shall initiate recovery proceeding by invoking the bond because they had already taken a bond from you along with bank guarantee basically they are taking the bank uh, bond with from you along with security now they are going ahead and telling sir if you go ahead and fail to comply with the provision of the exemption notification or you did not re-export also or sir you cleared in the domestic tariff area but you did not go ahead and pay the amount of tax which should should have been paid then they are telling we will recover the differential amount from you by invoking the bond because they have already taken the bond are we all 100 percent clear till here can i go ahead everyone Yes, sir. Are we all clear? Yes, sir. We are all clear till here. Now, listen to me very carefully. Now, if you go down the procedures for sending for job work, everyone over here. Job work, you guys already know. Job work, you guys already know. Any treatment process manufacture consistent with the exemption notification. So, it means if I am sending the goods for job work, then they have gone ahead and told. Means, I have gone ahead and told with... Uh, with the steel, I will make bottle. Now, for bottle car, this painting, etc., if I am sending for job work, that is also allowed. They, but they are telling, except gold, jewelry, articles thereof, or any precious metal, for this job work is not allowed. So, I went ahead and imported steel. I went ahead and got the steel. Now, I can send it for job work also. Earlier, whenever I used to send the steel for job work, I had to inform my jurisdictional ACDC. His, my jurisdictional ACDC used to inform his jurisdictional ACDC. All those processes gone now. Now, they are going ahead and telling, supposing you got input, you cleared it at concessional rate of duty. You can send it for your job work also. Now, no more informing your jurisdictional AC or DC. They are telling, sir, simple. You just maintain record of the goods send for job work and mention in your monthly statement igcr3 just maintain the goods ka records which you are sending for uh, job work and you have to inform it in the igcr which you are filing monthly return which you are going ahead and filing in that you have to mention saying i have sent this good for job work okay then sir now send the goods for job work when you are sending the goods for job work you can send along with an invoice or they are telling wherever applicable e-way bill. Baba, in GST, e-way bill is there. So, when you are sending the goods for job work, you have to generate a e-way bill. Specifying the description and quantity. Sir, if e-way bill is not required, Baba, don't generate. Okay. Intrastate movement is there. E-way bill, less than 50,000 amount ke is not there. Baba, interstate may e-way bill is compulsory. But intrastate movement, if the value is less than 50,000, e-way bill is not required. So, you don't have to generate e-way bill. That's it. So, they are going ahead and telling, first, you maintain the records and that details you furnish in your monthly statement. Okay. Secondly, they are telling, now send the goods for job work. Okay. Job work, when you are sending, you send along with invoice and the e-way bill, if, wherever applicable. And in that invoice or e-way bill, you should mention, mention the description of the goods and uh, the quantity now the job worker will do the job work please get the goods back from the job worker within six months from the date of invoice or e bill okay sir always remember when the job worker is doing the job work he shall maintain accounts of the receipt of goods the manufacturing process which he has undertaken and the waste which is generated okay he should also produce the document whenever his jurisdictional custom officer is going ahead and demanding and after the completion of job work he should send the goods back Either he should return the goods to you or if you have gone ahead and directed him, then he can send it to another job worker also. When this job worker say another job worker ko goods are going, from this job worker, another job worker ko goods are going, then the invoice or it will go under the invoice or cover of an e-way bill as required. 
done sir point is clear always remember one thing whenever you are sending the goods for job work if you have gone ahead and sent the goods for job work principal has sent the goods for job work if job worker did not go ahead and use it for making bottles something else only made then if goods are not used as per the particulars which are told then importer will be liable for differential duty and penalty also will be payable by him job worker will also be liable for penalty means you will have to pay differential duty along with interest plus penalty also will be liable to be paid by the principal job worker will also be liable for a penalty done sir point is clear here one new introduction is there rule number 6b has been introduced everyone over here Earlier, the provision relating to sending of goods from one unit to another unit. I imported the gold. I imported steel. From steel, I will make bottle. Now, I want to transfer from my one unit to another unit. Inter-unit transfer ke liye provisions were not there. Now, they have gone ahead and introduced rule number 6B. Procedure for allowing imported goods for unit transfer. Everyone over here. Importer shall maintain records. Baba, just simple. Just like job work. Same to same. When you are sending for job work, you have to maintain records. Same. You have to maintain records of the goods sent for unit transfer during the month. And whatever you are transferring to another unit. I got the goods and now I want to transfer to my another unit. So, they are telling you just have to mention the same in the monthly return. First, always remember one thing. When you are sending, you have to maintain records. And these details have to be mentioned in your monthly statement. Okay, sir, which you are filing IGCR 3. The importer shall send the goods along under the cover of invoice and wherever applicable, e-way bill. If I am sending to my inter-unit transfer, I can send along with the invoice or wherever required, e-way bill is, if it is required as per the GST law, then e-way bill is also required to be generated. Mention the description and the quantity of the goods in the e-way bill also. E-way bill, you have to mention what is the goods you are transferring from one unit to another unit. Okay, sir. The importer shall, in relation to transfer of goods to another unit, maintain the accounts of receipt of goods, manufacturing process undertaken, and waste which is generated during such process. process. I went ahead and transferred to my another unit. In the another unit, what are the manufacturing process undertaken, sir? Uh, when did I receive the goods back from them and then sir what is the waste which is generated produce the accounts when it is demanded by the jurisdictional officer and after completion of the said process send the process goods back to the uh, send the processed goods back to it will be back this has to be cut do to the premises it means sir everyone over here when i am sending from my one unit to another unit they are going ahead and telling same like job worker first you can go ahead and send maintain records and go ahead and provide the details in your monthly statement secondly when you have sent over here what is the manufacturing process undertaken sir uh, he has to maintain the details of the receipt of the goods, manufacturing process undertaken, waste which is generated. Now, when it is sending back, everyone, they are going in and telling. The importer shall, in relation to transfer of goods to another unit, maintain accounts of receipt of goods, manufacturing process undertaken, waste generated during such process, produce the accounts whenever required by the jurisdictional custom officer. Means this another unit, whenever the custom officer is going ahead and asking, they have to go ahead and show the... Uh, accounts and after completion of the set process send the goods back to the premises means from where it has come it has to send back or from here you can send it for job work also but it has to go along with a invoice or e way bill to a job worker for carrying out the remaining process but whenever it is going to a job worker it has to go along with an invoice or it has to go along with a uh, e way bill wherever applicable done sir point is clear so remember one thing this inter unit transfer ke liye al earlier these provisions were not there now the provisions have been introduced then clearance of capital goods after having used for specified purpose sir what happened i went ahead and got some capital goods machinery i got see baba here we had gone ahead and talked about inputs now supposingly i went ahead and imported one machinery cleared the machine at concessional rate of duty i used it for the specified purpose also now after using for the specified purpose I, be, I used it for specified purpose for five years. i imported one machine i told from the machine i will make steel an exemption notification was telling that if you import machine uh, sorry from the machine if you make bottles your you will be given 
कंसेशनल रेट ऑफ ड्यूटी एंड आई वॉज अलाउड कंसेशनल रेट ऑफ ड्यूटी नाउ फ्रॉम द मशीन आई मेड बॉटल्स सर इट इज यूज फॉर स्पेसिफाइड पर्पज नाउ इफ आई क्लियर द मशीन आफ्टर यूज फॉर द स्पेसिफाइड पर्पज इफ आई वॉन्ट टू सेल द मशीन देन आई बी लाइबल टू पे द डिफरेंशियल कस्टम ड्यूटी ऑन द वैल्यू वैल्यू मल्टीप्लाइड बाई द रेट ऑफ ड्यूटी विच इज बेसिकली दंसेशनल कंसेशन हाउ मच वॉज अलाउड टू मी सपोजिंगली एक्चुअली इट वॉज थर्टी परसेंट बट टेन परसेंट आई पे ट्वेंटी परसेंट कंसेशन वॉज अलाउड टू मी सर आई विल पे दिस ट्वेंटी परसेंट बट ऑन वॉट वैल्यू on what value because now the machine is depreciated so they went ahead and told you can pay the differential on the depreciated value plus whatever amount will come on that interest also has to be paid 15% how to find out the depreciated value just take the value of the capital goods minus 4% you have to go ahead and reduce 4% straight line method pay 4% of the basically value of the capital goods depreciation baba पर क्वार्टर फॉर फोर क्वार्टर सिक्सटीन परसेंट फॉर द फर्स्ट ईयर सेकेंड ईयर वैल्यू ऑफ द कैपिटल गुड्स है हाउ मच डेप्रिशिएशन यू विल प्रोवाइड थ्री परसेंट फॉर द सेकेंड ईयर थर्ड ईयर थ्री परसेंट फोर्थ ईयर टू पॉइंट फाइव फिफ्थ ईयर टू पॉइंट फाइव पर क्वार्टर इट इज और पार्ट देर ऑफ एंड टू परसेंट ओवर ईयर वॉट एवर इज द वैल्यू रिमेनिंग ऑन दैट वैल्यू यू विल बी लाइबल टू पे कंसेशनल रेट ऑफ ड्यूटी फॉर एन एग्जाम्पल वन करोड़ का कैपिटल गुड्स माइनस वॉट एवर परसेंटेज यू हैव टू डू यू हैव टू डू ओवर हियर एंड देन वन वैल्यू विल कम सो कस्टम ड्यूटी यू हैव टू पे ऑन दिस वैल्यू मल्टीप्लाइड बाई हाउ मच कंसेशन वॉज अलाउड फॉर एन एग्जाम्पल एक्चुअल रेट ऑफ ड्यूटी ऑन स्टील इज ट्वेंटी परसेंट फाइव परसेंट यू हैड पेड फिफ्टीन परसेंट कंसेशन वॉज अलाउड सो फिफ्टीन परसेंट हैज टू बी पेड नाउ ऑन द डेप्रिशिएटेड वैल्यू डेप्रिशिएटेड वैल्यू ऑफ द मशीन मल्टीप्लाइड बाई फिफ्टीन परसेंट एंड दिस अमाउंट पे यू हैव टू पे इंटरेस्ट फ्रॉम द डेट ऑफ इम्पोर्ट टिल द डेट ऑफ क्लियरेंस यू हैव टू पे इंटरेस्ट एट द रेट ऑफ फिफ्टीन परसेंट Remember always there is no upper limit for depreciation. Depreciation will be from the date of the asset coming into use till the date of clearance. From the date of coming of the asset into use till the date of clearance. From the date of the asset, you have to see, sir. Here always remember, quarter is not fixed like April, May, June only. No, no, no. From the date of import, you have to see three months over one quarter is gone. Three months over one quarter is gone. For every quarter or part thereof. 4% for the first year second year 3% third percent third year 3% fourth year 2.5 fifth year 2.5 sixth year seventh year eighth year ninth year baba it is always 2% over here and the last point over here is whenever the importer does sell all these capital goods and all the importer shall record the particulars of such clearance and the payment of duty in the monthly statement which is basically your igcr done sir point is clear everyone over here listen to me very carefully this was your custom import of goods at concessional rate of duty amended amended me whatever the amendment was there i have gone ahead and told you sir always remember one thing first of all whenever you are going ahead and uh, importing at concessional rate of duty please take one inn number then baba please give a bond then import your goods then file your bill of entry he will allow concessional rate of duty goods have come to your premises once the goods have come to your premises maintain your stock and file monthly returns which are there now sir if you are using it for the intended purpose within 6 months very good i or go ahead and ex re export within 6 months or you can go ahead and clear within the domestic tariff area also if you are clearing not domestic tariff area in india only uh, without going ahead and using it for the intended purpose if you go ahead and clear the raw material in india you will be liable to pay differential duty along with interest always remember one thing if you are going ahead and re exporting or you are going ahead and clearing the goods all these details you have to go ahead and tell in the uh monthly statement which is there done sir sir any uh, contravention you've done baba if any 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 contravention is done please go ahead and pay the differential duty along with interest i have also gone ahead and told you the procedure for sending of goods for job work the procedure for inter unit transfer and also the clearance of capital goods uh after having used for specified purpose how to clear the goods i have told you depreciated value multiplied by differential rate of duty the amount of custom duty will come that custom duty you have to pay along with interest from the date of import till the date of payment of the duty you will have to pay interest at the rate of 15% i hope you guys understood this yes sir we are all clear i will go ahead and close all my amendments relating to customs also over here congratulations done
I hope you guys enjoyed the amendment part which was there for customs and DST. Uh, I will go ahead and close all my discussion on the amendments over here. Now, amendment ka if you want you can see the summaries also which has been there. I have gone ahead and given the summary at the beginning only. So if you want you can go ahead and uh, use this summary before the exam. So what I will recommend the students is when you are going ahead and watching the amendment with me now. You please make sure that all the amendments which are there, the summary which I have gone ahead and given over here. If you have any other point to include, please include it in the summary and Baba, your amendments are done over here. Right everyone? Yes sir, point is clear. I will go ahead and close all the amendments for your uh, number 22 exam over here. Love you all. Keep studying. Please keep practicing. The more question answers you practice, the better person you will be. Right everyone, all the best guys, take care, I will sign off for uh, today, thank you so much for coming and watching the amendments, bye guys, take care, love you all. And yes, don't forget to leave me a comment after you are done watching the amendment, bye everyone.